If you like the story you can support the author on Patreon link is in the description. Chapter 76, A Trap Set by Voldemort Snape's Riddle How smelly! As Lucas walked through the wooden door, the stench rushed into his nostrils. The room behind the door is not that big, barely enough for the troll to move around in it. At this moment, the troll was angrily smashing the surrounding walls. Looking at the blood dripping from its head, Lucas probably knew why the troll was so angry. What a hassle! Just as he drew out his wand to deal with the troll, the movement of his hands suddenly stopped. No, Quirrell can't make such a low-level mistake, isn't he afraid that Harry won't be able to defeat the troll in front of him? Putting down the wand in his hand Lucas looked carefully at the troll in front of him. He was right, there is a crystal the size of a bottle cap embedded in the monster's heart. Although Lucas didn't know exactly what that thing was, but it should be an alchemy prop similar to an alarm device. It's so dangerous, if I solved the giant monster in front of me just now, it might startle the snake. Thanks to Lucas the butterfly came. After he made Voldemort suffer twice in his hands, it is reasonable for the opponent to keep his guard raised. This troll probably wasn't just for Lucas, maybe even Dumbledore was targeted. Bang! There was the sound of bricks breaking behind him. Lucas looked back and saw that Harry and the others had already started playing chess. But it is different from the original, with Draco replacing Ron's position and becoming a knight himself. Oh shit, it's really wizard chess! Ron shouted in horror. Although he was skeptical when he saw the giant chess game, but he really didn't expect that the chess pieces would actually make a move. Seeing the White Queen smashing the Black Knight fiercely, Harry and Ron trembled in fright and suddenly felt weak all over. At the same time Ron also looked over at Draco who was riding on another Black Knight. He is very good at wizard chess so after a while of playing the way to win has already been calculated. Malfoy, you should also know the result, right? Draco nodded while Ron gloated and said, I told you just now, don't choose the knight, but you just don't listen. Stop talking, let's get started. Harry and Seamus were at a loss and didn't understand what kind of riddle the two were talking about. Seeing this, Draco smiled and said, It's okay, we will win. The Black Knight charged into battle under his command and captured many white pieces. And the white chess pieces are very ruthless whenever they encounter black pieces. Soon there were many discarded chess pieces beside the field. At this time Draco controlled the Black Knight and finally came to the side of the White Queen. Watching it slowly turn around and face him, he took a deep breath. Harry also understood his plan at this moment. Draco, you can't do this. Harry angrily stopped the suicide behavior, then turned to look at Ron. Aren't you very proficient in wizard chess? Think of a way. Ron shrugged, this is the easiest and fastest way to win this match. The voice just fell and there was the sound of stone breaking. Draco fell to the ground hard and Harry wanted to step forward to check the other party's situation, but was stopped by Ron. Stay still, ha! Huh? Ron had just finished yelling when fragments of the Black Knight flew towards his thigh. When he realized that it was too late to dodge. His thigh was cut by a sharp fragment, and blood flowed out along the wound. Both friends were seen injured and Harry was sweating profusely. But he also knew that this game of chess had reached a critical moment. It's the Black's turn to make a move. Harry walked up to the White King with firm eyes, checkmate. The big sword in the White King's hand fell to the ground representing the black side's victory. Seeing the door leading to the next level open a gap Harry breathed a sigh of relief. Draco, Ron, how are you doing? Draco was fine, the training he got from childhood allowed him to protect himself at critical moments. As for Ron's situation, he's afraid something is not good. The wounds made by those fragments were too deep, although the bleeding stopped but he couldn't walk at all. Seamus, I will leave Ron to you. Seamus Finnegan nodded seriously and dragged Ron to a safe place. Harry and Draco walked to the door leading to the next level. We're left with the level set by Professor Quirrell and Snape, who do you think we'll meet first? What? Seeing that Draco has not reacted yet, Harry patiently explained, the devil's snare in the first level is Professor Sprout's defense, and the keys with wings in the second level must be done by Professor Flitwick. This wizard chessboard should be Professor McGonagall's creation. Based on this, only Professor Quirrell and Snape's defenses are left from what Hagrid said. Harry said it easily, but he felt very puzzled in his heart. Although the professors are all involved in designing the levels. But these traps are too simple, can this really keep the Philosopher's Stone safe? What's ahead, just open the door and take a look. Draco stepped forward and opened the door. 
A gust of wind blew, and the two only saw a thick wooden stick swinging out of the door. Troll. It's a troll. Draco, who was closest to the gate, yelled in horror. Harry drew his wand, pointing at the behemoth inside the door. But from the trembling hands, it can be seen that he is not calm at the moment. Heavy footsteps sounded as the huge monster walked out step by step. Seeing the blood on the troll's head, Harry yelled, It's hurt, Snape must have hurt it, Draco, we have to get in. Draco held the wand and pointed at the giant monster, Serpent Sorsha. A poisonous snake with a length of several meters and thick as an arm appeared in front of the giant monster. Not waiting for the poisonous snake to attack, the troll swung its club and the snake was splattered into several pieces without the slightest resistance. The power of the wooden stick remained undiminished, and it continued to swing towards Draco. Diffindo. In the nick of time, Harry's cutting charm hit the troll's club. At the same time, a magic power flew out from the giant monster's shoulder. The stick was shattered into pieces by the two spells. An invisible Lucas stood on the troll's shoulder, his wand pointed at the troll's head. The magic resistance of this big guy is really high and Lucas' imperious curse also took some effort to control it. It should be almost there. Looking at the giant monster under his feet, Lucas secretly thought. Just at this time the alchemy tool in the troll's heart suddenly lost its luster and a miserable, painful howl came from the giant monster's mouth. When Lucas jumped off it, the troll had stopped breathing. How did this happen? Harry looked at the wand in his hand and then at the troll on the ground. He never expected that his cutting charm actually killed a giant monster. Draco, did you see that? Draco nodded and reminded, time is running out, let's go. Walking through the foul-smelling troll room, the two came to a small room. On the table in the middle of the room were seven potions of different sizes and shapes and next to them lay a scroll of parchment. Without waiting for the two of them to make a move, flames rose from the front and rear doors. The door ahead is covered in black flames while the door leading back is covered in purple flames. It seems that this level requires us to find the right potion to continue. Draco came to the table, opened the parchment and read. Danger ahead, safety behind, there are two of us who can help you. Drink them, one will lead you onward, the other will send you back to safety. Two of them contain nettle wine, and three of them are killers, waiting in line. Choose, unless you want to stay here forever. We've also provided four clues to help you choose. First, no matter how cunningly the poisons hide, they are actually standing on the left side of the nettle wine. Second, the contents of the left and right bottles are different. If you want to move forward, neither of them will be useful to you. Third, you'll find that the bottles vary in size, and there's no death hiding inside the biggest and the smallest. Fourth, the second on the left and the second on the right, although they look different, they taste the same. What does that mean? Harry's green eyes were full of confusion. Draco didn't think about it for a moment. He looked at the parchment in his hand and repeated the contents on it. His gaze traveled back and forth among the seven bottles of potion on the table. Draco, if you encounter a puzzle, choose the smallest and most inconspicuous one. Lucas' reminder suddenly flashed through his mind and he looked at the smallest bottle of potion and reached out to take it in his hand. Harry, do you believe me? Drink this it will help you pass through the black flame. Harry didn't hesitate, took the potion and planned to drink it. So little? Looks like it's only enough for one person. It seems so, it's up to you then. Draco said and picked up a round bottle of potion. You drink first, I'll watch you go in and then leave. Harry shrugged, and drank the potion in the bottle in one gulp. Cold. He felt as if he had swallowed a piece of ice into his stomach and felt a chill all over his body. Harry nodded to Draco and stepped into the black flames. Watching Harry leave, Draco looked wryly at the potion in his hand. Lucas, you really know everything. Is all this just a game? A game to play with the savior? Lucas stood in the corner of the room with his face full of relief. Sure enough, you only need to receive a little hint to guess the purpose behind this game. Draco, it's not good for you to get too close to Harry. It's not good for you or your family. Lucas never said those words. He believed that Draco could sense it himself in his relationship with Harry. The first half of Harry's life, at least the seven years at school, had been arranged by the old B. Voldemort was immortal, and Harry was just a tool to defeat Voldemort. After Draco finished speaking, he drank the potion and the same biting cold feeling that Harry felt spread throughout his body. Without hesitation, he turned around and walked towards the purple flame. Lucas was the only one left in the room. 
he came in front of the black flame and stretched out his hand towards the flame. Just when the finger was about to touch the black flame, blue fire burned all over his body. Since his dark arts talent had a breakthrough, he is more comfortable in manipulating dark magic. This fire shield body protection is his own improvement. With the blue fire wrapping Lucas like a garment he successfully crossed the black flame. Lucas didn't even break the disillusionment spell on his body. At this time, Quirrell in the room was looking at the mirror of Ariest in front of him obsessively. Harry, on the other hand, looked at him in astonishment. Why is it you? Harry had a look of disbelief on his face, because until now he thought Snape was the bad guy. Unexpectedly, he analyzed it confidently for a long time, and finally he realized that he made a mistake. Lucas chuckled inwardly and just when I was about to watch the show from a different angle, he felt that there was an extremely powerful magic power in the corner of the room. Sensing magic power is an ability he obtained after activating the elf blood. It wasn't obvious at first, but as time went by, recently he has been able to clearly sense the strength of the magic power of the people around him. Lucas looked at the empty corner and he could have sworn to Merlin that it must be Dumbledore hiding there. Humph, old fox, he is really worried. Even if he is worried about the savior, he is also worried about Lucas. But this also confirmed Lucas' previous guess. The troll was indeed left behind by Voldemort as a test. At this time Quirrell had turned to face Harry. Poor little Quirrell and his master will probably never think of it. There are also two other people in this room watching their master and servant's performance. Chapter 77, It Turns Out That Snape Is A Good Person How could it be you? I mean, shouldn't it be Snape? Yeah, Snape does look the type right? And with him skulking around, who would doubt poor S. Stu. Stuttering, Professor Quirrell. Quirrell gave Harry a demonstration of his usual disguise. But. Snape tried to kill me. Seeing Harry's stubbornness. Lucas, who was hidden by the side, felt that he was about to have a cerebral thrombosis. Everything is so obvious and he was still suspicious of Professor Snape. Should Professor Snape be said to be too aggressive? Or was it Harry that was too opposed to Professor Snape? Lucas clearly sensed that the breath in the direction of the corner was suddenly disturbed. Maybe Dumbledore didn't expect his savior to be so single-minded? Quirrell let out a low laugh and there is a sense of pride in the laughter. It seems that he is quite satisfied with his past disguise. Wrong, Potter. I was the one trying to kill you the day at the Quidditch pitch, when your friends set Snape's robes on fire, causing a riot in the stands. The frantic people knocked me down, interrupting my spell casting. Unfortunate since if I had a few more seconds, I'd have you fall off that damned broom. Even if Snape was using a counter curse to help you. Quirrell's last words were like a bolt of lightning to Harry. He said in disbelief, you said Snape was trying to save me. Of course, why do you think Snape himself became the referee in the second Quidditch match? He hates riding a broomstick, dot. Everyone thought Snape didn't want Gryffindor to win, including you. But he was just afraid that I would curse you again, in fact, he was worried for nothing, because with Dumbledore on the scene, I can't do anything. But Snape managed to get everyone's distaste, including the professors, oh that's so wonderful. Hearing Quirrell explain, Harry's mind went back to what Lucas had said. Some people look like bad guys, but they have a delicate heart, while some people look harmless to humans and animals, but they are murderous demons behind their backs. Isn't this sentence referring to Snape and Quirrell? Could it be that Lucas already knew there was a problem between the two? Not giving time for Harry to think about it, Quirrell just snapped his fingers lightly and a few strong ropes tied him up. He dragged Harry to the mirror of Ariest, obsessively looking at the picture in the mirror. I saw from it that I got the Philosopher's Stone, and I dedicated it to my master. I clearly saw that it was inside, but I couldn't get it. Do I have to smash the mirror? Master. Harry got to the point. That's right. I have a powerful master. I often blame myself because I can't complete the tasks assigned by my master, and I even hide in places where no one is there and cry. You're not crying because Snape is bullying you. Of course not, Snape is smart, he's been suspicious of me since the Halloween troll broke in. You put the troll in the school. Mentioning the troll, Quirrell's expression became very smug. But there is no time to show off. He frowned, it seemed that his master was in a hurry. Quirrell dragged Harry in front of the mirror of Ariest. Tell me what you see, Potter. The room suddenly became very quiet. Neither Quirrell nor Voldemort made a sound. Lucas, who was still hiding beside him, was waiting for Harry. 
Lucas knows how to get the Philosopher's Stone. As long as you want to find it, but don't want to use it, the Philosopher's Stone will naturally appear in that person's hands. However, Lucas couldn't do it. And he didn't know what magic Dumbledore had cast on the stone in the Mirror of Ereast. So it's better to just wait for Harry to get it. That's why he was willing to endure the two chattering for so long. Because of where Lucas is, just in place to see Harry's expression. So when Harry suddenly widened his eyes and looked at his trouser pocket from the corner of the eye, Lucas knew that the Philosopher's Stone had appeared. Merlin, it's finally coming to an end, my Philosopher's Stone, my Diamond Lottery, my precious. It's finally coming. Just when Lucas was about to take it, he suddenly heard Harry say to Quirrell, Before I answer you, I have a question. You said Snape wanted to protect me, but why do I feel like he hates me so much? Quirrell's expression became visibly impatient. Of course he hates you. Your father was in the same year as Snape, and he always bullied Snape. Because of that Snape hates him to death and you look just like your father. Okay Potter, I've answered your question, tell me what you saw. Harry stared at the mirror of Ereast and said, I see myself winning the house cup. He's lying. A low, hoarse voice echoed in the room and Quirrell seemed terrified of the owner of the voice. He changed back to his previous submissive look. Let me tell him. But master, your strength has not recovered yet. It doesn't matter, I'm strong enough for this. Quirrell followed Voldemort's instructions and untied the turban on his head. A human face appeared on the back of his head. Voldemort opened his scarlet eyes and looked at Harry in the mirror. Harry Potter, we meet again. Harry clutched the lightning scar on his forehead and his vision blurred by the severe pain. Harry Potter, look at me now, there is only a little remnant left, I can only survive by sucking the blood of unicorns, and I have to share a body with others. And this is all thanks to you, so I must get the Philosopher's Stone, so that I can create another body, now give me the stone that's in your pocket. Harry took out the Philosopher's Stone and held it tightly in his hand. Don't think about it. Go. Catch him. Quirrell immediately stepped forward and grabbed Harry's wrist. Harry suddenly felt a pain in the head as if being cut by a sharp axe. He screamed and struggled, and slapped Quirrell indiscriminately. He suddenly felt that Quirrell let him go, so Harry opened his eyes and saw Quirrell howling in pain. His fingers seemed to have been scalded by boiling water, and they were covered with blisters. Go. Kill him. Voldemort's voice came again and Quirrell stepped forward. Enduring the excruciating pain he grabbed Harry's neck with both hands, trying to strangle him to death. Harry's lungs are getting less and less breath while his eyes are also getting blurrier. He knew that if he went on like this, he would definitely die. Just before Harry was about to pass out, Quirrell let go of his neck with a scream. Looking at Quirrell's red hands. Lucas, who was hiding aside, looked solemn. The magic that Lily Potter sacrificed her life for was really powerful. It wasn't just that Voldemort couldn't do harm to Harry, but even the person he possesses is the same. Lucas just doesn't know what the name of this magic is. There is no magic that has the same effect as this kind of magic among the magic known to the public. He guessed that this magic traded life for protection, which seemed great. But the category should be attributed to the list of dark magic. So here comes the problem. Lily Potter, a muggle-born witch, how did she learn such a powerful and suspected lost dark magic? Lucas frowned, glancing around the corner. Was it Dumbledore? Or the Potter family's own collection? At this time the exasperated Voldemort had run out of patience. He yelled at Quirrell, use a spell, idiot, and kill him. Quirinus pulled out a wand that he got from his pocket, and looked fiercely at Harry, Avada. Expel your miss. In the nick of time, a disarming spell flew out from the side. Harry, who thought he was going to die, immediately looked to where the voice came from. And Quirrell, the moment he saw the disarming charm, dodged to the side. It seemed that after the fight in the Forbidden Forest, both he and Voldemort were now under the shadow of the disarming charm. Harry was surprised to see Lucas who lifted the disillusionment charm. Thank goodness, Lucas, you came just in time. The game is over, thank you for your hard work, Harry, leave it to me. Lucas stood in front of Harry with his wand in hand. Seeing Quirrell's wary eyes, he warned him with a smile. Professor Quirrell, you better be careful, I won't hold back today. Chapter 78, Dumbledore Engages in a Sneak Attack? It's you. Quirrell's wary eyes surprised Harry on the side. But the most surprised this time was Quirrell himself. How did you escape the troll attack? 
Oh you said that stupid big guy, I just cast the disillusionment charm and stood there waiting. As for the alchemy tool in its heart, why can't I see such obvious flaws? Lucas spread his hands. Seeing Quirrell always looking towards the exit location he said, want to leave? I'm afraid it won't work. As soon as he finished speaking, crimson flames spewed out from the tip of his wand and completely enveloped the exit, making it impossible for people in the room to leave. Quirrell's face became very ugly. Bastard. Bomarda. The exploding spell blasted a large crater into the ground where Lucas had been standing. Lucas put the grin back on his face, and swung his wand against Quirrell causing a spark of blue to flash from the tip of the wand. Quirrell didn't dare accept any of Lucas' spells right now, wary because of their previous encounters. Avada Kedabra. The strange green glow reflected Quirrell's vicious face. Lucas waved his wand, and the stone on the ground turned into a solid shield. In fact, the wizard's fight is very boring because there are only a few spells to use. Especially for someone like Quirrell, most of his shots are basically unforgivable curses. Blocking the opponent's attack, Lucas suddenly had a funny idea and sent a bat bogey hex at Quirrell which is known for being Ginny Weasley's favorite spell. The boogers of those hit by the spell will turn into bats and crawl out of their noses. This is a very insulting curse. Quirrell didn't take the spell to heart. Just when he was just about to dodge he suddenly saw the spell split and then a flock of birds appeared. Quirrell was dodging sideways at this moment, and it was too late to change direction. Lucas swung his wand again turning the birds into a pair of knives. Wada Waisai. Facing the flying knives Quirrell conjured a shield in front of him. But he didn't expect that when the flying knives hit the shield they produced a violent explosion filling the place with smoke. Once the smoke cleared, the shield in front of Quirrell was tattered while he himself was not much better. Witnessing the duel between Lucas and Quirrell, Harry was completely dumbfounded. He never thought that magic spells could still be used like this. As Harry had very little knowledge of magic he was merely surprised. But Dumbledore, who was hiding aside, was absolutely shocked. What did he just see? Flocks of flying birds are hidden in the bat bogey hex. Transfiguration spell and Wadawesai, and there is also an explosion spell hidden in it. Dumbledore suddenly felt that he was getting old and couldn't keep up with young people. He stood in the corner studying how Lucas had hidden another spell within a spell. But after thinking hard for a long time, he only had a little idea, and didn't know if it was correct. Looking at Lucas fighting Quirrell, Dumbledore praised his friend's child talent in his heart, but he couldn't help but clench the Elder Wand tightly in his hand. Seeing Quirrell being beaten back by himself, Lucas knew it was only a matter of time before he won. Taking advantage of the opponent's stagger he immediately used his Eye of Foresight ability, causing starlight to appear in his deep blue eyes. He saw himself cast the petrification spell while Quirrell staggered. After successfully hitting Quirrell he raised his wand and shot a killing curse at the opponent with its green light illuminating the whole room. The moment the killing curse hit Quirrell an old voice immediately came from the corner, Expelliarmus. His wand was knocked into the air, and then three ropes trapped him tightly. The last scene scene was Dumbledore holding the Elder Wand, looking at himself with regret in his eyes. Click. The vision was broken and Lucas came back to reality. Bastard. This old bee really doesn't trust me. He's probably wishing I could use the unforgivable curse right now. Petrificus Totalus. Also as seen just now Quirrell was successfully hit by the petrification spell. Taking advantage of that moment Lucas raised his wand and spoke the incantation. At the same time Dumbledore also raised his elder wand slightly. If Lucas really dared to use the unforgivable curse he would immediately take him down, then he would be sent back to Austria to be with his father in Nurmengard. Unexpectedly, a blue light shot from Lucas' wand, he actually used the shattering curse and it was perfectly aimed at Quirrell's wand. It's just that Lucas' magic is too strong. After smashing the wand, he smashed Quirrell into powder as well. Oh, this is too bad. Lucas seemed bothered by Quirrell's accidental death. Seeing him like this, Dumbledore put down his elder wand. Damn Grindelwald. Voldemort's voice sounded from the place where Quirrell just died. He who possessed Horcruxes was not eliminated by the attack just now. Hovering over the room with a hideous expression on his face and a pair of red eyes, he stared at Lucas below, Bastard, when I come back, I will definitely let you taste the taste of Cruciatus. After saying this, Voldemort rushed towards Lucas as a thick cloud of smoke in the shape of his face. Among currently known spells there are very few that can directly act on the soul. Fiend fire can do the job, but facing a soul that can escape through walls its speed is obviously slower. 
A basilisk gaze can also work but it can't kill the soul completely, it can only petrify it for a period of time. That's why Dumbledore, knowing that Voldemort was possessed by Quirrell, didn't take action to eliminate him. In addition, Lucas once searched the restricted section for the book Secrets of the Darkest Arts but couldn't find it. Must have been taken away by Dumbledore. At this moment, the old goat was probably already suspecting that there was some kind of connection between Harry and Voldemort. Wait until the next school year when Voldemort's first horcrux appears, then Dumbledore should be sure of his suspicions and investigate the topic more meticulously. None of this has anything to do with Lucas though. He raised his wand and looked at Voldemort with a slightly panicked expression. If you observe carefully, you can still find it. There were two purple flames in the depth of Lucas' pupils. A purple spell shot from the tip of his wand and when it hit Voldemort it caused him great pain. The already weak Voldemort could clearly feel the power of his soul being drawn away rapidly. He looked at Lucas with a hint of fear in his eyes. Voldemort's greatest reliance was the immortality bestowed upon him by Horcruxes. But now he could feel death from Lucas' spell. Letting out a growl of unwillingness, a blast of air spread around. Poor little Harry was knocked out by the blast. Lucas also fell backward on the ground, looking at Voldemort in the air in disbelief. Lucas Grindelwald, I will remember this. After Voldemort finished speaking, he turned around and flew to the roof, before disappearing in the blink of an eye. Seeing that his opponent managed to flee Lucas let out a long breath. Ignoring the philosopher's stone that had fallen to the ground he came to Harry's side first. Harry. Wake up Harry. At this moment, the fire at the door suddenly went out and Dumbledore's figure walked in from behind the door, looking as if he had just arrived. Oh what happened to Harry? Sorry Headmaster Dumbledore. I couldn't stop Voldemort from leaving, as for Harry, he just passed out. You have done a very good job, Mr. Grindelwald. In fact, I was not able to detect Voldemort's plot immediately and was tricked into going to London by him. There was a little remorse in Dumbledore's eyes. He looked lovingly at Harry on the ground, and picked up the Philosopher's Stone. As agreed, it's yours now, just hand it over to Severus after you finish studying it. Thank you, Headmaster. Just when Lucas was about to take the Philosopher's Stone, Dumbledore asked suddenly, when I came in just now, I saw a purple spell flashing, was it you who cast it? That's right, when I saw Voldemort's appearance, I waved my wand in a panic, and I didn't know what kind of spell it was. Oh all right. Dumbledore took out the Elder Wand and levitated Harry from the ground. Mr. Grindelwald, you also come to the infirmary and let Madame Pomfrey examine you. Yes, Professor. One old and one young, the two foxes are acting. Lucas knew Dumbledore wouldn't believe his own words, but as long as he firmly insisted that the soul devouring was just the result of accidentally waving his magic wand Dumbledore couldn't do anything about it. It's just a pity that he played so hard when he fell just now. Infirmary. Madame Pomfrey babbled that Lucas wasn't paying attention to his body while shoving a potion into his hand. You are okay, but I found that you have a little cold, drink it and you'll be fine right away. Thank you ma'am. After drinking a bottle of Pepper Up Potion he released steam from his ears and his mind became much clearer. At this time, Harry also woke up from unconsciousness. Professor, the Philosopher's Stone. Calm down my boy, Professor Quirrell didn't get the Philosopher's Stone. Hearing what Dumbledore said, Harry immediately relaxed. Seeing him looking suspiciously at the mountain of gifts beside the hospital bed Dumbledore explained with a smile, it's all from your friends and admirers. What happened between you and Quirrell in that room should have been a secret, but for some reason, the news leaked out, and now the whole school knows about your heroic deeds. It's not me, it was Lucas. Mentioning Lucas, Harry hurriedly looked around and it was only when he saw Lucas being educated by Madame Pomfrey that he breathed a sigh of relief. Harry was very worried just now. If Lucas had an accident because of him, he would blame himself the rest of his life. By the way Professor, why couldn't Quirrell touch me? Dumbledore paused for two seconds before answering. That's because of your mother, she saved you by giving her life and protected you, this is the magic of love. Voldemort will never understand that your mother's love is so strong that, no matter how powerful he is, he can't hurt you as long as this protection is in place. Lucas covered his mouth and gestured to the two of them showing the potion in his hand. It seemed that he wanted to tell them that he was just choking on the hard-to-swallow potion. The old bee really has a way of coaxing children. The magic of love? When did the magic of love become synonymous with dark magic? Lucas made an act of sipping on the potion and continued to listen to Dumbledore trick the naive child. 
until the two talked about Snape and Harry's father. Oh, your father did an unforgivable thing in Severus' eyes, he saved his life. Cough cough. I'm sorry, both of you, my physical examination has been completed, so I'll go back first. Not waiting for the reply from the two he hurried out of the infirmary because he was afraid that if he stayed any longer, he would laugh out loud. Returning to his own dormitory Lucas took out his wand and saw the purple magic on the tip. Gradually, it formed a button-sized purple rhombus crystal in his palm. Lucas opened his mouth slightly and swallowed immediately. Waiting until the power of the soul in the crystal was completely integrated with him he could clearly feel his magic power increased a bit. Even his spirit felt much better than before. This is probably because of the increase in soul strength. Putting the wand aside on his desk he took out the philosopher's stone from his pocket. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, acquiring the philosopher's stone, obtaining a reward, 200 achievement points. Ding, detected the alchemy tool the philosopher's stone, the system can get a chance to spin a platinum lottery once, the winning rate is 100%. Do you want to exchange it? Chapter 79 Whoever steals my house cup will die. Lucas shook his head in denial, the philosopher's stone was hard to come by, so there's no way he will exchange it. He took out an object he obtained before, the mirror crystal. Watching the mirror crystal gradually turn into another philosopher's stone Lucas smiled in satisfaction. Now let's try the effect of the philosopher's stone. It is currently known that the philosopher's stone can make the elixir of life, but the disadvantage is obvious, it only prolongs life but does not prolong body function. That's why Nicholas Flamel was having a hard life, any big movement could potentially cause him to break his bones. Secondly, the Philosopher's Stone can also turn metals into pure gold. Lucas pulled out his cauldron and attached the Philosopher's Stone to the outer wall of the cauldron. As his magic power slowly poured into the Philosopher's Stone, the metal of the cauldron gradually turned into gold. It's too dazzling. Lucas squinted and tossed the cauldron aside. Then he carefully looked at the Philosopher's Stone in his palm and his brows were wrinkled. This stone is not as powerful as imagined. Turning metal into pure gold seems to consume a mysterious energy inside the Philosopher's Stone. And this energy is also irrecoverable. That means that if Lucas uses it multiple times to make pure gold, the Philosopher's Stone will soon become a common stone. After a long time planning, it turned out to be a waste. I thought it was really the Philosopher's Stone. The next day. It's finally the last day of the school year for the students of Hogwarts. At this time everyone was gathered in the Great Hall. Today is different than normal because there are Slytherin house banners all over the place and even the decorations have become silver and green. The whole room was in a Slytherin vibe. The most important honor of the year, the House Cup will be awarded tonight. And the points of Slytherin house surpassed the second place Ravenclaw by 50 points. Lucas came to the Great Hall early and didn't hang around the other tables today. Instead he sat gracefully in his own position. The same goes for the rest of the snakes. Lucas' gaze swept across the faces in the Slytherin table and saw the excitement under their calm facades. Glory. It's something of great importance to Slytherins. But Lucas felt faintly uneasy because this morning all four houses are blazing about Harry Potter defeating the evil Professor Quirrell, protecting the precious Philosopher's Stone. That's not a good sign. Lucas turned to look at the teacher's seat. Apart from Dumbledore, the other professors were already there sitting calmly. I don't know if the old fox is preparing for something underhanded at this moment. Time passed by every minute and every second. The students from the four tables have basically arrived. Even though everyone is talking in a low voice, the gathering of hundreds of people still makes the great hall noisy. Watching the arrival of Harry Potter, all the students became silent and they all looked at Harry at the door who acted as if nothing had happened. He took a step towards his friend Ron and the noisy conversation sounds resumed, but the crowd still looked at the Gryffindor long table vaguely. I thought you were going to spend tonight in the infirmary. Hearing jokes from his friends Harry smiled and replied, Of course not. I have to attend such an important dinner party. In fact, Madame Pomfrey was very worried and kept checking my health before going out. Harry. Congratulations on beating Quirrell, you're amazing. That's right. Harry Potter once again defeated the evil dark wizard. The Weasley twins poked their heads next to Harry and said. Even the normally serious Percy Weasley congratulated Harry. With a couple of Weasleys taking the lead, the others immediately stepped forward to express their admiration to Harry. Slytherin Long Table Watching Harry gradually lose himself in the compliments Lucas sneered inwardly. He believes that this must be the picture Dumbledore would like to see. Harry 
who was originally quite humble, now had a little bit of complacency on his face. He can't count all the credit on himself, can he? Draco also noticed the situation on Harry's side. Seeing his frown, Lucas teased, jealous. No, I'm just curious, everyone seems to be giving Harry all the credit. Lucas, were you there as well? Lucas raised his eyebrows and said, guess. Seeing his appearance, Draco smiled and said, I'm not that carefree, but I'm very satisfied to have proved the innocence of Professor Snape. And what about Harry? Lucas asked. Draco was taken aback, and looked back at Harry who was celebrating in the distance. Of course he's still my friend. Hearing this answer, Lucas didn't say anything and just smiled. Yes, friends, just friends. The dinner party begins. As headmaster, Dumbledore stood up first to speak. Another year has passed, and we still have a lot of important things to announce before we start our dinner. I believe that in the past year, your heads have been filled with a wealth of knowledge. Take it easy, because there's going to be a whole summer soon for you to absorb this knowledge and make some room for the next school year. Oh, when you are old, you always like to chatter. First, let's take a look at the points of the four houses. Dumbledore paused for a moment, seeing all the young wizards staring at him before announcing with a smile. In fourth place, Gryffindor with 312 points. After the score came out, there was polite applause in the hall. The little lions lowered their heads one by one, with a hint of shame on their faces. The last place, it really sounds bad when you say it. Third place, Hufflepuff with 352 points. Hufflepuff's long table erupted in enthusiastic cheers. In previous years, most of them were at the bottom. This year they are a full 40 points ahead of Gryffindor. No wonder the little badgers are so excited. Second place, Ravenclaw with 426 points. Ravenclaws don't seem to care too much about the score and their long table looked very peaceful. For young eagles, learning and exploring unknown knowledge may be more important than a simple cup. First place, Slytherin with 476 points. The little snakes stood up and cheered, high-fiving each other. They seem to believe that the house cup is already in the bag. Severus Snape maintained his deadpan expression as he applauded in celebration. It can be seen from the rapid waving of his palms that he is far more excited than it looks at the moment. If there is any place that is more inconsistent. Probably the blonde boy on the long table in Slytherin who never showed a happy expression. Lucas has a deep understanding of the old bee's shamelessness. After he announced Slytherin's score, he did not immediately announce the ownership of the house cup. Lucas knew this guy was going to start his shameless act. People need to keep their reputation like trees need bark. Who would have thought that Dumbledore? who was more than a hundred years old, would be so shameless. Quiet. Quiet. Next, there's still a few extra points to distribute. Really? Lucas looked at Dumbledore with disdain. First Mr. Draco Malfoy, for the dedication and loyalty you have shown, I would like to award Slytherin 60 points. The Slytherin table cheered again, it's just that the cheers were much smaller this time. Pansy Parkinson, Blaze Zabani and other friends looked at Draco with a teasing smile on their faces. Compliments to a Slytherin for his dedication and loyalty. Oh ho! Let's hope Draco won't be scolded by his father when he goes back. After the frolic, Dumbledore looked again at the Gryffindor table. Next are gentlemen Ron Weasley and Seamus Finnegan. The two heard Dumbledore mention their names and became very excited. Especially Ron, his face was flushed red and his body even trembled slightly from being too excited. The bravery and fearlessness of the two gentlemen is worthy of recognition. You helped your companions overcome the difficulties, so I will reward Gryffindor with 120 points, 60 points for each of you. The Gryffindor table burst into deafening cheers. The twins even came to Ron's side and introduced him to the surrounding companions. That's our brother. Even the poised Percy joined in. Hey buddy, congratulations brother. My dearest brother. Percy seemed to have forgotten that he had written a report letter to his mother not long ago. Quiet. Dumbledore's voice came again causing everyone to quickly quieten down. Because they know that the next step is the highlight. Mr. Harry Potter, you have a fearless spirit and extraordinary courage, so I want to reward Gryffindor with 100 points. Hearing the rewarded score even the young lions of Gryffindor fell silent. But soon someone calculated the result after the extra points. Gryffindor. 532 points. Slytherin, 536 points. Almost even. 
The news quickly spread throughout the four tables and everyone turned their eyes to the teacher's seat waiting for Dumbledore to make his final decision. It's just that the little snakes of Slytherin didn't look good, including their head of house. Greyfinder's eyes were full of hope. From the last counterattack to almost tied for first. The little lions imagined that maybe they could win the house cup this time. Dumbledore took in all those glances and smiled slightly, then he looked at Greyfinder again. There are many types of courage. It takes great courage to face an enemy, but it also takes courage to stick to one's position when facing a friend. Thanks to Mr. Neville Longbottom, I reward Greyfinder with ten points. The Greyfinder table became a sea of joy. In stark contrast is Slytherin House. The little snakes were sullen, each of them looked sluggish, and their heads almost hit the table. Professor Snape looked at Dumbledore in disbelief. He probably didn't expect that either. The old man turned out to be so shameless at such an age. Suddenly, an extremely strong pressure came from the Slytherin table. The knives, forks, and utensils on the table made a loud noise under the influence of the magic pressure. The stinky old bee is going to steal my house cup. Then don't blame me for this. Don't forget to vote with Power Stones for the bonus chapters. Creator's Thoughts Mysterion Mysterion Subscribe to my Patreon slash Mysterion901 to read advanced chapters. Comment 16 Comment Vote. Chapter 80, Because We Are Slytherins The Slytherin snakes were the first to feel the pressure, while the long table next to them also felt the pressure from behind. Lucas doesn't care about others. He took out his wand and looked at the plate. The whole of Slytherin focused their attention on him. Looking at the loss and sadness in everyone's eyes, Lucas took a deep breath and said, Hold your heads up and be classy. Put away the sadness in your eyes and learn to smile. Why? Because we are Slytherins. The snakes looked at the blonde boy at the end of the long table. Listening to what he said, the sadness in their eyes gradually disappeared, and their lowered heads were raised again. At this time, Dumbledore had declared the house cup. He looked at the Slytherin banners in the dining room and clapped his hands, causing the green and silver banners to transform into the gold and red Greyfinder banners. Everything seems to be a foregone conclusion. But just when the banners on the roof changed halfway, a dazzling spell flew from the Slytherin table, stopping Dumbledore's changes. This sudden change made the whole Great Hall silent. All eyes turned to the Slytherin table and Professor Snape asked sharply, Mr. Grindelwald, what are you doing? I'm sorry Professor, please listen to what I have to say first. Lucas ignored the others. After speaking to Professor Snape, he looked back at his classmates. We make decisions before we act, we always strive for perfection in everything we do, and honor is more important than anything else in our hearts. Why is that? Because we are Slytherins. The light in the eyes of the snakes reappeared and confidence came back to them. They raised their heads proudly and looked at the blonde boy standing at the end of the long table. It's not just them. Whether it is a professor or a student of other houses at the moment, they all looked at the dazzling young man. Although Hermione's eyes were full of worry, but she still supports her friend. She knew how much effort Lucas had put in for the house cup. Just now, she was complaining about Dumbledore's injustice. Dumbledore looked at the boy expressionlessly. Really just like him. Grindelwald gave such an impassioned speech back then, with his unparalleled personality charm, he has won many followers. Really just like him. Back then Tom Riddle also conquered the students of Slytherin. Only then did the Death Eaters, who frightened the entire wizarding world, appear. Looking at the high-spirited blonde boy in the distance, Dumbledore's eyes flickered on and off. Will he be the next Grindelwald or Voldemort? When Dumbledore asked his own heart. Suddenly, he saw the boy looking at him and saw the anger and unwillingness in his eyes. Immediately there was a new idea, Lucas Grindelwald probably won't be like those two. Although he is cunning and shrewd, he is easily angered, and irritability can often become a fatal weakness. Lucas averted his gaze, then he looked at his classmate again and said. We are proud of Slytherin's glory. We are proud of Slytherin's prestige. Why? Because. We are Slytherins. The whole table shouted this sentence loudly. And they are also proud of this sentence in their hearts. Even Snape, who was sitting in the teacher's seat, echoed in a low voice. Under the gaze of everyone Lucas nodded in satisfaction, as if pleased with the behavior of the Slytherin students. Therefore, we will not accept insults of any kind, not even by the headmaster. Confronting Dumbledore. Lucas walked from the end of the long table to the teacher's seat step by step. He asked Dumbledore, 
Mr. Headmaster, I remember you announced two bans before school started. First of all, this school prohibits any student from going to the Forbidden Forest without permission. Dumbledore nodded, already guessing what Lucas was up to by now and was about to cut him off. But Lucas was the first to say the rest. Second item, you said that the corridor on the third floor is also forbidden, as it is very dangerous, unless you want to die. As far as I know, that's where the Philosopher's Stone was hidden, right? Dumbledore nodded resignedly and Lucas turned to look at Prefect Gemma Farley. Senior Farley, as a prefect, what should I do if a student in my house violates the ban? Dumbledore's face changed, and he was about to stop it. Gemma Farley had already stood up and said loudly, Draco Malfoy, because you violated the school opening ban privately, as a prefect, I will deduct 60 points from Slytherin. The prefects of each house have the power to deduct points. But they can't add points. Adding points is a power that only professors enjoy. Following Gemma Farley's voice, the number of emeralds in the Slytherin hourglass in the hallway decreased rapidly. Lucas nodded in satisfaction, then he looked at Albus Dumbledore, who was sitting in the middle of the teacher's bench, dressed in his colorful robes. At this moment all the teachers and students of the four houses looked at the respected centenarian. The ban was issued by him in the first place and the students who violated the ban were given points by him just now. Many smart guys wanted to see how Headmaster Dumbledore would respond. It wasn't just the other houses who thought Lucas had a point, even some of Gryffindor thought so too. Certainly, these people do not include Mr. Ron Weasley. He put his head close to his friend beside him and complained in a low voice. Harry, see, these evil bastards want to take the house cup from us. When we broke through the traps, we were three Gryffindors, and they only had one. I don't think there is any problem with Dumbledore's extra points. Hey man, did you hear what I said? Seeing his friend's dissatisfied expression, Harry nodded perfunctorily. No one knew what was going on better than him. It's just that he was immersed in the praise of everyone just now, and forgot to explain to them. Harry sighed inwardly. In the end, he still didn't explain clearly to the lions who were glaring at Lucas. After a long time Dumbledore sighed and glanced at the blonde boy not far away. He finally chose to compromise. Although he lost the house cup, at least in the hearts of the students, Harry was still the savior who defeated the dark wizard. If he didn't compromise he was afraid that everyone would know that it was Lucas who defeated Quirrell, not Harry. This is not worth the hassle. Although he doesn't know why Lucas is so obsessed with the house cup. But at this moment such a thing happened. The conflict between Gryffindor and Slytherin will only become more severe. Dumbledore weighed the pros and cons in his mind, stood up and said to everyone. 180 points will be deducted from Gryffindor for violation of the ban by Mr. Potter, Mr. Weasley and Mr. Finnegan. If that's the case, the ownership of the House Cup will also need to be adjusted. I announce that the winner of the House Cup this school year is, Slytherin. Dumbledore waved his hand when he finished speaking, causing the decorations in the dining room to return to the green and silver Slytherin banners. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement, winning the House Cup, the only one, obtaining a reward, 200 achievement points. Congratulations to the host for completing the series of achievements, King of Slytherin, the only one, reward, one chance of diamond lottery, 100% winning. Hearing the prompt from the system Lucas breathed a sigh of relief. Then he started to check if something went wrong just now. To fight for the house cup and not make Dumbledore think of himself as a second Voldemort. Still somewhat difficult. Next, it's dinner time. Tomorrow morning, the little wizards will usher in a long summer vacation. The advantage of the magic school is that besides being able to learn magic there is no homework during the summer vacation. Have a crazy summer vacation without worrying about homework. What a wonderful thing. After dinner Lucas led the Slytherin students to the dungeons. When walking out of the Great Hall the other three houses were silently watching Lucas. In a way, what Lucas did just now is very cool for underage wizards. Back to the bedroom Lucas immediately turned on the system. Diamond Lottery, I don't know what good things can come out. He was just about to give the lottery order when his words came to a halt again. No, let's start with a hundred consecutive normal draws first. System, 100 common lottery draws. 100 common lottery draws, 100 achievement points for a single time, a total of 10,000 achievement points, confirm, dot. Yes. Accompanied by a prize pool. One after another, rays of light flew out of it but most of them were bronze rewards. After a few seconds the system beep sounded again. 
At the end of this lottery draw, a total of 46 bronze rewards, 32 silver rewards, and 22 gold rewards were obtained. Fortunately, fortunately, I didn't directly use the diamond to draw prizes. A hundred times and there is not a single round of platinum. Fortunately, Lucas also blamed Dumbledore for his bad luck. Yes, the old bee must have brought him bad luck. The bronze rewards for this lottery are as follows, 15 prizes of golden galleons, total amount, 2013, 2 children's brooms, 2 children's magic wands, 13 kinds of honey duke's candies, 3 trendy female wizard robes, 11 bottles of butterbeer. Chapter 81, The First Diamond Draw We reached 800 power stones so 4 bonus chapters today. The silver rewards for this lottery are as follows, Household Magic, Level 2, 5, Scour Jiffy, Level 2, 6, Scour Jiffy, Level 3, Fire Curse, Level 3, 5, Exploding Curse, Level 1, 6, Expulsion Curse, Level 1, 3, Repelling Curse, Level 1, Protego Maxima, Level 3, Eye Disease Curse, Level 1, 4. The gold rewards for this lottery are as follows, Talent Point 1 4, Talent Point 2 1, Legilimency, Level 4, 3, Memory Charm, Level 4, Cruciatus Curse, Level 7, 3, Level 4, 4, Patronus Charm, Level 2, 6. As always, Lucas let the system make him learn what needs to be learned and store what needs to be stored. Speaking up, his luck in this lottery was really bad. Although the three major unforgivable curses have reached full level, and Legilimency has also been upgraded to level 5. But if there is no platinum, it is wrong. Seeing the Philosopher's Stone stored in the system. Lucas gritted his teeth and redeemed a platinum lottery to the system. Then he took out a bottle of Felix Felicis and drank it. Regardless of whether this thing really brings good luck or not, at least it works psychologically. System, draw the platinum lottery and the diamond lottery together. Ding, the platinum lottery draw starts now. The prize pool appeared and with a flash of light, the platinum reward showed itself in front of Lucas. This lottery draw is over, congratulations to the host for winning the reward, Ancient Alchemy, Elementary. Ding, the diamond lottery starts now. The diamond prize pool is more luxurious. Not to mention the radiance, the rewards are so many that they are about to overflow the prize pool. Several of them are familiar to Lucas. Things such as the Scabbard Avalon, Zanpakuto of Shinigami, and several other abilities that can only be found in other worlds. Lucas took a deep breath, quietly waiting for his reward to appear. This lottery draw is over, congratulations to the host for getting the reward, Blood Awakening Potion 1. Seeing this reward Lucas' eyes lit up. No ability is as direct as awakening the bloodline again. After all, the improvement of bloodline is all round. Ignoring redundant rewards. The important rewards this time are, 6 talent points, ancient alchemy, elementary, and blood awakening potion. Thinking for a long time, he decided to learn ancient alchemy first. As for talents, they should be distributed afterwards. Accompanied by his order, knowledge of ancient alchemy flooded Lucas' brain. This knowledge seems to be innate, making it easy for him to use it. Ding, the study is over, the system detects that the host has learned ancient alchemy, elementary, and automatically increases the alchemy talent by two points and the ancient runes talent by one point. Learning alchemy also gives talent points. This philosopher's stone can be regarded as waste utilization, the law of equivalent exchange. Carefully checking the knowledge in his mind, Lucas suddenly noticed something. If it's the same as what he thinks, then there is a way to deal with Voldemort's soul fragment attached to the relics of the founders. But, if he wants to use this method, he will need a lot of magic power. Then he turned to look at the Blood Awakening Potion, a common test tube filled with a purple liquid. He opened the lid, and the sweet smell of grapes came to his nostrils. Throwing his head back he gulped it down in one go finding out that it actually tasted pretty good. Badump badump. His heart beat suddenly and violently, making him drop the test tube to the ground. Beads of sweat covered Lucas' forehead and he looked like he was in great pain. A trace of purple magic power overflowed from his body causing the body transfiguration he was maintaining to be lifted. Boom. It's like a little wizard's first magic riot. It's just that the magic power that Lucas burst out with was many times stronger than that of a little wizard. With the continuous awakening of the blood, Lucas' appearance has also changed a lot. First is the hair, the golden hair is gradually dyed a mysterious purple from the tip. His height increased rapidly, 
and his figure has become well proportioned and ripped, while his eyes also changed from blue to purple. Once the bloodline awakening finished Lucas came to the mirror, looking at the changed appearance he smiled helplessly. If his bloodline is fully awakened, he would have full purple hair and purple eyes. Congratulations to the host for completing the Void Elf, Secondary Awakening, and obtaining the Blood Talent, Void Aura. Talent, Void Aura, enhance the host's resistance to dark magic by 50%. 50%? This concept is too vague. Ding, with the host's current magic strength and physical fitness, the Void Aura can make the host face the killing curse of the Elite Aura level, seriously injured with one shot, and dead with two shots. Lucas understood now. This talent is equivalent to giving him an extra life in the face of dark magic. System, open the character sheet. Name, Lucas Grindelwald. Age, 12 years old. Identity, leader of the Alliance, son of Gellert Grindelwald, freshman at Hogwarts. Bloodline, Void Elf, Second Awakening. Talents, Void Fisher, Void Aura, Eye of Foresight, Combination Skill. Magic Power, 35, Elite Aura. Charms, 9, Full Level. Transfiguration, 6. Dark Arts, 10, Awakened. Alchemy, 3. Ancient Runes, 2. Divination, 4. Potions, 4. Elven Magic, Soul Devouring, Level 1, Loot, Level 1. Animagus, Black Panther. Different Space, Hufflepuff Secret Garden, Recognized Owner. Skills, Ancient Alchemy, Elementary, Occlumency, Level 9, Fire Shield, Level 9, Imperious Curse, Level 9, Killing Curse, Level 9, Cruciatus Curse, Level 9, Sectum Sempra, Level 6, Patronus Charm, Level 5. Magic Items, Felix Felicis 1, Verita Serum 2, Mage Weave Embroidery. Achievement Points, 7952. The Magic Strength reached 35 which makes Lucas more confident about what to do next. System, distribute the talent points, two for dark arts, two for transfiguration, one each for divination and potions. Dark arts, 11. Transfiguration, 8. Divination, 5. Potions, 5. Since his dark arts talent has been awakened it takes two talent points to add one. As for why Lucas added divination, that's because the higher the talent in divination the future seen by the eye of foresight is clearer and more detailed. Although it is still only 10 seconds, but 10 seconds of panorama and 10 seconds of close-up are not the same concept. Shutting down the system, Lucas recasts his human transfiguration. Checking himself in the mirror to confirm that his looks were the same as before, he waved his wand again to tidy up the messy room. With everything tidied up Lucas took Hufflepuff's gold cup out. He held the cup in one hand, and Crimson Fiend Fire in the other. Powerful magic plus 11 points of Dark Arts talent give Lucas more fine-grained control over Fiend Fire. Wingardium Leviosa. Accompanied by the levitation spell on the Golden Cup. Lucas controlled it and the Fiend Fire cautiously. All items made into Horcruxes will be protected by powerful dark magic. Like Riddle's Diary, neither water nor fire can destroy it. There are three known methods of destruction, the Basilisk's fangs, Fiend Fire, and Greyfinder's sword after it was infused with Basilisk Venom. What Lucas has to do now is to use Fiend Fire to destroy the black magic on the Golden Cup without damaging the cup. This requires delicate operation and powerful magical support. Time passed by every minute and every second while sweat trickled down Lucas' brow. Suddenly, there was a crisp sound from the Golden Cup, as if something had broken. Immediately afterwards, a trace of black smoke rose from the surface of the golden cup but in the blink of an eye, it was swallowed by the surrounding fire. Phew. It takes a few hours for one piece, isn't this horcrux really amazing? Lucas moved his body a few times and took a break to recover his magic. What he just destroyed was nothing more than the protection of the horcrux. Then started the second step, drawing the alchemy array. Although what Lucas got was elementary ancient alchemy, there are many practical things inside such as boots that can speed up people's movement. There are also pieces of jewelry that can be used for defense and so on. And what Lucas wants to use is one of the basic functions of alchemy, decomposition. This was originally a very tasteless function in ancient alchemy, because it can only decompose already made alchemy items. Unless it is an alchemy item that is completely unnecessary, who would be willing to disassemble it? Coincidentally, the Hufflepuff gold cup in Lucas' hand is an alchemical artifact. 
introduced in Hogwarts, a history. The Hufflepuff Gold Cup was once given to the Hogwarts house elves by Lady Helga to help them serve the food. That's right, a palm-sized gold cup can store a lot of food. Whether it is from this OR the secret garden, it can be seen that Ms. Helga's application of the untraceable extension charm is amazing. Once the alchemy formation was finished, Lucas placed Hufflepuff's golden cup in the middle of the alchemy circle. He took a deep breath and then he waved his magic wand pointing at the alchemy array on the ground. Dismantle. A burst of red light burst out from the alchemy array. The golden cup shrouded in light gradually disintegrated, ending up divided into four parts of different sizes. A piece of transparent fragment wrapped in black gas quietly floated in midair. This was the soul shard that Voldemort hid in the golden cup. Maybe it was the awareness that he had no protection that caused the soul fragment to fly around like a headless chicken. It seems that it intends to escape and find another hiding place. Lucas pointed his palm at the soul shard and a purple magic power suddenly appeared, successfully capturing the soul fragment. Not long after there was another purple rhomboid crystal in Lucas' palm. Swallowing the crystal, Lucas could feel how his magic power increased. He rubbed his chin, feeling like Voldemort's horcrux had been turned into a tonic. A ruthless person who can cut several pieces of his soul must have a very high soul strength. Voldemort, who has once again experienced defeat. At the moment, he is hiding in Albania, a country with which he has a deep connection. He suddenly felt a chill, it was as if he was being watched by something. Having disposed of Voldemort's soul shard, Lucas waved his wand again, reassemble. The golden cup that was divided in four parts became one again. When Hufflepuff's golden cup stopped being a horcrux it became radiant again. The golden light shining from time to time on the gold cup is really fascinating. Tonight Lucas can be said to have gained a lot. The most important thing is that he is stronger than before, a lot stronger. The next day the old Hogwarts Express slowly left Hogsmeade Station. The students looked at the castle reluctantly. It won't be until a few months later that they will return, except for the seventh years who won't be coming back. One month later, Austria, Nurmangard Castle. Hestia entered the tower with a pink envelope in her mouth. Dear Lucas. How are you doing in Austria? Is your uncle all right? I have great news for you. My father participated in a lottery on a TV show, and actually won a seven-day trip to France sponsored by a large company. So I may have to accompany my parents to France for a few days in a week. Oh forgive me, I want to see you soon too, but, sorry. With love, Hermione. Love. It's amazing magic. Lucas, you've been back for a month, and your little girlfriend has been writing to you almost every day. Lucas looked at the old man who was talking beside him, smiled and said, Father, are you envious? A soft snort expressed Grindelwald's inner disdain. At this time Vinda Rosier pushed open the door and entered. She held a few envelopes in her hand and said, The boy from the Malfoy family, Lucius, sent a letter, saying that the shop in Corner Lane has been furnished and asked you about the opening date. The other question is who are the guests to be invited? The preliminary plan is to invite the Minister of Magic Cornelius Fudge and the directors of various departments, as well as Hogwarts professors and prominent figures in society. There is also Nocturne Alley, black market transactions and casinos have been making good profits in the past half month, earning us 30,000 galleons. This is only a small part, and many people seem to be still taking a wait-and-see approach before deciding to use the facilities. Finally, it's about the German and French shops. As we have received, the French Ministry of Magic will hold a trial in a week. Minister Orwell will also be present. Lucas looked up from the book on his lap. After thinking about it carefully, he said, I heard that Pius Thickness has returned to work at the Ministry of Magic. Seeing Vinda nod, Lucas smiled and said, put his name on the invitation list as well. After saying that, Lucas stood up and looked at Gellert. Father, I'm going back to England tomorrow, since I have to open the shop in England before going to France. Well, go and study the magic of love. Lucas rolled his eyes inelegantly, turned around and planned to leave. Just when he was about to walk out the door Gellert's voice came from behind. Boy, do you know what the right to speak is? Hey. Lucas turned around suspiciously. To control the power is to control the right to speak. Grindelwald seemed to answer the question himself. Immediately afterwards, he asked a new question, then do you know how to gain power? Lucas' eyes froze because he knew that his father was going to teach him something important. Chapter 82, Spiritual Mentor Lucas 
Vinda saw the pair of father and son sitting opposite each other and wisely left the room. The moment the door closed Gellert's voice sounded again, Have you figured it out? How to gain power? A shrewd mind, loyal men, and great strength. Hearing this answer Gellert gave a somewhat satisfied smile. Intelligence, strength, and charisma are the keys to power in my opinion. Before doing anything, prepare some plans and ask yourself repeatedly whether there are mistakes in these plans, and at the same time keep yourself calm and rational. Actually, in my opinion, an intelligent appearance can also be regarded as a kind of personality charm, which can attract you many followers. Then there is power. There are some wizards in the magic world who believe in the idea that magic is power. Great power can conquer many people, they will be timid and afraid when facing you, and finally choose to surrender. Strength is also a kind of charisma. Many wizards who uphold this concept will follow you willingly after seeing your strength. After finishing the above words, he raised his goblet and took a sip of red wine. He waited until Lucas absorbed the words and continued, The last thing I want to talk about is charm, the concept of charm is actually very general. Some people are obsessed with an elegant appearance, and some people are obsessed with beautiful ideas. Some people are obsessed with great power, and some are obsessed with smart minds. These are all a kind of charm. Some people can do one of them, and some people can't do any of them so they can only be reduced to ordinary people. My son, whether it is strength, intelligence, or an elegant appearance. If you possess one of these things, you will gain followers of your own, but you are my son, you are a Grindelwald. I believe you can do better, even better than me. Go ahead, let them be obsessed with your strength, obsessed with your grace, obsessed with your intelligence. But you have to remember, don't get caught up in it, don't be overwhelmed by vanity. Whether it's strength or intelligence, these are just the means you need to achieve a greater good, including your followers. The father and son were silent for a long time. Until Lucas let out a long breath. Thank you for your instruction, father. Lucas stood up and bowed in gratitude, then turned around and walked out the door. Leaving Nurmengard Castle, Lucas stood outside the gate and turned to look at the tower. He knew that Gellert was watching him from up there. Vinda, let's go back. Lucas said softly. Vinda took out a port portcaia and in a blink of an eye, they returned to Wiltshire, England. The travel methods of wizards are really convenient. There are port portcaia for going abroad and there is a flu network at home, not to mention apparition. Aunt Vinda, come with me to Malfoy's Manor, we need to finalize the opening of the stores as soon as possible, so we can start making money. Lucas is always very enthusiastic about making money. Vinda nodded with a smile, and went to the vanity mirror to sort out her appearance. Oh, beautiful Miss Vinda, you are still so beautiful, and your outfit today especially set off your noble temperament. Shut up. She glanced lightly at the vanity mirror in front of her. Every wizarding family will have a mirror like this to monitor the appearance of the family. If your image appears sloppy, this mirror will not treat you kindly. Once they reached Malfoy Manor which is actually very close by, the first thing Lucas saw were two kids riding broomsticks. Seeing Harry who appeared at Malfoy's house, Lucas was slightly surprised. Lucas? You're back from Austria. After not seeing each other for more than a month, Draco was happy to see his friend. Just came back. Lucas turned his head to look at Vinda, motioning for her to go in and discuss with Mr. Malfoy first. Once she left, Lucas turned to look at Harry beside him. When did Harry come? Half a month ago, I wrote to him, but I didn't get any response. I was worried and asked my house elf to take a look. Draco rushed to answer, and at the end his expression became very angry. You would never have imagined what kind of life Harry led, that family of muggles was simply horrendous. Although Draco is fighting for his friend, but he said it in Harry's presence which made Harry embarrassed. Seeing this, Lucas changed the subject. Harry, how are you? Are you having fun here? Very happy, I think this should be the happiest summer vacation I have ever had. Harry looked at Lucas with gratitude and a hint of guilt in his eyes. He probably thought of Quirrell. It's good you are happy, I still have some things to do, so we will talk later if you have time, I can ask Draco to take you to my house to play. Oh no, Harry is going to Ron Weasley's house soon. Lucas looked at Harry, to make sure it was true. Seeing Harry nod, he smiled and said, it's okay, there are still many opportunities in the future. When he saw Lucas was leaving, Harry became a little hesitant, wondering if he should call out to him or not. It wasn't until he saw that Lucas was about to enter the gate of the manor that he made up his mind. 
He anxiously said, Lucas, please wait a moment. Seeing Lucas turn and look at him Harry asked nervously, I don't understand something, can you help me answer it? At the Savior encountered something that confused him. Lucas' spiritual mentor Grindelwald is online. He took Harry and Draco to the round table in the garden and sat down. Draco snapped his fingers and a house elf appeared next to them. Oh, dear little master, Dobby is happy to serve you. Dobby. Lucas looked in the direction of the voice. An elf in a dirty pillowcase stood awkwardly beside Draco. Looking at its eyes that are wandering around. That's right, it's Dobby, the only house elf who advocates freedom. Prepare a cup of black tea and two cups of fruit juice. Right away little master. Once the tea and juice were ready, Lucas looked at the embarrassed Harry and said softly, It's okay, there is no one else here, tell me all the problems you have encountered. The deep, elegant voice seems to have a strange magic, making Harry's heart gradually become calm. I just don't understand why I have to go back to my aunt's house. I asked Professor Dumbledore, but he didn't tell me. He just said that I have to go back to live there for a while every year. Hearing Harry's troubles Lucas didn't answer right away. He wondered how he should explain it. After about two minutes he asked, Harry, do you know why Voldemort can't touch you? I know, because my mother cast a powerful guardian magic on me. That's right. Lucas nodded affirmatively. I can tell you with certainty that the magic your mother cast is extremely powerful, as she used her life to protect you. But this kind of magic has a big drawback. If you want to continue the effect of this magic, you need to live with your blood relatives for a period of time every year. That's probably why you have to go back to your aunt. Harry reluctantly accepted the explanation. After personally witnessing the power of Voldemort. He's still maturing a bit. At least when he learned that living at his aunt's house would protect him. Harry felt less resentment towards his aunt's family, only a little. But Draco at the side felt very puzzled at this time. Lucas, why have I never heard of such powerful magic? Probably lost, I also only saw the introduction in an ancient book. Seeing Draco's frown gradually tightened, Lucas held up the black tea to hide the smile on his lips. If what you said is true, then this. As a child of a pure blood family, Draco was far more knowledgeable than Harry, so he sensed something was wrong immediately. Sacrificing one's life to cast a powerful protective spell on another sounds a lot like black magic. Impossible, my mother can't use black magic. Harry stood up abruptly, and even overturned the chair behind him because of too much force. Calm down Harry, Draco didn't say anything about your mother. Lucas hurried to appease. In the shallow knowledge of Harry, only dark wizards can use black magic. And dark wizards are synonymous with bad guys, that's why he was so angry. Waiting until Harry sat down again, Lucas continued, Maybe my guess is not entirely correct, but I'm sure that the protection spell on you is a kind of blood magic. Harry, listen to Dumbledore and stay at your aunt's house until you come of age. The work of the spiritual teacher ends here, since he didn't want to say too much. Harry's angry expression just now shows that he is not very firm in his heart and was having doubts about the magic that was cast upon him. That's enough for Lucas. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Spiritual Mentor, Rewards, 50 Achievement Points Introduction to Basic Psychology. Okay, if there are no other questions, I will excuse myself first. Lucas also needs to meet Lucius Malfoy. In addition to discussing the opening time of the store, he's still going to give it a try and see if he can get Riddle's diary from the slippery man. Wait, I actually have another question. Harry seems to have a lot of troubles. Looking at his furrowed brows Lucas returned to his seat. What is it? About Professor Snape, what you said back then was correct, it turns out that the professor has been protecting me. But now I don't know how to face him. Should I apologize? Apologize. And get scolded. Lucas shook his head, in the infirmary that day, I seemed to hear Headmaster Dumbledore talking to you about Professor Snape. That's right. Harry nodded. Professor Dumbledore said that Professor Snape hated my father because my father saved his life. It's just that I don't understand why Professor Snape still hates my father if he saved his life. In Harry Potter's mind, his father was an extremely good person and a hero. And what Dumbledore had revealed, undoubtedly confirmed the conjecture in his heart. You just have to ask, what kind of person would save his deadly enemy? A man of noble character, of course. Lucas could probably guess what was going on in Harry's mind just by looking at his expression. 
maybe Harry still had some complaints about Professor Snape in his heart. So he sneered, looked at the butterflies flying in the garden and said, language is really an art. Omit the details, and just say some unimportant things which can be mistaken for a different meaning. Harry and Draco looked at each other and all they saw were the doubts in each other's eyes. It's not hard to understand from Lucas' words. There seems to be something in it that they don't know. Chapter 83, The Truth of the Incident, Voldemort's Return, and Lucius' Fear James Potter, born in a pure-blood family, had extraordinary Quidditch talent, and was recognized by Hogwarts as a Quidditch genius. Lucas' opening remarks aroused Harry's intense interest. For his parents, Harry always wanted to know more about them so he always made close attention when someone mentioned them. However, James Potter also has the common shortcomings of pure-blooded children, such as arrogance. I think it's probably the same as Draco when you first met him. Mentioning the process of getting acquainted before entering school, Draco's face blushed a bit in shame. And Harry frowned, it looked like he disagreed with what Lucas said in his heart, but he didn't interrupt aloud. James Potter met a group of like-minded friends soon after he enrolled, and they formed a famous prank group. And then there was the seven-year struggle between the group led by James Potter against Severus Snape. You heard me right, it's a group of people fighting against a single person. Lucas had just finished speaking. Draco subconsciously said, this is too despicable. It wasn't until he finished speaking that he remembered that Harry was still on the sidelines. Embarrassed, he apologized to Harry for his outburst, then urged Lucas to continue speaking quickly. I won't say more about how James Potter bullied Professor Snape. You can ask the ghosts of the school when you have time, they must still remember. Let's just talk about James Potter saving Professor Snape's life. The two of them sat up straight and listened carefully to what was said next. Harry, what would you do if one day your enemy tricked you into the zoo's lion enclosure and made you face the lions? Hey? I guess I'm going to hate him to death. Hearing this answer, Lucas nodded in satisfaction. Very well, just when you were about to die, your enemy suddenly appeared and rescued you from the lion's mouth, would you thank him? This, probably not. Harry frowned, he naturally understood the meaning of Lucas' words. Lucas, are you saying my father put Professor Snape in danger and then saved him? Almost, it was one of his friends, Professor Snape nearly died in the claws of a werewolf because of this. A werewolf! Draco exclaimed. Seeing Harry's confused face he hurriedly explained, werewolves are human beings who have been cursed with lycanthropy, they will transform into a wolf-shaped monster every full moon at night. After transforming, they are irrational and will attack anyone in their path, and this is not the most terrifying. If bitten or scratched by a werewolf, the injured person will also be infected with the curse and become a werewolf. Furthermore, lycanthropy cannot be cured, so being a werewolf is irreversible. The closest thing to a cure is a suppressive potion called Wolf's Bane Potion, but the only thing it does is allowing the werewolf to keep his mind during the full moon and it's really expensive. Clap clap clap. Lucas applauded Draco gently. Perfect answer, 10 points for Slytherin, dot. After saying that, he looked at Harry again. So, do you understand why Professor Snape hates you and your father? Harry nodded, then why is he protecting me? Quirrell said Professor Snape didn't want me dead. It's up to you to find the answer yourself. Lucas said something mysteriously, then turned and walked towards the manor. In fact, Lucas' evaluation of James Potter was not so bad. He was at least braver than most common wizards. While it's true that he was a complete jerk in school. But after graduation, James Potter bravely stood up against Voldemort, which is still worthy of respect. But, he wouldn't tell Harry these things. The old bee wanted to establish a heroic image of his father in Harry's heart and Lucas just refused to let the old manipulator do what he wanted. To add trouble for Dumbledore, he never forgot his original intention. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Truth and Lies, Reward, 200 Achievement Points, this achievement involves the change of the fate of some protagonists. Ignoring the two kids, Lucas stepped into the manor and being guided by the servant, he came to Malfoy's study. Oh! When Lucas saw Professor Snape appear in the study he looked a little surprised. At the same time he felt grateful. Fortunately, Professor Snape didn't go out just now. If the bitter man heard that he exposed those embarrassing things in the past, Lucas is sure that he will have endless chores in the next six years. Mr. Grindelwald, you seem surprised to see your own head of house. A cold, deep voice sounded in the study and the surprise on Lucas' face quickly turned into a smile. 
I haven't seen you for over a month, I missed you, Professor. Faced with such an enthusiastic performance from his student, Professor Snape frowned slightly. He hates being close to people, because too close a relationship is not good for his identity as a spy. Even though Lucius Malfoy is his best friend and senior. When facing him, he also had to put on a cold look. Put away that silly smile of yours, if you were in potions class right now, I would definitely deduct 20 points from you. Lucius Malfoy was quite surprised by his friend's performance. He knew Snape well. If he meets someone he doesn't like, he will never say a word to the other person. Mr. Grindelwald, please sit down, I don't know that you have such a good relationship with Severus. Humph. Lucius, I think you should go to St. Mungo's and have your eyesight checked. As expected of Snape, he maintains his combat effectiveness even outside of school. Lucius Malfoy had long been used to the other side's behavior. Once Lucas sat down, Lucius planned to start today's topic. But before he could start speaking, Professor Snape stood up abruptly. Since you have something to talk about, I'll take my leave first. Professor Snape, still with his robes billowing like a big bat, walked quickly towards the door. Professor, Draco and Harry are in the yard. Seeing Professor Snape freeze there was a mischievous smile on Lucas's lips. Oh that's too bad, Severus is a very vengeful man, so you shouldn't be talking about Mr. Potter in front of him. Mr. Malfoy reminded him after Snape had left, and then brought the topic to the point. Mr. Grindelwald, just now Ms. Rosier conveyed your purpose. I think this weekend is very suitable for the opening of the store. First of all, Diagon Alley has a lot of people on weekends, which is good for us to get off to a good start. Secondly, there are still three days before the weekend. These three days will also allow the distinguished guests we invite to arrange their own itineraries. If the opening is rushed and there are not enough guests present, it will affect the family behind you and me, what do you think? Lucas thought for a moment and said, that is very thoughtful, I have no objection. As the top family in the British magical world, I will have to trouble you to send the invitations. Don't worry. Lucius smiled. He seemed happy that Lucas accepted his advice. Summoning a house elf to refill the black tea, only then did Malfoy talk about the list of invitations. Mr. Grindelwald. Uncle Lucius, you can just call me by my name, we are partners now. Oh well, Lucas, do you really want to invite Pius Thickness and Rufus Scrimgeer? Seeing Lucas nod, Lucius hesitated to speak. Lucas, you should know that in our capacity. Uncle Lucius, we are just common merchants, do you have any identity that I don't know about? Malfoy was taken aback, no, not really, you're right, we're just common merchants. So, what are you worried about? Worried about two people coming to make trouble. Lucius nodded subconsciously. Seeing this, Lucas said, instead of letting them come uninvited, why not just invite them? We are serious businessmen. When the store opens, Uncle will need to handle it in the future. If you encounter any problems, just contact Vinda directly. Lucas is still a student now and needs to stay at Hogwarts most of the year, but he is very reassured with Vinda handling most problems. Besides, Hogwarts will become more and more interesting from next school year onwards. At that time, he will inevitably participate in most problems. The two then talked about some business in Nocturne Alley. The main purpose is to discuss the progress of the illegal auction house in Nocturne Alley. In addition, some malicious people seem to be eyeing their casino business. Some people really don't know good from bad, Vinda, send more people to Nocturne Alley, if someone causes trouble, deal with them directly. The indifferent attitude of the blonde teenager startled Lucius. The boy in front of him was only as old as his son, but his maturity and ability are not different from an experienced adult. He even surpassed most wizards in terms of ruthlessness, and even dark wizards were probably inferior. Having settled the business talk, Lucas and Lucius began to chat about some random gossip in important pure-blood families. When the time was right, Lucas suddenly brought the topic to the Ministry of Magic. Uncle Lucius, news from Pine Caro recently said that the Ministry of Magic is preparing to introduce a new Muggle Protection Act. It is said that the Ministry of Magic will take action soon mainly to search for black magic books and dangerous items in some families. The Malfoy family, as a pure-blood family with a long history, must be careful. Lucius Malfoy paused his hand that was holding the teacup and there was a little doubt on his expression. He also has quite a few friends in the Ministry of Magic so, why didn't he hear these news? He looked at Lucas's calm look, and it didn't seem to be fake news. If uncle doesn't believe it, 
then wait a little longer. In less than a month, these two new regulations will be implemented before Hogwarts starts the new school year. Since you have said so, I naturally choose to believe it. Thank you very much for your help to the Malfoy family. Lucas shrugged his shoulders, you're welcome, if uncle has any very dangerous items that can't be handled, I'll be happy to help. Thank you, but my Malfoy family still has the ability to dispose of some dangerous goods. The two sipped their tea in unison and the study room became quiet for a moment. After a while, Lucas suddenly said, Did Draco tell you about the things that happened at school when he came back? You mean what happened to Professor Quirrell at the end of term? Seeing Lucas nod, Malfoy continued, That's what I heard. I really didn't expect that a dark wizard would sneak into Hogwarts. It seems that Dumbledore is really getting too old for his post as headmaster. On this point, Lucas begs to disagree. Dumbledore getting old? He would rather believe that Mr. Malfoy in front of him has Alzheimer. Lucas walked to the study window with his black tea in hand. Looking at Harry who was playing with Draco outside he said softly, I'd say it's because of Harry Potter. I was there at the time, and I found an interesting thing, Professor Quirrell couldn't seem to touch Harry. As long as he touches Harry's skin, it will be very painful. It's like the skin has been burned. Could it be that Harry Potter was born to be the sworn enemy of dark wizards, as written in the books? Clang. The violent clashing sound of teacups and cup holders. Lucas looked back and saw Lucius Malfoy panicking with the tea on the desk. Uncle Lucius, are you fine? I'm fine, it's just that I didn't hold it steady for a while, Dobby, hurry up and get rid of this mess. Lucas put the black tea aside, looked at the busy master and servant and said. It's getting late and I have to go back to prepare for the court session in France. I'll see you in Diagon Alley this weekend. Having said goodbye to Lucius, Lucas walked gracefully towards the door. When he opened the door, the foot that was about to step out stopped in place. Uncle Lucius, don't forget to dispose of those dangerous items that smell of black magic. Otherwise they will cause you great trouble. Lucas's eyes seemed to be able to read people's hearts. Malfoy no longer had the calmness and composure he had just now. His eyes were slightly flustered, and he forced himself to remain calm, I will remember, thank you very much for your help, Malfoy's never forget. Three days passed in a flash. Diagon Alley is bustling on weekends, but today it is more lively than previous weekends. The reason is simple, 15 shops in Diagon Alley opened at the same time today. For shop owners who have been reluctant to show up for a long time, people were full of curiosity, and gossip spread everywhere for a while. Arthur Weasley director of the misuse of muggle artifacts department at the Ministry of Magic. As the director, he is of course also on Lucas' invitation list. So Arthur Weasley brought his family to Diagon Alley today, intending to let the family members take a look at this lively scene. In the line, Ron tugged on Harry's sleeve and said. I heard that among the 15 shops there is also a shop that sells flying brooms. Master Randolph Spudmore, do you know? Seeing Harry shaking his head, Ron introduced excitedly, Master Spudmore specially designed broomsticks for professional players. He didn't join any company, but he still designed the best and fastest broomstick. I heard that the shop this time is dedicated to selling brooms designed by Master Spudmore. Of course, the price must be very expensive. It would be great if I could have one. Ron's eyes twinkled with longing. At the same time, he is also very curious about the owners of these shops. Harry had arrived at the Weasleys yesterday and he couldn't sleep last night because of the banging on the water pipes. According to Ron, it was the sound of the ghoul that lives in the attic. However, Harry, who was still a little sleepy, pulled himself together and looked at the lively crowd after hearing Ron's narration. Who is it that actually opened so many shops at once? Such handwriting, even in the muggle world, is not common. Chapter 84, The Bosses Lucas Grindelwald Diagon Alley Shop 88. Located directly opposite Gringotts, the location is excellent. Today, shop number 88 and 7 shops on the left and right sides of it held the opening ceremony together making a total of 15 shops. Such a grand occasion attracted the attention of countless wizards. In order to avoid someone taking the opportunity to make trouble, the Minister for Magic Cornelius Fudge also sent most of the aurors to the scene. Oh. Look, that's Mad Eye Moody. He's a veteran aura who has captured many dark wizards. Ron pointed to an old man wearing a clearly magic eye in the distance and said to Harry. Maybe it was because he heard Ron yelling his name that Moody turned his head to look their way which startled Ron and Harry. Boys, 
you'd better not mess with Moody, he didn't want to come today, but the ministry forced him to come, do you understand? Arthur Weasley explained the reason to the two. Then he noticed a colleague from the Ministry of Magic and went to say hello. As Arthur left, the rest of the Weasleys and Harry went to a corner closest to the shop. It is said that when the store opens today they will give out many souvenirs. Time passed by every minute and every second, and there were more and more people that kept accumulating in front of Shop 88. As the opening time approached, well-known pure-blood families and wizard families in the British magical world began to appear. Ron stood in the corner and told Harry about the people he could recognize. That beautiful lady is Madame Zabanai, and her son is Blaise Zabanai of Slytherin. Looking at the beautiful and generous lady in the distance Harry subconsciously nodded. Of course he knew who Blaze was, and he had even spoken a few words with him before. The other party gave Harry the feeling that he was like a peacock exuding charm all the time. Now it seems that Blaze's habit should come from his mother. Ron pointed again at an elegant wizard. This is the son of Minister of Magic Fudge, who has already joined the Ministry of Magic at a young age. Let me tell you secretly, Percy admires this guy, and his dream is to join the Ministry of Magic right after graduation. Ron had just finished speaking when he noticed Harry looking at him strangely. What's wrong? Ron, how do you know all these people? Ron's cheeks flushed. Anyway, their Weasley family is also one of the sacred 28 families and his father works in the ministry. For famous people in the magic world, it is natural that he needs to know. It's just that he has always been embarrassed to mention this to his friends and get laughed at it. Harry saw his friend's embarrassment and immediately changed the subject. I really want to see who owns these shops and can attract so many celebrities. It has to be said that there were a lot of celebrities here today. Even Ollivander, the master wand maker, joined in the fun. Please step aside. Accompanied by a loud shout, Fudge, the Minister of Magic, came along with the directors of various ministry departments. Oh, the minister is here. And Director Crouch and Director Bones. Look, that's the head of the Aura office, Rufus Scrimgeer. The presence of the people from the ministry pushed the atmosphere to a climax. Ladies and gentlemen, our opening ceremony will begin soon, but before that, we will distribute some souvenirs. A young witch appeared before the crowd. Clap. With a strong clap of her hands, a group of young and beautiful witches walked out of the shop. This is a magic perfume developed in our shop that changes its scent with the weather, time of day and your mood. These trial packs are a gift from our store to all the ladies present, please don't hold back. The women present were each given a small bottle of perfume. Some people can't wait to open the present to try it. Molly Weasley is one of them. Oh mom, you smell so good. Hearing her children's praise, she was elated. The next moment, the smell of the perfume changed. So amazing, it even attracted the attention of the men present. The young witch smiled and continued, in order to thank all the handsome men for coming, our store has prepared a 10% discount coupon for trendy men's wizard robes. In addition, little wizards, this store has also prepared a 10% discount coupon for flying brooms for you, and it has no expiration date so if you can't buy a broom right now you can still use it some other day. The witch had just finished speaking and the little wizards around exclaimed in happiness. Taking advantage of this time, the witches who had just returned took out a lot of display items. Our store and 14 surrounding stores sell, trendy male and female wizard costumes, prank toys and broomsticks designed by Master Randolph Spudmore. There are also magic perfumes, all kinds of precious potions, precious pets, etc. We always welcome your visit, and your purchase. After the witch finished speaking, she led the people back. Leaving those display items where they are. Oh Merlin, what a beautiful broom. Ron broke away from the group and lay down beside the showcase, looking at the beautifully shaped broomstick in front of him. As Quidditch players, the twins and Harry also came to his side. It's beautiful, but mom won't buy it for you, Ronnie Ekins. Yeah, stop daydreaming, look at the price. Harry looked in the direction the twins were pointing. Seeing the price of 2,000 galleons, even Harry, the rich second generation, was surprised. Ron had apparently figured this out too. But he still said bluntly, Master Spudmar's broomsticks are always worth their price, I think 2,000 galleons is very fair. The twins smiled at the stiff-mouthed Ron. But they were quickly attracted by the prank toys next to them. George, I don't think I've seen these toys in Zonko's magic joke shop. Fred, that means the owner of this store is also a genius for mischief. My God. I really want to make friends with him. 
On the other side Molly Weasley and her little daughter Ginny were admiring the gorgeous clothes. Seeing the longing in the eyes of her daughter, Molly gritted her teeth and said, You are going to Hogwarts this year, how about mom buys you a robe from this shop in a few days? Really? But it costs a lot of money. Don't worry, mom will find a way. There was another commotion among the crowd as Dumbledore came from afar with the Hogwarts professors. As the greatest wizard of this century and the pride of the British wizarding community, people politely made room for Dumbledore. Watching the bustling scene Dumbledore couldn't help feeling amazed by Lucas' methods. As far as he knows, Lucas hasn't shown up yet. The shopkeeper has a mysterious identity, and big shots appear one after another. They also made a great display of souvenirs and merchandise. It can be said that it has whetted the appetite of everyone present. Only Lucas is missing at the moment. Given his young age, it is conceivable that the entire English magic world will get the news of this explosion before tomorrow. The most mentioned after dinner must be Lucas and the Alliance group behind him. Even Dumbledore couldn't help but praise Lucas' brilliance. At this time the door of shop number 88 opened again. After the previous surprise all eyes were on the door. Accompanied by a burst of light footsteps, the beautiful Vinda Rosier came out of the door. This French rose specially dressed up for today. Whether it is the clothes or accessories on her body, they were all products of their own store. As soon as she appeared, she attracted everyone's attention. Thank you for coming, please allow me to introduce the owner of our shop, Mr. Lucas Grindelwald. Dazzling blonde hair appeared in everyone's sight and the gentle, deep blue eyes fascinated the young witches present. Lucas was exuding an air of nobility with every move. He politely invited Fudge, Dumbledore, and other important people to his side. Then he said to everyone, Thank you for the honor, especially Minister Fudge, the directors, Headmaster Dumbledore and the professors. Ron stared dumbfounded at the dazzling blonde boy in the distance. It never occurred to him that the person he just decided to admire and was yearning for is actually one of the people he hates the most. It was like a bolt of lightning hit him. He turned his head to look at Harry beside him, wanting to complain to his friend, but he found that Harry looked at Lucas with admiration in his eyes. Ron's mood became even worse. He looked around and found that except for himself, nobody else in the family seemed to hate Lucas. Especially his mom and Ginny. Because of that little bottle of trial perfume, the two were full of goodwill towards Lucas. Not to mention the twins and Percy. The twins' relationship with Lucas was already good while Percy has always admired those excellent and influential people. Ron continued to look at the shop and saw Minister Fudge actually interacting with Lucas happily. Even Dumbledore was smiling. He had only seen such a scene in his dreams. Then Ron saw his father. Mr. Grindelwald, my name is Arthur Weasley, director of the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts Division. Mr. Weasley, I know you and I have a very good relationship with your sons Fred and George. The smile on Arthur's face became more obvious after hearing this. Especially hearing that Lucas invited him to cut the ribbon. His whole face became red with excitement. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, set sail, business, reward, 100 achievement points. Once Lucas, Fudge, Dumbledore, Lucius Malfoy and Mrs. Zabani completed the ribbon cutting. The opening ceremony of the store is considered to have come to an end. Due to the store opening today, all other stores will be closed. Watching the crowds swarming into the store Lucas knew that the reputation of these shops was earned. Two days after tomorrow, the news will be published in major newspapers. Lucas and Lucas shop will get the attention of all wizards in England. Minister Fudge, store manager Grindelwald, look this way. A reporter from the Daily Prophet found the two of them at this time. Fudge's lips were grinning to his ears at the moment. Of course, he hoped that the business of the store would get better and better, after all, he also had a share of it. So, facing the reporter's interview, Fudge is sparing no publicity. At this time Lucas noticed the Weasley family in the distance. When he saw the girl among them, his eyes lit up. Thanks to Merlin, Ginny Weasley is not the movie version. She is worthy of being one of Hogwarts school beauties, her appearance is really outstanding. Vinda, help me with something. Calling Vinda to his side, Lucas whispered a few words in her ear. Vinda nodded, turned around and walked into the shop. Not long after, Ginny Weasley's exclamation came from the crowd. When people saw the items in her hand, they all showed envy in their eyes. Chapter 85, Lucas's Trick, Recruiting Professor Snape Last Bonus Chapter Ladies and gentlemen, our first prize has arrived, and the winner is, Miss Ginny Weasley. 
Ginny looked at the lottery ticket in her hand in disbelief since she was here just to try her luck. But she didn't expect that each person had a chance to draw a lottery and she actually won the first prize. Ginny, who just turned 11 this year, looked at her parents in bewilderment. Go on, what are you waiting for? Ginny, you're the best. We're proud of you, sister. Everyone in the Weasley family is cheering for Ginny and even Ron is no exception. It's just that he still wants his sister to do him a, small favor. Ginny, if someone asks you what you like later, just say you like that broomstick. Ron's words immediately drew glares from his family. The twins pushed Ron to the back of the crowd, one on the left and one on the right. Molly Weasley lovingly said to her little daughter, Choose whatever you like, baby. Miss Weasley, have you made a decision yet? Ginny was a little nervous about Vinda beside her. After hesitating for a long time, she whispered, I want a robe, is that okay? Of course, please wait a moment. After Vinda finished speaking, she walked to the staff lounge. It was the first time Ginny was in the limelight and it made her very uncomfortable. At this moment, exclamations came from the crowd. Ginny turned around and saw Lucas walking in front of her holding a luxurious witch's robe. Nice to meet you, Miss Weasley, thank you for coming today, this is a prize for you, the best witch's robe in this shop. In addition, in order to thank you for bringing your good luck to our store, I decided to give you a bottle of limited edition magic perfume, I hope you can accept it. Ginny stared blankly at the blonde boy in front of her, especially his bewitching blue eyes that seemed to contain a mysterious magic power. She suddenly felt her cheeks heat up so she took the gift in a hurry, said thank you, and ran back to her parents. Ginny, how can you be so rude? Molly scolded her a little, and then made a special trip to thank Lucas. That's your grade chief. Pansy Parkinson's father asked softly. Although he was talking to his daughter, his eyes kept wandering towards Lucas. That's right, he's a very attractive man, and he's also very strong. Grindelwald the man muttered to himself, and then to his daughter, you need to get closer to him at school if you can, do you understand? Pansy frowned slightly, but nodded anyway. She heard the meaning of her father's words, it's just that she likes Draco Malfoy. Besides, Pansy doesn't think she's Lucas type either way. Fortunately Lucas didn't know what Pansy's father was thinking. As long as his daughter looks like a pug, Lucas really can't accept it. At the same time Mrs. Zabani was busy inspecting all the shops. Watching the endless stream of customers, this charming lady never stopped smiling. After all, she was also getting a cut from the profits, so how wouldn't she be happy? Blaze, get along well with Mr. Grindelwald, it would be good if you can get into his circle of friends, the future belongs to you young people, you know. Don't worry mother, I know what to do. The same words appeared in every corner of the store. Most of the children from influential families who came here today are in Slytherin House. The shrewd Slytherins will certainly not miss the opportunity to make connections with the strong. Vinda, go find Professor Snape and tell him that I have something very important to discuss with him later. Once Vinda just left, Lucas was tapped on the shoulder. Seeing Hermione standing behind him, he stepped forward to give her a hug. No, my parents are here. Hermione continued with reddish ears, I'm sorry, because I brought my parents with me, I was delayed for some time, and I couldn't attend your opening ceremony on time. Looking at the little witch with eyes full of guilt in front of him, Lucas rubbed her head, messing up the fluffy brown hair even more. Stop. Hermione pushed Lucas' mischievous hand away and quickly took out a comb to straighten her hair. I have a gift for you, but let's meet your parents first. Mr. Granger and Mrs. Granger are good talkers, especially Mr. Granger. He didn't have the haughty attitude of other dentists. You know, the social status of dentists in England is very high. Uncle, aunt, just tell Hermione what you like, and I'll find someone to give it to you. The Grangers smiled and nodded. However, Mr. Granger's gaze has been shifting between his daughter and the handsome young man in front of him. Hermione couldn't stand her parents' scrutinizing gaze so she hurriedly dragged the two of them to the store next door to choose clothes. We won't bother you, you go ahead. After sending off Hermione and her parents, Lucas also attracted the patriarchs of several pure-blood families. Although he has long been used to this kind of situation. But the non-stop talking with people also made Lucas feel physically and mentally drained. Lucas, let me introduce you, this is my mother. Looking at the elegant lady beside Draco Malfoy. Lucas greeted the beautiful lady modestly, Mrs. Malfoy, it's nice to meet you. It's my honor, 
Mr. Grindelwald, I haven't thanked you for taking care of Draco at Hogwarts. After he returned home this time, my husband and I found that Draco has grown a lot, and we are very grateful. Seeing Narcissa Malfoy, Lucas suddenly thought of the locket that should still be in the old Black family house. Mrs. Malfoy was a member of the Black family before she got married. He needed to ask the nagging house elf Kriaker to hand over the locket. Maybe Narcissa or Draco could help him with this. Narcissa is a bit difficult, but Draco is easy to deceive, he also has half of the blood of the Black family on his body, so he might also be able to command the house elf. Let's do that, take Draco to Grimald Place as soon as I get back from France. Lucas thought. At this time, Draco who looked happy, suddenly felt a gust of cold wind blowing into his wizard's robe that made him shiver uncontrollably. Just when he felt strange, he heard Lucas say to his mother. I've heard that you were formerly part of the Black family. I remember my father once said that Mr. Arcturus Black was one of the best wizards he had ever seen. My grandfather would be very happy to know that Mr. Grindelwald praised him. Narcissa Malfoy replied with a smile. The two chatted about some interesting things about Draco's life at Hogwarts, until Lucas saw Vinda beckoning to him. Then he apologized and walked towards the staff lounge. Pushing open the door he saw Professor Snape, dressed all in black standing with his back to the wall. Why don't you take a seat, Professor? Is there something urgent that makes you be in a hurry to leave? Mr. Grindelwald, if you only brought me here to listen to this nonsense, then I better leave. Holy Spirit Grass, I have Holy Spirit Grass here. Professor Snape, who had already opened the door, stopped immediately. What did you say? Seeing Professor Snape appear in front of him in the blink of an eye, Lucas repeated himself again, I said I have Holy Spirit Grass. Impossible, the Holy Spirit Grass has long been extinct. As soon as Professor Snape finished speaking, a pure white flower full of vitality appeared in front of his eyes. Is this, Holy Spirit Grass? Seeing Snape's obsessed eyes, Lucas raised his head a little proudly. There are very few things that can catch Professor Snape's attention. Lily Potter counts as one. Potions are another. Possibly, probably now, just maybe, Harry Potter needs to be added. Lucas believed that no potions master could refuse the Holy Spirit grass. Because the Holy Spirit grass is the key material for refining the water of life. Water of life, the best healing potion to ever exist in the wizarding world, even better than Phoenix Tears. No matter how bad the injury is, as long as there is a breath left, it can be healed by the water of life. It can be called a magical potion with miraculous effects and every potion master in the world wishes to make it at least once in their life. However, the Holy Spirit grass has long been extinct and the water of life can only exist in books. But just now, Lucas took out a genuine Holy Spirit grass. Professor, can you sit down and talk slowly? State your terms. Professor Snape asked immediately after taking his seat. His character is like this, never procrastinating, always right to the point. I need you to brew five bottles of advanced potions for my potion shop every month, and provide a bottle of Felix Felicis every six months. Of course, I will provide all the materials, and I will also pay you for the production. At the end of each year, I will give you a Holy Spirit herb, how about it? Professor Snape was silent for a long time. Yes. Are there any specific requirements for high-level potions? Not yet, but after school starts, I need you to provide me with Wolfsbane Potion for one person every month. Wolfsbane Potion. Professor Snape looked at Lucas with scrutiny. It's not for myself. Oh well. Seeing that the Grumpy Potions Master agreed to his request, Lucas took out a wooden box and put the Holy Spirit grass in it. This is a deposit paid to you in advance. If you decide on which five high-level potions you want to brew, Write to me anytime, and I will send someone to deliver the materials to you. Finally, Professor Snape, I wish us a happy cooperation. Looking at the right hand stretched out in front of him Professor Snape snorted coldly, turned and walked towards the door. But before going out he still reminded Lucas, less publicity in the future, things like what you did at the end of semester dinner will only arouse unnecessary suspicion against you. Watching Professor Snape walking away quickly, Lucas chuckled suddenly. Their head of house really has a weird temper. A busy day is finally over. Back at his manor in Wiltshire, Lucas sat wearily on the chair. Hestia flew to his side, holding a letter from Hermione in her mouth. The content of the letter is mainly the gratitude that the Granger couple asked Hermione to convey on their behalf. Today was a real eye-opener for the Grangers, they also got a lot of interesting gadgets from the wizarding world. 
Lucas fell asleep right after reading the letter. Early the next morning, the sun was shining on Lucas' face. He remembered that he seemed to have fallen asleep in a chair yesterday. Presumably Vinda must have found him and moved him to the bed. Pat. A post office owl flew from a distance throwing a newspaper precisely onto Lucas' windowsill. Opening the newspaper, the headline on the front page featured a profile photo of Lucas. Immediately afterwards, a line of large characters came into view. Genius? Prodigy? Or just another Grindelwald? Chapter 86, Genius? Child Prodigy? Another Grindelwald? Today is another peaceful day for the whole of England. But for the wizarding world in England. Today is not so peaceful. Early in the morning numerous owls flew to all parts of England with newspapers. There wasn't any of the usual news in the newspapers. This time it's all about Lucas Grindelwald and his shop. Even the most unreliable newspaper the Quibbler had a picture of Lucas on the front page. The difference is that it is exploring whether Lucas has a connection with mysterious creatures and some conspiracy theories. As for the Daily Prophet, the official representative of the Ministry of Magic. It took several pages to publish the news about Lucas. The front page used a photo of Lucas and Fudge. The content of the newspaper is a lot of hype about Lucas' 15 newly opened stores. The rest are all praises for Minister Fudge's brilliance. But what people talk about the most is the report content of the Witch Weekly magazine. Genius? Prodigy? Another Grindelwald? Such an eye-catching title immediately grabbed people's attention. The report popularized Lucas' surname in detail. Incidentally, it also helps people recall what another Grindelwald did decades ago. Then, the reporter started to get to the point. According to the reporter's understanding, Mr. Grindelwald's performance at Hogwarts was excellent. He is eloquent and talented, and he already possesses leadership qualities in the first year of school, which is so similar to his father. Let us take a look at this grand opening ceremony, almost all the celebrities from the British Magic Circle attended. It also includes the Ministry of Magic and the major pure-blood families. Does the reporter have reason to suspect that Mr. Grindelwald intends to imitate his father? Below these texts the reporter added a photo of Lucas chatting with members of the Alliance. In the photo, it shows how they all appear respectful of him. It's easy to make people think that Lucas is planning something evil when in fact, he was really just chatting with them. The rest are basically conspiracy theories. The reporter pointed out that Lucas was not as kind as he appeared. It's almost like calling him a demon in human skin. Unfortunately, in the wizarding world there aren't laws against libel. Otherwise, Lucas would have gone to the Ministry of Magic to sue the stupid reporter, even if he got pretty close to the truth. Turning the newspaper to the end, Lucas wanted to see who could write such an eye-catching report. But when he saw the reporter's name, his expression was a little surprised but more relieved. Rita Skeeter, I believe anyone who knows this name knows who she is. Reporter for the Daily Prophet, illegal animagus in the form of a water beetle. It's precisely because of this that Rita Skeeter is always able to invade other people's privacy. Lucas was surprised because she was obviously a reporter of the Daily Prophet, but published the article in the Witch Weekly magazine. But soon he figured out the key. The Daily Prophet is, after all, the official newspaper of the Ministry of Magic. How could it be possible for Rita Skeeter to talk nonsense at will without the support of the Ministry? And, to think that she wrote the article. Lucas was relieved, no one could make up so many stories except her. Congratulations to the host for obtaining a new achievement. Household name, reward, 100 achievement points. The door was pushed open and Vinda along with Abernathy entered. Seeing the magazine in the boy's hand, Vinda asked softly, Do you want someone to deal with it? No, people just read this for fun. Lucas put it aside and turned to look at Abernathy. Uncle, welcome back. Abernathy is now fully recovered, even stronger than before. When the two met again, they naturally had a lot to talk about. But before that, Lucas picked up the Witch Weekly and handed it to Vinda. Although the reports don't matter, the person who wrote this article is a talented person. If you find her, she may be useful in the future. In addition, find a few members who seem to be well-educated, and let them work for the Daily Prophet. Newspapers are the fastest way for common wizards to learn about the magic world. With newspapers in hand, we can control public opinion in the magic world at any time. Waiting for Vinda to leave the room. Only then did Lucas turn to chat with Abernathy about the recent situation. Vinda and Abernathy are special to him. Not only did he grow up under the care of the two, even the first spell Lucas learned was taught by Abernathy. 
so when he saw Abernathy hurt, Lucas was incredibly angry, angry enough to destroy the German Ministry of Magic. Greengrass Manor, Hampshire Astoria Greengrass, ten years old, was sitting in the garden sulking. Such a grand ceremony yesterday, but the family actually forgot about her. Just because she overslept. Astoria, how long are you going to be angry? Hearing the voice of her sister Daphne, Astoria snorted coldly and turned her head to the other side. Well, it was my fault, but look what I brought you. Looking at the newspaper in front of her, Astoria showed doubts. But when Daphne pointed to the magic photo on the front page. This is Lucas Grindelwald. The newspaper in her hand suddenly disappeared. Astoria looked at the boy in the photo and said excitedly, So this is the chief my sister often talks about. I really want to grow up to be eleven soon, so that I can go to Hogwarts to go to school, but unfortunately I have to wait another year. T slash N, different fandoms have different birth dates for Astoria, some say she was born in 1981 and others in 1982, this fanfic follows the later. The girl had just finished speaking when she suddenly raised the newspaper to signal to her sister excitedly. Look, he has gold hair and blue eyes just like you. Seeing the excited appearance of her sister, Daphne slapped her forehead, she knew that she should not have talked about the school to this girl. The Borough, Ottery St. Catchpole Ron Weasley woke up this morning feeling malice from all directions. Be it his parents or siblings, they are all talking about yesterday's opening ceremony. Naturally, the name Lucas Grindelwald also pops up from time to time. Harry, I heard that you are in the same class. How is Mr. Grindelwald in school? Of course Harry was telling the truth about how amazing he is. This made Molly Weasley appreciate Lucas even more. Oh Merlin, Mr. Grindelwald gave our family such an expensive gift should I knit him a sweater this Christmas? In this case, I need to start preparing in advance. Seeing that his family members seem to be possessed by demons, Ron Weasley said helplessly, Mom, don't waste your efforts in vain, that guy Lucas won't like it. Ronald Weasley, you have to learn to be grateful, you know? I heard that you always troubled Mr. Grindelwald at Hogwarts, didn't you? Seeing his mother's serious face, Ron immediately sat down in his seat and had breakfast stuffing his mouth with a sullen face. Humph. Molly snorted and continued, I don't expect you to be like Mr. Grindelwald. But at least you should get A's, acceptable, and not two DS, dreadful, an AT, troll. After Molly finished speaking, the others immediately laughed. The twins' ridicule is not concealed at all. Ron rolled his eyes angrily, and turned to look beside him. Hey Ginny, what are you doing? Hearing Ron yell, Ginny immediately put the daily profit away. Nothing, I'm full. Looking at his younger sister who hurried upstairs, Ron looked at the others puzzled. Obviously, nobody wants to answer the oblivious Weasley. Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Dumbledore sat in the headmaster's office looking at the newspaper in his hand, not knowing what to think about it. Just then, Professor Snape walked in. This is your potion for this month. Let me remind you again, headmaster. If you don't stop eating so many sweets, it may not be as simple as a toothache. Professor Snape left right after speaking. Before reaching the stairs, he heard Dumbledore's inquiry behind him. Severus, what did Lucas talk to you about yesterday? It's nothing, he made a deal with me, asking me to provide five bottles of high-grade potions to his potion shop every month, and one bottle of Felix Felicis every six months. And you agreed? Of course. Snape nodded. I will decide the type of potion, as long as it is a high-grade potion, I have no reason to refuse such excellent conditions and generous rewards. Well, thank you Severus. After making sure that Dumbledore had nothing else to ask, Professor Snape turned and left the headmaster's room. 8 Heathgate, Hampstead Garden Suburb, London. Hermione threw the Witch Weekly magazine on the ground angrily. That's bullshit, Lucas isn't like that. Rita Skeeter? How can someone like that deserve to be a reporter? The little witch hated this reporter who dared to slander her Lucas. She even swore that if she met her in the future, she would have a serious discussion with her. The two might be fated to be on opposite sides. In the original book, Hermione and Rita Skeeter were enemies. Unexpectedly, even with the butterfly named Lucas, the future relationship between the two still does not seem to have changed. Even, it seems that Hermione came to hate Rita even earlier than originally. Ignoring the Witch Weekly, Hermione picked up the Daily Prophet again. Looking at the high-spirited teenager in the moving photograph. 
Her face was full of pride. Honey, we're leaving for the airport. If we're late, we might be late for our flight to France. Got it mom. Hermione put the newspaper in the suitcase, then dragged it out of her room. Muggle travel is really troublesome, neither the levitation spell nor the shrinking spell can be used. The little witch suddenly felt that magic was so convenient and practical. Hours later, the Grangers walked out of the airport with their daughter. Looking at the Eiffel Tower looming in the distance the three smiled happily. At this time, Hermione heard an extremely familiar voice coming not far from the three of them. Uncle, Aunt, Hermione, what a coincidence. They looked at the blonde boy walking towards them and the Granger adults immediately set their sights on their daughter. At this moment, Hermione was completely stunned. Chapter 87, The Fog That Fills the City of Romance You, why are you here? Lucas thought Hermione's surprised expression was really cute. Didn't I say before that I'll be going to France to deal with some things during the holiday? Looking at the little witch who suddenly realized, he knew that she must have forgotten. Uncle, aunt, it's nice to see you again. The Grangers responded with a smile. As adults, they see things more clearly than their daughter. The timing of the appearance of the blonde boy in front of them was too coincidental. However, the two never interfered with their daughter's affairs too much because she's always been mature so they trust her. And in their hearts, they also think that Lucas is quite good for their daughter. Looking at Lucas who is chatting enthusiastically with her parents. Hermione, who was left behind alone, suddenly realized that they seemed to have fallen into Lucas' trap. If things continue to develop at the current pace, her parents will be taken down by him soon. The little witch suddenly woke up and hurried forward to interrupt their conversation. After a short rest at the place Lucas arranged for the Grangers to stay at, he led them to explore the beauty of Paris. As a landmark, the Eiffel Tower is a must. Other important scenic spots such as Notre Dame Cathedral and the Opera House must also be visited. Especially Notre Dame. Lucas really wanted to say to the Grangers, just watch as much as you can and don't forget to take pictures. After all, in the future this historic cathedral might be set ablaze. Paris is one of the 30th largest cities in the world. In this era, there is no doubt about it. The streets of Paris, known as the Romantic Capital, are full of young couples holding hands. The banks of the Seine River have become a great place for couples to take a leisurely walk. The Grangers excused themselves for being tired and entrusted their daughter to the care of Lucas. At this time, the young little wizards are walking along the banks of the Seine. You arranged for my father to win the lottery, right? The company that doesn't want to disclose its name should be the Saints Group, right? That's the name of his muggle company. Actually, I should have noticed a long time ago. Which company sponsors a lottery without leaving a name? Isn't this a waste of money? The little witch analyzed the ins and outs and complained, but in her heart she was moved by what Lucas did. Let me ask, which woman can refuse a man who pampers her like this? Looking at the moved expression of the little witch, Lucas smiled and hugged her in his arms. The sunset, the riverside, plus the romantic atmosphere. Stop, there are too many people here. Lucas raised his finger and pointed to the distance as white mist flew out from his fingertips. Suddenly, Paris was shrouded in thick white fog. Lucas, how can you use magic on vacation? Oh my dear, now is not the time to care about these things, besides, this is Paris and the British Ministry of Magic has nothing to do with it. Lucas hugged the little witch tightly again, and asked with a smile, Is it all right now? The sudden appearance of dense fog aroused the attention of the whole of Paris. Some people think it is a manifestation of God. Others thought it was a supernatural phenomenon. But more people feel that this is a gift to the romantic city. In the thick fog, many young couples embraced each other. Underground in a park in the middle of a street in Paris. The French Ministry of Magic is in disarray. Wizards are no strangers to the mist outside, but the magic that enveloped the whole of Paris is still a rare sight. Have you found out who is performing this magic? Louise asked her orators. Louise Perrin, Minister of Magic of France. This capable woman has a high prestige among French wizards. She and Headmistress Olympe Maxime of Beausbatten are the two most influential witches in contemporary France. But now, this charming female minister is frowning because of worry. Not yet, there is even worse news. Just now we detected many strange magical reactions in Paris. I think there is no need to make guesses, there should be a large number of Alliance members gathering in Paris. Bang! Lucas Grindelwald is this his doing? Trying to intimidate us? 
Louise slapped the table in front of her angrily. Thick fog that appears for no reason and the unknown wizards who keep entering Paris. The temper of the female minister gradually became violent. Ring ring ring. The old style phone on the table rang. There is only one telephone in the entire Ministry of Magic, and this phone is connected to the most powerful people in France. Hello, about the fog, we will deal with it shortly. Minister Orwell came from afar, and looking at the despondent Louise Perrin he sneered in his heart. Just a short time ago, the French minister was still laughing at them for the destruction of the German Ministry of Magic building. But how long has it been and the entire French Ministry of Magic also fell into chaos? It has to be said that Lucas Grindelwald is really a scourge. Waiting until she hangs up the phone. Orwell said in consolation, Minister Perrin, calm down. Based on my experience in dealing with Grindelwald for many years, this incident is not serious. It's not serious. Fortunately, it's just a thick fog. For the romantic French, most people can accept it, but what about fiend fire? Orwell's face was livid, but he had nothing to say, knowing that their Ministry of Magic building was destroyed by fiend fire. He tried hard not to explode and kept repeating in his heart. What if the French are not their friends? As long as they can be allies against Grindelwald, that's all that matters. He took a deep breath and decided not to bother with the woman in front of him. I propose to send Aurors to maintain order in the Ministry of Magic, and if there are not enough people, I will bring some of my own. Louise Perrin nodded in agreement, and added, Your people should go find Lucas Grindelwald. Our people saw him on the streets of Paris yesterday, but they lost him and haven't found him again until now. This makes me very worried. They both gave instructions to their respective assistants and waited until they departed to keep talking. Louise and Orwell brought the topic to Dumbledore. Neither of them understood why the wise and great Dumbledore had chosen to shelter Grindelwald's child. When I was young, I heard the older Aurors say that Dumbledore and Grindelwald were good friends. The two even formed a blood pact when they were young, which is why Dumbledore took so long to stop Grindelwald. It seems that it was with the help of Newt's commander who stole the blood pact from Grindelwald, that Dumbledore could finally do something about it. Orwell's voice echoed across the room. Hearing these words from him, Louise Perrin seemed to understand Dumbledore's reasons for doing this. But she still felt that Dumbledore's move was too muddled. Even someone as strong as Headmaster Dumbledore will grow old and be confused one day. Hearing Louise's emotional words, Orwell couldn't help but nod in agreement. Accompanied by the orders of the Ministers of Magic of the two countries. The orders of both countries sprang into action. The staff of the Ministry of Magic, as well as the common wizards who came to the Ministry of Magic to deal with personal affairs, suddenly saw how many orders appeared at the various entrances and exits. Headmistress, what's the matter? Fleur Delacour looked at the enormous woman beside herself. She accompanied the headmistress Madame Maxime to the Ministry of Magic to handle school-related affairs today. But the appearance of the Aurors as if facing a formidable enemy aroused her curiosity. Madame Maxime was also a little puzzled at first, but soon she remembered that she had received a message recently. It's okay, we'll go back after we've dealt with what we came for, the rest has nothing to do with us. Fleur seemed to understand and nodded. Since the headmistress said there was no problem, she no longer worried. Go back to continue communicating with the staff about school matters. Fleur was still a little curious about what made the Ministry of Magic attach so much importance to it. She looked at her palm again. Since yesterday, she has sensed that there is something in the city center that's attracting her. That's why she offered to come to the Ministry of Magic with the headmistress today. Just what is it? On the banks of the Seine River, Lucas let go of his arms. There was an embarrassed smile on Hermione's face and her cheeks were flushed. Send me back, I'm tired today, and you're going to the French Ministry of Magic later. Are you sure you don't want to go with me? Hermione shook her head, I believe you can solve it, and if I go, you will have some worries in your heart. After saying that, Hermione turned and walked towards the hotel. When approaching the front of the hotel, the little witch turned to look at Lucas. In the past, my ideal was to grow up and work in the education industry, so that I could spread my knowledge to others. When I came to the magic world, my ideal has not changed, but I need to spread more knowledge, and I need to learn a lot more. But now I have a new ideal. I want to become the Minister of Magic. I want to change the status quo of the magic world. This is the decision I just made. Hermione proudly announced and at the same time, she also added a sentence in her heart, it is also a decision made for you. The little witch has been in the wizarding world for a year. 
of course she has an idea of what kind of organization the Alliance is. Therefore, she has such a great ideal. Lucas looked at her with a smile and said, I believe you can do it. Watching Hermione enter the hotel, Lucas turned and walked towards the French Ministry of Magic. Just as he entered the underground hall through the entrance, he suddenly heard someone calling his name behind him. Turning around to look at who it was, Lucas said in surprise, Why are you here? Chapter 88 The Alliance is attacking a Ministry of Magic again? Lucas never expected to meet Cho Chong in a foreign country. Long time no see, why did you come to France? The Ministry of Magic asked my mother to come to France to pick up something for her job. I'm bored at home so I came to have a look. By the way, I haven't had time to congratulate you. Congratulations on the opening of your stores. I just arrived in France that day, so I couldn't go to congratulate you. I'm really sorry. Not having seen Lucas in over a month. Cho Chong felt that the blonde boy in front of her became even more fascinating than before. In fact, she didn't come because she was bored. She just learned from Hermione that her family is going to travel to France. Only then did she beg her mother to bring her along. It's just that she didn't expect that she and Lucas were so predestined. In a foreign country, both of them can meet by chance, this fate is really wonderful. When Lucas heard that explanation, he remembered that Cho's mother worked in the Ministry of Magic. Thank you for your blessing, do you want to go in together? At this time, the two had followed the crowd to the wand registration office. Although the country is different. But the rules are the same, any wizard visiting the Ministry of Magic needs to register their wand. Originally, Cho didn't intend to go in, but since Lucas invited her, might as well go in. At the same time, Louise Perrin and Orwell also received news from the Aurors. What? Lucas Grindelwald is in the lobby. What are you all doing? You didn't find out until he was at the door. Louise had never felt that the wizards under her command were so incapable of doing things before. Notify everyone to gather in the front hall immediately. When the assistant left, Louise Perrin extended an invitation to Orwell. Come on, let's meet this Lucas Grindelwald. Inside the Ministry of Magic, the wizards coming and going watched curiously as groups of Aurors ran towards the elevator. Just now, they looked like they were waiting for an attack. Why did they all leave in a short while? Fleur who was dealing with school affairs, also discovered this. But she is more sensitive than others. She noticed that those Aurors were in a hurry, as if they were rushing somewhere. Fleur, hurry up, we'll leave right away after we're done. Seeing Madame Maxime frowning slightly, Fleur knew that her guess was not wrong. On the fifth floor underground, Louise and Orwell walked towards the exit shoulder to shoulder. On the next floor they would reach the front hall. Watching the Aurors passing by in a hurry, Louise finally showed her first smile of the day. Boom! A cluster of dazzling flames appeared in front of the two of them. Dumbledore and Fox the Phoenix appeared with the firelight. Like a prophet, this old fox suddenly appeared in France. No one knows exactly when he came, let alone how long he has been here. Oh Minister Perrin, Minister Orwell, long time no see. Long time no see, Headmaster Dumbledore. The old bee took out some candy from his pocket and handed it to the two. It has almost become a habit of his. As long as he talks about things with people, he must first give them some candy. What a busy ministry of magic. Dumbledore turned his gaze to the Aurors running past and said meaningfully. However, isn't it too much to treat a child like this? Headmaster Dumbledore, we are only taking some necessary precautionary measures. I think such vigilance is necessary. If outsiders know the boy's surname, it is very possible that he will be attacked with a killing curse while walking on the road. And we are doing this to protect his personal safety. Orwell's words were affirmed by Louise Perrin and the three of them walked towards the door leading to the front hall while talking. Mr. and Miss, this is not a place to talk about love. This is the Ministry of Magic, if you don't go in, please don't delay the people in line behind you. The wizard at the wand registry said impatiently because these two little wizards have delayed his work too much. After hearing those words, Cho Chong blushed slightly, and hurriedly took out her wand. Lucas politely apologized to the other party. I'm really sorry, we are friends who just met in a foreign land by coincidence, so we couldn't help but chat a few more words. These are our magic wands, please register them. At this moment, there was the sound of chaotic footsteps behind him. It was as if there were hundreds of people walking together. 
Cho turned around curiously and saw that the people who were queuing up behind them had disappeared and were replaced by a charming lady in the latest fashion pointed hat. Aside from her, there was a group of people who were not very talkative, and these people densely filled the entire front hall. She hurriedly turned her head and nervously said to Lucas beside her, Let's go in quickly, those people behind look a little scary. After saying that she urged the wizard in charge of registering the wands, who was obviously also intimidated by the aura of the group in front of him. But once he saw the look of that charming lady glancing at himself, the wizard hurried back to his senses. Well, lady, here is your wand. Looking at Cho Chang's worried eyes, Lucas said softly, You go in first, I'll be right there. Cho walked through the registration desk step by step, passed through the gate behind and successfully entered the French Ministry of Magic. What appeared in front of her was an indoor plaza. But at this moment, the square was full of people, their expressions were solemn as if they were waiting for someone to arrive. She looked at the three people standing at the front again and caught sight of Headmaster Dumbledore standing on the left at a glance. Why is the Headmaster in France? Perhaps he sensed her gaze, because Dumbledore shot her a smile. Cho, why did you come in, come to mom quickly? Cho's mother hurried to the door and pulled her daughter into the crowd. Mom, what happened? I don't know but it must be serious. Back at the wand registry, Lucas Wand was finally registered. Thanking the worker politely, he walked towards the door behind him. Vinda Rosier came to the registration office, raised her wand and asked, Do you need me to hand you my wand? No, no need. The poor man was sweating as he answered nervously. Thanks. After Vinda finished speaking, she led the rest of the acolytes to catch up with Lucas. When Lucas walked through the gate first, the French Ministry of Magic looked like they were on the verge of meeting a formidable enemy. Understandable, since Lucas and his group made too much noise and with their reputation. Lucas. Cho Chong wanted to ask Lucas to come towards herself, but before she finished speaking her mother covered her mouth. Soon, she understood why her mother looked so nervous. Behind Lucas, many people appeared one after another, including that charming lady she saw earlier. These people all stepped through the gate and stood behind Lucas although they are only a few hundred people. But in terms of momentum, it overwhelmed hundreds of wizards in the square. For wizards in France, Grindelwald and his acolytes are just like the British wizarding world mentioning Voldemort and his Death Eaters. Did the wizards of France hate the Alliance? The answer is yes, but they are also full of fear of them. The blonde boy led his men towards Dumbledore and the two ministers. Headmaster Dumbledore, I am really sorry for making you come all the way to France. Minister Perrin, Nice to meet you, I think this is our first time meeting each other, my name is Lucas Grindelwald. Lucas first greeted the two of them, then he looked at Orwell who was left alone. Oh, Minister Orwell, I haven't seen you for a few months. I'm so glad to see you in such good health. How is it? Is your Ministry of Magic building ready? Don't bother Mr. Grindelwald, our building has been rebuilt and it's even better than before. I really should thank the person who started the fire. Lucas was not angry because of the German minister's insinuations. But Orwell obviously didn't intend to let him go easily. Mr. Grindelwald really has made such a big show. He came to the court meeting and brought so many people to appear intimidating. I think you have misunderstood, Minister Orwell, I just brought some people here to be worthy of such a grand welcome ceremony. Seeing that Orwell was still planning to continue, Louise Perrin immediately stood up and interrupted. Mr. Grindelwald has traveled all the way here and there is still some time before the court hearing, so why don't I show you around the place? I also have this plan, so I have to trouble Minister Perrin, Headmaster, do you want to go together? Certainly. Dumbledore stepped forward with a smile and the two walked side by side towards the interior of the Ministry of Magic. Looking at the backs of the three of them acting so friendly Orwell snorted disdainfully, but finally followed behind them. Cho Chong watched Lucas fade away with her eyes full of curiosity about him. My dear girl, you have to remember, no matter whether you are at school or outside, you must stay away from that boy. Cho obviously didn't intend to agree, but seeing her mother's concerned eyes, she nodded. But whether she will be really obedient, only she knows. The French Ministry of Magic is not much different from the English one. The departments are basically the same. But both the architecture and the decoration here are full of French style and look much more aesthetically pleasing. Except for important places. Lucas visited almost every place in the French Ministry of Magic he could go to. Until they came to the trial court where the next court session was about to start. 
Congratulations to the host for completing a new achievement, exploring the French Ministry of Magic, rewards, 200 achievement points a map of the French Ministry of Magic. One of the purposes of this trip was accomplished. Lucas and Dumbledore walked into the courtroom, talking and laughing together. As for Vinda and the others, they stayed outside and waited for news. Now I announce that the court proceedings concerning the seizure of 63 stores under the name of the Saints Investment Group in Germany and France will now begin. Accompanied by the sound of a hammer being struck. Lucas also came to sit on the high-backed chair in the middle of the courtroom. Chapter 89, The Cooperation of the Old Fox and the Young Fox Chief Mage of the Supreme Wizarding Court of France The status is equivalent to the Chief Warlock of the Wizengamot in the British Wizarding World. Every trial or court meeting is hosted by the Chief Mage. And the Chief Mage of France this time, is none other than Minister Louise Perrin. Now the representatives of the Ministry of Magic of France and Germany will state the reasons for the closure of the 63 magic shops under the name of the Saint Investment Group. As Louise's voice fell, the supreme jury composed of 50 wizards turned their attention to the representatives of the two countries below. Good afternoon, Chief Mage Perrin, and all the members of the jury. Next, I will explain the reasons for closing down the Saints Investment Group store. As we all know, the predecessor of the Saints Investment Group is the non-governmental organization known as the Alliance. Everyone here must be familiar with the Alliance, and we have reason to suspect that they are using the Saints Investment Group to conduct illegal transactions such as dangerous and forbidden goods through the disguise of their legal stores. So, our two countries have sealed up 63 shops in the territory, out of consideration for the safety of the wizards of the two countries. The representatives of the two countries finished speaking and the jury began to whisper. The impression of the alliance on the minds of these people can be described as very bad. That's why Lucas insisted on Dumbledore's presence. Because Dumbledore is great enough. Bang bang. Louise picked up the gavel and knocked it a few times, making the calm be restored in the courtroom. The following to talk is Mr. Lucas Grindelwald, representative of Saints Investment Group. The eyes of the audience immediately turned to the boy sitting on the chair in the middle. Looking at his immature age many older wizards looked puzzled. What about Vinda Rosier? That proud French rose, why didn't that traitor come? What about Abernathy? That cunning American wizard has been in charge of the business of the two countries, and what about the rest? Could it be that they are too timid to come and talk? They did not understand why the Saints group would send a child. Your Majesty Chief Mage, good afternoon, fellow jurors. With regard to the baseless accusations made by the representatives of both countries, I would like to emphasize two points. First, the Saints Investment Group is committed to restoring friendly relations with the two countries. Our group is a compliant and legal private enterprise. For the slander of the representatives of the two countries, our Saints Investment Group will never admit it, and will resolutely ask the two countries to stop their baseless accusations. Second, we are an united and friendly private enterprise that has made outstanding contributions to the magic circles of both France and Germany over the years. Since the establishment of our Saints Group, we have donated a total of 100,000 galleons to the magic circles of the two countries, and also helped many wizarding families to solve their employment problems. I hope that Your Majesty Chief Mage and the members of the jury can restore the functioning of our company's 63 stores and compensate for one year's economic losses, totaling 800,000 galleons. After Lucas finished speaking, he handed over the donation proof he had brought. Upon seeing this, the representatives of the two countries retorted, protest, these donations from the Saints group all started within the last two years. They're just trying to escape the wizarding laws. Protest. Lucas slowly raised his right hand and waited until everyone's eyes focused on him again, then he looked at the representatives of the two countries. Sir, you made groundless accusations against our company and I will file a complaint later. Your remarks have greatly damaged the image of our company. This is against morality and against the law. Your Majesty Chief Mage and all the jurors, Kindness should not be misinterpreted. Every donation from our Saints group can stand your verification. On the contrary, the representatives of the two countries have confused our company with the non-governmental organization Alliance from the very beginning, just to interfere with your judgment. I admit that the predecessor of our company did a lot of wrong things decades ago. But over the years, our Saints investment group has shouldered the responsibilities of our predecessors and properly compensated the affected families. We will support the elderly who have no children, and we will help families with financial difficulties, in order to make up for past mistakes. Decades have passed, and what was the alliance at this moment has become nothing more than a private enterprise. 
We even went so far as picking a different name for our group so we won't be confused with the alliance of the past, all this is because we do not wish to repeat the same mistakes. Lucas made an impassioned speech which not only made Louise Perrin and the 50 jury dumbfounded, even Dumbledore stared dumbfounded at the blonde boy standing in the courtroom. The whole courtroom was silent and the people present couldn't recover from Lucas' remarks for a while. Looking at the expressions of these people, Lucas was filled with disdain. In his previous life, he was the main player in the debate team of a prestigious school, and these old antiques of the magic world want to discuss with him? Orwell had come in to listen, but now he was seeing the representative he elected being left speechless by Lucas. He glared at him angrily. Coincidentally, Louise Perrin did the same. The two then looked at each other and Louise nodded imperceptibly. Boom. Sophistry, sophistry. Lucas Grindelwald, don't try to get away with it. You led the Alliance to burn down my German Ministry of Magic, what do you have to say about that? Looking at Orwell with a fierce face Lucas' eyes were full of disdain and disgust. Slander, slander. This is an insult to me personally and to my colleagues, Chief Mage, I strongly protest, please expel this irrelevant person. This. Louise hesitated. She didn't expect that Orwell couldn't restrain his temper at all. This is a court meeting and such unsubstantiated accusations are very dangerous. But thinking of the rumors she heard recently, Louise felt relieved. It is said that wizards in Germany have been protesting recently, hoping that Orwell will step down. If today's result ends with Lucas Grindelwald winning, it wouldn't affect her much. But for Orwell's ministerial position, it can spell its end. Lucas also recalled the information Vinda told him about Orwell's current situation. Of course he knows it all. Looking at Orwell who was glaring at him, a cunning smile suddenly appeared on the corner of his lips. That being the case, just let him add a handful of firewood, and wish Minister Orwell to step down as soon as possible. Your Excellency Chief Mage, jurors, it is inevitable that some people will continue to have such misunderstandings in the future, so I will explain to you today. The building of the German Ministry of Magic was burned, and it has nothing to do with me or the Saints Investment Group. Headmaster Dumbledore of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry can attest to that, can't you, Headmaster? Seeing Lucas look to himself, Dumbledore knew it was his turn to play next. Under the watchful eye of France's highest court of wizards Albus Dumbledore walked over to Lucas. Yes, I and the professors at Hogwarts can attest that what Mr. Lucas said is the truth. Also, here I have a letter from Minister Fudge. The Saints Investment Group has since come to the magic world in England and is busy promoting the prosperity of the magic world. This letter is full of Minister Fudge's praise to the Saints Investment Group, and I hope it can provide you with some reference. Finally, I would like to say a few words in my personal capacity. Decades have passed, so please let go of your prejudices and look at this matter objectively. In addition, those members of the Alliance in the past are now old, and most of them have even passed away. Do you all still have the fear in your heart? Or what do you think such a child can do? Because that is what he is, Lucas is just a child. Dumbledore's words got most of the jury thinking. They turned to look at Lucas, who was standing in front of the chair and just happened to see Lucas' frustrated expression. The lost gaze and the wet corners of his eyes reminded everyone that standing in front of them was just a little wizard who was only 12 years old. The discussion in the trial court gradually became louder, with almost all of them discussing with those close to them. Louise Perrin, who was sitting in a high position, listened to the discussions around her. When she heard that many people agreed to lift the sealed state of the stores, she instantly became anxious. Bang bang! The gavel slammed down hard and the courtroom became quiet again. Due to the views of both parties and insufficient evidence, it is difficult for the jury to make a decision at the moment. I announce that the court session will be suspended and the jury's final decision will be postponed. The trial will resume early tomorrow morning. Lucas tried hard to maintain his downcast look, because at the moment he wanted nothing more than to laugh out loud. After politely saluting the members of the jury, he and Dumbledore exited the courtroom. Lucas, you don't seem to be worried about whether you can lift the seizure status of your stores at all. Because the victory is already decided, of course there is no need to worry. The victory is set. Dumbledore looked suspiciously at the boy walking ahead. Thinking carefully about the process of the court meeting just now, he still didn't know where the winning point was. Lucas met Vinda and immediately took his people back to the hotel where they are staying. Just as they were about to walk into the front hall, a girl suddenly crashed into Lucas' arms. Looking at the long silver hair like a waterfall and those blue eyes. 
Lucas immediately guessed the other party's identity. You are a student of Bose Batons, right? He looked at the girl's school uniform and asked. Fleur nodded, looking at the boy in front of her in surprise. She should have left just now, but suddenly felt that the thing that attracted her was in the Ministry of Magic. So she made excuses and ran back. She just didn't understand why the boy younger than her was so attractive to her. Can you tell me your name? Of course, my name is Lucas Grindelwald, a Hogwarts first year and soon to be second year. My name is Fleur Delacour, soon to be fifth year at Bose Batons. It really was her. Looking at the obsessed look in her eyes, Lucas understood the reason after a little thought. His elven blood has an inexplicable attraction to all magical creatures. And Fleur Delacour has a quarter of Vila blood, or that's what the cover says to reduce discrimination, because all female Vila children are full Vilas. So she should be affected by the blood. Fleur, come here. A female half-giant with a height of more than three meters suddenly appeared. She nodded to Lucas, and forcibly took Fleur by the hand, dragging her away from the Ministry of Magic. The next day. After a good night's sleep Lucas came to the French Ministry of Magic feeling refreshed. Orwell was looking much more haggard than yesterday as he sat in the gallery like a beaten dog. Looks like he didn't have a good time last night Lucas chuckled, and sat down on the chair in the middle of the courtroom. After a while, all fifty jury members arrived. Bang! The court session has resumed. Chapter 90, Push Orwell into the Abyss, the Old House of the Black Family. Jury, after one night's deliberation, have you reached a final decision? Hearing Louise Perrin's inquiry, the forty-nine jury wizards all focused their attention on an elderly man. Just looking at his appearance, the old man should have an advanced age of over eighty years old. This was someone Lucas knew, or rather a lot of people in the wizarding world knew him. France's old minister for magic, Victor Bertrand. T slash N, the MTL name was Sean Hope but that doesn't sound French at all so I googled and the French minister in Grindelwald's time was named Victor no last name, the character is played by David Bertrand so I just mixed the names. I just showed my OCD right? XD. Lucas frowned, not expecting this guy to come. Victor Bertrand was the leader of the rebellion against Gellert Grindelwald. After a long deliberation, the Supreme Wizarding Court voted to revoke the state seizure of the stores under the name of the Saint Investment Group by Germany and France. The compensation of 800,000 galleons proposed by Lucas Grindelwald is rejected, but considering the huge economic losses of the 63 stores over the past year, the Ministry of Magic of Germany and France will compensate a total of 200,000 galleons. Victor handed the parchment in his hand to the court assistant beside him to deliver the document with their decision to the chief mage. Lucas, who was sitting below, heaved a sigh of relief in his heart. He thought the old man was here to make trouble and didn't expect him to just come out for a formality. Although he doesn't understand why Victor Bertrand helped him, but as long as he wins. Lucas looked at Orwell in the gallery at this moment, and saw that his face was showing an extremely ugly expression. He has been preaching in Germany that Lucas and the Saints group are heinous criminals. But now the criminal in his mouth has won the court hearing. And he is about to take away 100,000 galleons in compensation from him. If it is known by the wizards in Germany, his position as minister will be left hanging by a thread. No, it should be said that he has now entered the countdown to step down. Lucas stood up and thanked the jury around him. Thank you for your righteous words. I hereby assure you that as long as I am here, the Saints Investment Group will redouble their efforts to contribute to the future of the French magic community. With his guarantee, some of the younger wizards present looked satisfied. Orwell stood up reluctantly at this moment. Everyone, I swear to Merlin, this guy is not as simple as he appears on the surface, please think again seriously, he is a Grindelwald. Minister Orwell, when you and I exchanged views on this issue, you said at the time that our French court would make the decision and you will not interfere in any form with the result, but what do you mean by your statement just now? Do you want to go back on your word? The speaker was the French director of magical law enforcement. As the most powerful department, the director's words carry a lot of weight. Seeing this, Orwell looked towards the highest position in the courtroom and saw Louise Perrin's faking ignorance. Everything is over now. These four words flashed in his mind as he sat down on the chair despondently. Louise Perrin got up and reannounced the resolution of the Supreme Wizarding Court of France. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Tongue Fighting Hero, Reward, 500 Achievement Points. The court session is over and the members of the Supreme Wizarding Court began to exit. Lucas did not leave immediately, but stayed behind and greeted every wizard who left, 
thanking each of them for their fair resolution. His elegant, humble attitude won the favor of everyone. Including Louise Perrin, Lucas stepped forward to express his gratitude. Waiting until everyone leaves. The Director of Magical Law Enforcement, David Fielding, came before Lucas. Mr. Grindelwald, thank you for donating 100,000 galleons to the French Foundation for Magical Orphans. I should thank Director Fielding. Thank you for giving me such an opportunity. The Saints Group has always been a strong supporter of charity. Not long ago, members of the Saints Group found out some information about David Fielding. As the Chief Director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, he actually set up a foundation in spite of his busy schedule. As soon as he learned about the worrying financial situation of the foundation, Lucas sent 100,000 galleons to the other party. That's why Lucas said yesterday that the victory is sealed. As long as he impresses the jury first, Director Fielding will naturally help with the rest. By the way, Director Fielding, why was the ex-minister Victor Bertrand here today? I invited him here. Although my uncle has retired for many years, his prestige is still there. He also asked me to tell you that after decades have passed, don't mention the past, as long as you sincerely do things for the magic world in the future. Unexpectedly, there was such a relationship between the two. No wonder Fielding has such a strong say in the French Ministry of Magic. Five days have passed since the court session. Lucas accompanied Hermione and Cho Chong in Paris these days. The rest of the time was spent in contact with various French families making connections. Thanks to the good impression he made in the court, no one has yet refused to open their door. Aunt Vinda, is the German hundred thousand galleons coming? Not yet. Lucas threw the newspaper on the table. On the front page was a photo of Orwell walking out of the German Ministry of Magic. 100,000 galleons became the straw that broke the camel's back. In just five days the German wizards cast 90% of the votes in favor of driving Orwell out of office. Aunt Vinda, if I were to invite Orwell to work in our saints group, would he be willing? Vinda chuckled and said, I guess he would rather die than work for our group. Tisk, what a pity. The reason why Lucas would say such a thing. It was entirely because when Orwell stepped down, the system rewarded him with 100 achievement points. Said to be the reward for the defeat a strong enemy achievement. But this supposedly powerful enemy is only worth 100 points, which is not worth much. This time Lucas received 200,000 galleons in compensation from the two countries. But he was not very happy. Lucas donated a total of 100,000 galleons of various materials to the two countries in the past two years. This time, in order to secure the chance of winning, another 100,000 galleons was donated to Director Fielding's foundation. He planned to take advantage of this incident, and the lion opened his mouth. Even if it is less than 800,000, 500,000, or even 300,000 is good. Unexpectedly, the old guy Victor Bertrand only gave him 200,000 galleons as compensation. He probably wants to tell Lucas that they will not owe each other from now on. Victor Bertrand, is really not an easy person to deal with. At this moment, the door was suddenly opened and Abernathy walked in hurriedly. More than 60 shops have reopened, and our people are so busy, but you are still chatting here. Uncle Abernathy, haven't I already handed over the business of the two countries to the Caro family, why do you worry so much about it? Abernathy was going to retort a few words. But before the words were spoken, 100,000 galleons from the German Ministry of Magic arrived. Time flies. In the blink of an eye, the seven-day tour of France will come to an end. The Grangers had a great time these days. On the way back, Lucas also took the plane with them. To be honest, Lucas had never flown on a plane in his life. After the experience, he suddenly felt that using a port Kaya was more convenient. Once he was finally back to his Wiltshire estate the sun was already setting and the sky was about to fall into darkness. The next day Lucas arrived at Malfoy Manor early in the morning. When he saw Draco playing with Crab and Goyle in the yard. Without saying a word, he went up and knocked the platinum-haired boy unconscious and dragged him away. Crab and Goyle watched Draco being dragged out of the manor, dumbfounded. When Draco woke up from the coma he saw Lucas breaking a ward on a building. Is this Grimald place? Oh? You actually know this place, that makes things much easier. At this time, the old house of the Black family has shown its true appearance. Just looking at the appearance, no one will believe that this dilapidated house with dirty windows could be the mansion of one of the oldest and most noble pure-blood families in the wizarding world, the Black family. Lucas, what are you doing here? I came to find something. 
Lucas gripped the silver twisting serpent handle. Accompanied by an unlocking spell. The Black family house which has been dusty for many years, finally welcomes a new visitor. Hey? The inside is much cleaner than the outside. Didn't mom say that there are no people in the Black family left? Looking at the clean and tidy interior furnishings Draco was very surprised. Lucas glanced at him like he was a fool. Although the people of the Black family haven't come back for some time, there are still portraits and a house elf here. Why are you looking at me like that? I haven't forgiven you for knocking me out yet. Lucas ignored Draco who was shouting behind him and stepped into the long hallway. Because of the traceless extension spell, the mansion of the Black family is very large on the inside. Just as Lucas was about to find the target of this trip, an old, raspy voice suddenly came from a dark corner in the distance. Oh, Master Malfoy, you are welcome. Draco hurriedly turned his head and looked towards the corner, and under the dim light he saw a house elf standing there, watching the two of them with a knife in his hands. Chapter 91, The Useless Draco, The Promise with the Black Family Really, the Malfoy boy and an elf broke into the mistress' house, the mistress would be very angry if she found out. Hearing the muttering of the house elf Kriaker, Draco asked displeased what are you talking about? Kriaker didn't say anything, Kriaker was welcoming Master Malfoy. Draco glared at the cunning Kriaker, then looked at Lucas puzzled. What are you looking for? Mom never let me come here. She said Mrs. Walburga Black hates being disturbed by others. What did Kriaker mean by elf? I found it. Lucas looked at Kriaker with glowing eyes. Kriaker, let me ask you. Do you have a heavy locket that cannot be opened? Kriaker stared at Lucas in horror. Then, with a snap of the fingers, he disappeared. Draco. Draco immediately understood what Lucas meant. Being half of the Black family, he immediately called out to the empty room, Kriaker, come to me right now. Pop. There was a soft sound and Kriaker appeared in front of the two again. Kriaker reappeared because of the order, but he never looked at the two of them. Kriaker. I believe you have also seen my identity, I can help you destroy the locket, will you let me help you? Kriaker looked at the blonde boy in front of him with a hint of doubt in his eyes. He was thinking why this person would know what his nice master Regulus ordered. After a few seconds, seeing that the decrepit house elf still refused to speak, Draco frowned heavily. It's better for me to order him. You want to get a locket, right? Seeing Lucas nod, Draco immediately issued an order, Kriaker. Bring the locket immediately. Kriaker remained where he was. Seeing his trembling body, he seems to be resisting Draco's orders. When the trembling stopped, Kriaker raised his head and said, I'm sorry, Master Malfoy, you are not Kriaker's master, and Kriaker will not obey your orders. Draco's face flushed with anger. If Lucas hadn't stopped him, he might have attacked Kriaker. Lucas looked at Draco with contempt, Draco, why must you have platinum blonde hair? It would be better if you had more black hair, Tisk, it's really useless. It's well known that the hair color of most of the black family is black. My last name is Malfoy, not black. What Draco is most proud of is this platinum hair color, he spends a great deal of time every morning arranging his hair. Even if Lucas is his best friend, he doesn't allow him to talk bad about his hair. Lucas was just joking too. He came to Kriaker and knelt down. Looking at the house elf with determined eyes he sighed. Draco, please go out first. Hey. Draco's face was full of reluctance, but seeing the gaze Lucas cast on him he opened the door wisely and walked out. Once only Lucas and Kriaker were left in the house, neither of them spoke. Kriaker brought Lucas into the living room and silently prepared a cup of coffee for him. Lucas, on the other hand, was wondering how to get the stubborn, elderly house elf to hand over the locket. Before coming here Lucas had a detailed understanding of the history of the Black family. This is a family that advocates pure blood supremacy. It is also the oldest and noblest pure blood family in England. During the height of Voldemort's power, most members of House Black took great pride in serving the Dark Lord. Because the Dark Lord, like them, advocated blood purity. But who would have thought that there would be two outliers in the family? Sirius Black, Harry's godfather and best friend of James Potter. He was rebellious and pursued freedom. From the bottom of his heart, he loathes the pure blood ideas of the Black family and after graduating from Hogwarts, he resolutely joined the Order of the Phoenix. Working with his friends in the vanguard against Voldemort. If you are his friend, you can completely trust Sirius because he's even more loyal than a Hufflepuff, 
and even his animagus form is a dog who are known for their loyalty. But if it's seen from the interests of the family, serious behavior almost ruined the Black family's long history. Just imagine, when Voldemort found out that the Black family actually fell into the arms of the old bee. With his crazy character in the later stage, I am afraid that he will lead people to destroy the Black family immediately. As for why he didn't. It was because of one person, Regulus Arcturus Black, Sirius' younger brother. In the eyes of Sirius, his brother was timid and cowardly. The useless younger brother who always follows behind him but is deadly afraid of their mother. Regulus joined the Death Eaters at the age of 16 and quickly became someone Voldemort trusted. It is also thanks to him that the Black family could be preserved, because he took on what should have been his older brother's responsibilities. Regulus Black. Kriaker suddenly looked up at Lucas. Hearing this name, his eyes showed sadness and guilt. Regulus was a kind man, and he never regarded Kriaker as a slave, but as a friend. Such Regulus won Kriaker's allegiance, regardless of whether he was his master or not. As for why he felt guilty, it's probably because Kriaker has not completed the task assigned by his master Regulus even after so long. To the Dark Lord. I know I will be dead long before you read this but I want you to know that it was I who discovered your secret. I have stolen the real Horcrux and intend to destroy it as soon as I can. I face death in the hope that when you meet your match, you will be mortal once more. R.A.B. You, how do you know? Kriaker looked at the elf in front of him in surprise. No one should know about these things. Lucas took a deep breath, and said softly to Kriaker, how about we make a deal? At this time a year later, I will bring back your master Regulus' body and his locket. At that time, will you hand over the real locket? Kriaker became a little anxious and started to become incoherent, but poison, and monsters, there, impossible. Kriaker. A proud, indifferent voice suddenly sounded. Lucas saw a noble woman in a portrait on the wall. Presumably she is Mrs. Black. Young wizard, if you can really bring Regulus back, I will agree to your request, and the Black family will never forget your kindness. Madame Black's eyes were full of sadness. Although she is just a portrait now, but she is a portrait with the memory of Mrs. Black. So it is normal that she would also be sad for her favorite son. Kriaker bowed to the portrait, yes, mistress. Looking at the old black house that is slowly disappearing behind him looking as if it was being squeezed by both houses next to it. There was a wave in Lucas' eyes. He was disgusted with Sirius. Very disgusted. Maybe it's because his actions were not in line with Lucas' philosophy. When Sirius was pursuing freedom and taking risks with his friends, it was his scared and shy younger brother who took up the responsibility and future of the family. On July 31, 1980, Sirius was smug as he became godfather. While the cowardly and useless younger brother in his eyes stayed forever in that cold, damp cave full of corpses in order to fight against Voldemort. Thinking of Sirius Black who will escape from Azkaban next year, Lucas sneered. Sirius better hope not to fall into his hands. Lucas, are you done? Looking back at Draco beside him, he nodded slightly. Almost, although the time is a bit rushed, but it shouldn't be a big problem. Hearing the ambiguous answer Draco frowned, but he soon put it behind him. By the way, father asked me to thank you for the warning. The misuse of Muggle Artifacts Division were actually searching wizarding homes recently. It's a good thing you reminded my father in time, those nasty Weasley, they must have been targeting my family. Seeing Draco's disgusted expression Lucas just smiled and didn't express his opinion. When they returned to Wiltshire Draco suddenly said, Don't worry about today's matter, I will keep it a secret for you, including my parents, although I don't know what you want to do, but I believe in you, my best friend. Looking at the platinum-haired boy who walked into Malfoy Manor, Lucas chuckled, This guy has finally grown up. The following days Lucas had a relaxed and comfortable life. It would be better if Draco didn't come a few times a day. And it would be even better if he didn't bring the two idiot trolls every time he came. It's been like this for two weeks. Finally, the Hogwarts Owls brought the new school year's book list. Voyages with Vampires, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Break with a Banshee, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Gadeeing with Ghouls, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Holidays with Hags, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Wandering with Werewolves, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Travels with Trolls, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Year with the Yeti, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Magical Me, by Gilderoy Lockhart. Looking at a long list of books, all Gilderoy's novels, Lucas frowned, Aunt Vinda. 
when Vinda pushed the door and came in front of him. He handed her the envelope in his hand, get me a set of stupid Gilderoy retarded Lockhart's books from our bookstore, oh Merlin, Dumbledore is crazy. He had just finished speaking when Hestia brought in Hermione's letter. Coincidentally, Cho Chong also sent a letter from her own owl at the same time. Looking at the contents of the two letters that are exactly the same Lucas frowned slightly, not knowing what the two little witches meant. But just going shopping in Diagon Alley, he has no objection. He wrote letters to both of them and turned back to read the book on his lap. It's just that the title of this book looks creepy. The Cruelest Black Magic in the Magic World for Thousands of Years Chapter 92, Encounter in Nocturne Alley, Riddle's Diary Appears When there was still a week until Hogwarts started, Lucas left the manor early in the morning and went to Diagon Alley. The purpose of his coming here was to find the ginger cat from the original book for Hermione. He has ordered people to prepare for this matter for a long time. Coincidentally, the news came yesterday. The reason why Lucas was looking for Crookshanks. Aside from Hermione, he was also hoping that the cat would find trouble with the stinky rat in Ron's hand. It was verified by his subordinates that Crookshanks was indeed part Neasel, and extremely sensitive to Animagus. At the same time, the Weasley family were preparing to leave their home, the burrow, they were also going shopping in Diagon Alley. Flo was a new experience for Harry and in his nervousness he mispronounced Diagon Alley and ended up saying diagonally. Harry suddenly felt a bad premonition, but before he could regret it, the Flo network sent him to an unknown place. Looking at the eerie environment around, he quickly picked up the glasses that had fallen to the floor, then he suddenly heard a voice from afar. Oh Mr. Malfoy, welcome again. A warm smile appeared on Mr. Borgen's face. This is not the first time Lucius Malfoy has visited. In fact, Mr. Malfoy had been here once in the last week. Mr. Borgen, please see how many galleons these are worth. Lucius Malfoy placed an exquisite box on the counter. Because Lucas revealed the news in advance the Malfoys didn't deal with dangerous goods as hastily as in the original book. At this moment, the poison in his hand is already the last batch in the family. Items that are valuable and cannot be destroyed or sold have been deposited in the family vault. As for the last piece, Lucius Malfoy looked at the black leather diary inside his robes. This was something that Voldemort had entrusted to him for safekeeping. Lucius never understood why he was asked to guard a diary with his life. But feeling the strong dark magic on it, he could guess that this diary must be very important to Voldemort. This diary cannot be left behind. But how to deal with it, Lucius Malfoy felt a big headache. Why don't I just give it to Dumbledore? Such thoughts flashed through his mind quickly. Just as he was hesitating, he suddenly heard the scream of his son behind him. Draco, what are you doing? Draco's hand was being held by Harry at the moment. Seeing the gesture in his friend's eyes, Draco shook his head immediately and said, It's nothing father, I was just shocked. Mr. Borgen looked at Draco, then he said in a greasy tone, Oh, that is the hand of glory, as long as you put a candle on that hand the candle light will only illuminate the path for the person holding it. This is a good helper for thieves and robbers, does Master Malfoy like it? It only costs twenty galleons. Without waiting for Drac to reply, Lucius said in a haughty tone, Mr. Borgen, do you want my son to be a thief or a robber in the future? Sorry Mr. Malfoy, I didn't mean that. Mr. Borgen hurriedly put away the box and the poison. But Lucius Malfoy doesn't seem to be planning to let his son go. He looked at his son coldly and continued, but what Mr. Borgen said might have some merit. With his current achievements, he may need to use this hand of glory in the future. Draco looked helpless. Throughout the summer, his father kept bringing up the subject of grades. Receiving the payment for his objects, Lucius Malfoy walked out of the Borgen and Burke's store with his son. Draco was still a little worried before going out. This wasn't Diagon Alley, and he was wondering if Harry would be all right. Around the corner across from the store stood Lucas stroking Crookshank's head while the big, shaggy cat was purring comfortably. Looking at the Malfoy father and son who were gradually going away, Lucas' eyes flickered on and off. He was thinking about how to get Riddle's diary from the other party. According to his group's investigation, the Black Journal was not among the dangerous goods disposed of by the Malfoy family during this time. It means that the Horcrux is still with Malfoy. In the original book, Lucius Malfoy mocked the Weasley family and mixed the diary into Ginny Weasley's used book. But now looking at the direction they were leaving, they don't seem to be going to Diagon Alley, but seem to be going back to Wiltshire. This is not acceptable, so Lucas immediately took a shortcut and rushed in front of the Malfoys. 
Lucas? Why are you here? As he looked at the blonde boy walking towards him, Mr. Malfoy frowned subconsciously. But when he thought of the identity of the child in front of him, his brows relaxed again. Uncle Lucius, Draco Lucas greeted them. I came to fetch these two pets and ended up wandering off. After Lucas finished speaking, he gestured to the cat in his arms and the little swan in the cage. The little swan is a gift for Cho Chong. The little guy can only grow to the size of a volleyball at best and it's usually pretty silent, not making any trouble. But if its owner is in danger, the little swan will make a loud cry. As for how loud it is? According to his subordinates, the little guy's cry, most of Hogwarts should be able to hear it. Then Lucas pretended to be concerned and asked, Uncle Lucius, have you taken care of those things at home? Lucius raised his eyebrows, don't worry, today was the last batch. That's good, some of my uncles have been raided by the Ministry of Magic recently, and they even had conflicts with people from the Ministry of Magic. Lucas showed a helpless expression, I need to go to Mr. Arthur Weasley to apologize later, it's too bad, I'm still a student. Weasley? Is he here too? That's right, I saw their family in Diagon Alley just now, and they seem to be buying their children's school materials. Speaking of which, Gilderoy Lockhart will be holding a book signing event at Flourish and Blot's bookstore today, shall we go and see it together later? No. Mr. Malfoy shook his head and refused. I still have something to do with Draco, excuse me. Lucas stroked the fat cat in his arms, watching both Malfoys walking towards Diagon Alley. Son, are you lost? Come with me, I can help you find your way home. An old woman with a wrinkled face appeared next to Lucas. Seeing the old woman's dirty palm reaching out to him Lucas immediately dodged to the side. Immediately afterwards, he kept walking towards another road leading to Diagon Alley. When Lucas was far away the people around looked at the old woman who was standing still. Seeing her pale, bloodless skin there was an exclamation from the crowd, killing curse, that boy killed old Mary. As soon as they heard that someone used the unforgivable curse, the crowd scattered and fled the place not wanting to deal with all the trouble. Even in places like Nocturne Alley the unforgivable curses are taboo. Harry. The sound startled the crowd surrounding Harry. Seeing Lucas, Harry hastily parted from the crowd and rushed toward him. Thank God, I finally met someone I know, Lucas, where is this place? Nocturne Alley. After Lucas answered, he looked at the people around him. Although everyone does not know the identity of Lucas, but they have seen him around here from time to time. Every time someone wanted to trouble the blonde boy. Without exception, it never happened again, so the crowd tactfully scattered around. Lucas looked at Harry beside him and saw soot all over his body, even the glasses had a lens shattered. Reparo. Scour Jiffy. With a wave of Lucas' wand, Harry's glasses were repaired and his clothes became clean and tidy. Harry, you should really learn the restoring charm, it will be very useful for you. I thought so too, by the way, can you take me to Ron? Lucas nodded, turned around and walked out with the golden boy. If it wasn't for seeing Harry, Lucas would have forgotten that this trouble magnet had entered Borgen and Burke's store by mistake. As Harry walked out of Nocturne Alley under the leadership of Lucas, looking at the familiar surroundings he silently breathed a sigh of relief. At this time Hermione's voice came from afar. Seeing the little witch running out of the magic pet shop, Lucas was lucky to have prepared Crookshanks as a gift for her. Oh, what a cute cat. Do you like it? This is a gift for you. It may be a little grumpy, but it has a rather extraordinary ability. Hermione lifted Crookshanks into her arms. One person and one cat stared at each other for a few seconds. I like it, it will be called Crookshanks from now on. Really, this cat and this name were really meant to be. Harry looked at the two conversing in their own world and refused to disturb them, but he needed to find the Weasleys soon, so he interrupted them apologetically, Sorry, can you tell me where Ron is? Ron Weasley. Hermione seemed to remember seeing them somewhere. She turned to look at the Flourish and Blotts bookstore not far away, they should be over there, Gilderoy Lockhart has a book signing event today, and they are all attending it. Looking at the little witch showing such a flat expression, Lucas was slightly surprised. Hermione should have been a loyal reader of Lockhart. Seeing the look in Lucas' eyes, Hermione immediately understood what the other person meant. I did read his books, but I found that they have a lot of loopholes, in one of the books he was still with vampires. But in the next book at the exact same time he happened to be spending time dealing with a werewolf, so I think Lockhart is a fake liar. It has to be said, 
the little witch's intuition is very accurate. Lucas smiled and looked towards the bookstore, just in time to see both Malfoys walking to the door. As a top family in the magic world, when did Malfoy go to a bookstore to buy a book by himself? So there is only one possibility, Lucius Malfoy intended to plant the diary on the Weasleys like in the original book. At this time, Cho Chong just came to meet him and smiled happily when she received the gift from Lucas. Although Hermione was a little unhappy, she didn't say anything. Lucas breathed a sigh of relief when he noticed. Let's go, let's also go to Flourish and Blot's bookstore to have a look. If there is a good response to the book signing, I might also hold one in my own bookstore. Hermione rolled her eyes after hearing this, why is Flourish and Blot's doing this, isn't it because of your bookstore? While speaking, they had already arrived at the entrance of the bookstore. Chapter 93, Signing Event and the Fight Gilderoy Lockhart, Signed Autobiography Magical Me for Sale Above Flourish and Blot's there was an incomparably huge advertisement floating. With every character being a size similar to that of an adult. This ensures that all wizards in Diagon Alley can see it. Judging by the overcrowded appearance of the bookstore, this should have made a lot of contributions. Sorry, excuse me. Most of the bookstore customers were women, with most of them being housewives, all loyal fans of Gilderoy Lockhart. Oh Merlin. Hermione tapped her forehead suddenly, then she lowered her head. Lucas looked over curiously, and saw the Grangers standing in the front row at a glance. The two seemed very interested in Gilderoy Lockhart's book. Hearing the laughter beside her, Hermione looked at him angrily. Hermione, you have to admit that Gilderoy Lockhart is very popular among middle-aged people. Lucas, I saw the Weasleys, I'll go first, thank you for your help. Harry said suddenly at this moment. Watching him squeeze into the crowd, Lucas felt that after not seeing each other for a while, Harry became more impetuous than before. Lucas took Hermione and Cho Chong up to the second floor. Compared to the first floor, the space on the second floor seemed much more empty. You guys are also here, come quickly, you can see more clearly from here. Lucas didn't know when it was that Draco appeared on the second floor, but he was standing directly above Gilderoy's signing table. While their group chatted while leaning against the railing, a commotion was heard from below. Out of the way, this is a photo shoot for the Daily Prophet. A short reporter yelled into the crowd. Lockhart turned to look at the camera, frowning suddenly. A few seconds passed and he suddenly realized, Merlin, isn't this Harry Potter? The crowd followed Gilderoy's gaze and immediately noticed the famous Harry Potter. Harry was still a little embarrassed at the moment. Although his glasses and clothes were sorted by Lucas, but there was still a lot of black soot on his face. Ron didn't see his friend's distress and excitedly pushed Harry and said, he wants to take a photo with you, hurry up my good friend. He said this very loudly. It seemed that he wanted to tell everyone that he was a good friend of Harry Potter. The crowd began to murmur, and some gave Ron envious looks. On the second floor of the bookstore Draco frowned and said, what does he take Harry for? A tool to show off to others. Whether it's Lucas, Hermione, or Cho. They all understand who the he Draco is referring to. Watching Ron Weasley's smug face is really annoying. Facing Lockhart's invitation, Harry bit the bullet and walked towards the other party under everyone's gaze. The flash on the magic camera stung his eyes. In order to avoid the flash, Harry couldn't help but look up and he happened to see Lucas along with Draco on the second floor. Now Harry felt like a monkey in a zoo and his cheeks suddenly felt hot. Hey, Lucas, Draco. Everyone followed Harry's gaze to the second floor. When people saw the two elegant teenagers their discussion became more intense. It's Lucas Grindelwald. Merlin, I still remember the unprecedented grand opening of his stores some time ago. But, why did Mr. Grindelwald come to flourish and blots? Doesn't he own a bookstore? Lucas has been in the limelight recently in the British wizarding world. Just as expected. The young appearance had an unexpected chemical reaction with his identity as the behind-the-scenes boss of 15 shops. Even after so long people were still talking about it. Especially after learning about the generous treatment of the Saints Investment Group, many people want to go to seek a job. Good morning everyone, today is Mr. Lockhart's signing event, please support him. Gilderoy Lockhart was a little unhappy at first, thinking that Lucas upstaged himself by showing up. But after hearing what the young businessman said, a confident smile appeared on his face again. Thank you for coming Mr. Grindelwald, would you like to take a group photo? Sorry, I have other things to do, I wish you good luck with your event. After Lucas finished speaking, 
he left the railing on the second floor, because he had noticed that Lucius Malfoy appeared at the door of the bookstore. If there is no accident, he'll be messing with the Weasleys in a bit. Lucius Malfoy did have such thoughts at the moment. For the black leather diary in his hand, he hadn't made up his mind what to do with it. He wanted to give it to Dumbledore, but was afraid of being blamed by Voldemort. But just now he learned from Lucas that the Weasley family had also come to Diagon Alley. The Malfoy family had been feuding with the Weasley family for a long time. So he immediately had a good plan for what to do with the diary. If successful, Arthur Weasley's days ahead may not be easy. Come to think of it, the head of the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts Division at the Ministry of Magic. As the main person in charge of this surprise inspection, what would happen if such a dark artifact appeared in his home? Lucius feels excited just thinking about it now. Uncle Lucius, why are you standing here? Hearing Lucas' voice behind him, Lucius immediately suppressed his smile. Well, it's nothing, I'm just observing, if our bookstore also holds a signing event like this, will it attract so many people as well? Although he knew that he was pretending, Lucas is still willing to cooperate. At this time Harry already had his picture taken with Gilderoy Lockhart. Waiting until after the camera's shutter is pressed, Lockhart politely chucked him off. Harry looked at the complete set of Lockhart books in his hand and smiled wryly. Oh, Harry, you've got a complete set of books signed by Lockhart. Looking at Ron's envious eyes, Harry pushed the books into his arms, since you like them, I will give them to you, I will buy my own. Really, is it okay? Seeing Harry nod, Ron immediately smiled joyfully. If it wasn't for the location, he would have wanted to shout a few words in happiness. Poor Weasley, are you so happy to just get a set of signed books? The characteristic Malfoy drawl caught the attention of the Weasleys. Harry watched Draco approaching from a distance, and immediately greeted him. Draco, long time no see. It's been a long time indeed, the famous Harry Potter. Looking at his friend acting strange there was confusion in Harry's eyes. Before he could ask him what was going on he saw Mr. Malfoy walking behind Draco. Mr. Malfoy who had treated him very well in Malfoy Manor. It was as if he didn't know him at the moment. Harry turned to look at Ron, ready to complain to him. But when he saw that the Weasley family was looking at Malfoy and his son warily, he instantly understood the reason for Draco's and Mr. Malfoy's change of attitude. They probably don't want him to be caught between the two. At this time Arthur Weasley came from afar. Lucius Malfoy. Mr. Weasley called out the name of the man in front of him coldly. Mr. Malfoy sneered slightly. I heard that you have been very busy recently, busy searching everywhere. You work so hard, it's a pity the Ministry of Magic isn't paying you extra for it. After speaking, he walked up to the Weasley family, reached for a second hand book from Ginny Weasley's cauldron. What a poor child, who is clearly a freshman at Hogwarts, but has to use these old books. He opened it casually and looked at it, then he threw it back into the cauldron. No one noticed that there was a black covered diary among the books now. And Lucas, who has been paying attention to it all the time, has a bright light in his eyes. Finally it appeared, Riddle's Diary. Hey, Arthur Weasley, what's the use of being the shame of wizard kind if you can't even get enough food and clothing to live on? Mr. Malfoy was about to leave after speaking since what he had to do was already done. After careful consideration, he decided to put the diary on the Weasley family's youngest daughter. If found out, Arthur Weasley will have a lot of trouble and probably lose his job. If it's not found, the girl might bring the diary into Hogwarts smoothly. In this way, Dumbledore must be able to detect the strong dark magic in the diary. All he needs to do now is to leave as soon as possible. As long as he walks out of the store, the diary has nothing to do with him anymore. Lucius Malfoy silently praised his shrewdness in his heart. A pity that someone didn't want him to. Lucas pointed a hidden finger at Mr. Malfoy and hit him with a leg-locking curse. Lucius Malfoy, who was about to leave, suddenly stood up straight with his legs together and due to inertia, he fell directly towards Arthur Weasley. When Lucas lifted the spell, Mr. Weasley had already picked up the cauldron and hit Malfoy in the face. Oh Dad, come on, hit him. Keep hitting, Dad. Fred and George stood aside and cheered loudly for their father while Mrs. Weasley screamed to stop the two. The bookstore was already crowded and the people, trying to avoid the two of them, accidentally pushed several bookshelves down. The ongoing Gilderoy Lockhart signing event was also forced to stop. Looking at the two wrestling together in the distance, Gilderoy's face was as black as the bottom of a pot. Don't hit it, book, be careful with the books, everyone, please pay attention to your feet. 
The shouts of the bookstore clerks, the sound of booing cheering and the lively discussions were mixed together. Let Flourish and Blot's bookstore become more lively, it even attracted a lot of onlookers from outside. Lucas crossed his arms on his chest, looked at the two wrestling together and said, Mr. Malfoy is really great, for our bookstore, he actually ended up disrupting the competition's event by himself. Hermione gave him an annoyed look. She just saw what happened. Obviously Lucas used the leg-locking curse. Of course, she won't say anything. After all, Malfoy and the Weasleys had nothing to do with her. Dad, Mom, come to my side, don't stand too close. Hermione hurriedly called her parents to her side. At this moment, a loud voice suddenly came from the door, Everyone, please make way. As the familiar voice broke into Harry's ears, he seemed to see a savior, and immediately said to the person who came. Hagrid. Help separate them please. Chapter 94, Diary in Hand, Draco is planning a conspiracy. Hagrid is three meters tall, bringing a strong sense of oppression to the people present. Looking at the two people who were still wrestling on the ground. Picking one with each hand, Hagrid easily separated the two. Unhand me. Lucius Malfoy broke free and shot Hagrid a glare. He seems to be blaming the big guy for meddling. Tidying up his messy robes, he took a last hard look at Arthur Weasley and left the bookstore with Draco behind him. Although the person who caused the trouble has already left, the scene had already become a mess. Ginny, who was closest to the two, was even more unlucky. The books she bought were scattered all over the place. She helplessly picked up the books on the ground, while being careful not to be stepped on by the people close to her. Just when she was about to pick up the standard spells book, a slender hand appeared in her sight as the two touched the standard spells book at the same time. Ginny frowned, and raised her head to see who was trying to take her book away. Her bright brown eyes suddenly filled with surprise as golden hair and impressive blue eyes appeared in her sight. Looking at the gentle smile on the corner of Lucas' mouth, Ginny suddenly felt her cheeks burn. The outstretched hand was quickly withdrawn. I'll help you, be careful. Lucas handed her the standard spells book and asked in a soft tone, I remember your name is Ginny Weasley. Yes, yes, Mr. Grindelwald. Don't be so nervous, I'm not some man-eating monster. Lucas tried to speak to the nervous girl in a relaxed tone. The girl in front of him is small, with a pointed chin, long red hair, and seems to become shy easily. During the chat between the two, Lucas also quickly found Riddle's diary among a pile of books. He used another book to cover it while he reached out and touched the surface of the diary. In the blink of an eye, the diary was taken into Hufflepuff's secret garden by him. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Horcrux Collection, two-sevenths, reward, 100 achievement points. Hearing the beep, the smile on Lucas' face grew wider. He handed the books in his hand to Ginny, and specifically reminded, quickly see if there are any missing. Ginny dared not look up at Lucas at all. She quickly counted the books, and nodded quickly with her little head. Mrs. Weasley came from the side at this time. She had been looking after her husband just now and after confirming that he was fine, she thought of her little daughter. Oh Merlin, Ginny, are you all right? Everything is fine mom, thanks to Mr. Grindelwald for helping me. Mrs. Weasley's eyes were full of gratitude. She clasped Lucas' hand tightly with both hands, and kept saying thank you words repeatedly. Lucas tried several times to free his hand but couldn't. When he finally returned to Hermione's side, his entire right hand was pinched and turned red. Is Ginny pretty? Hermione whispered in his ear. Lucas put his arms around the other's shoulders, she is, but not as pretty as you. Humph. Hermione was clearly satisfied with the answer. Leaving Flourish and Blots, Hermione walked to the leaky cauldron with her parents. According to her, it was because there were still a lot of things left unpacked at home. Before leaving, she asked Lucas to take good care of Cho Chong. Since Hermione left, Lucas and Cho have been silent. Cho, would you like some ice cream? Watching couples of young wizards and witches tasting ice cream through the windows of the shop. Although she was feeling shy, she nodded and agreed. Two servings of ice cream opened the conversation between the two of them. As the seekers of their respective houses, they are also top academics at the same time, so there are many things the two can talk about. Lucas' great sense of humor and a wealth of knowledge attracted all of Cho's attention. Maybe she didn't realize it herself, but the eyes she looked at Lucas with now contained more admiration than before. 
when the two walked out of the ice cream shop it was in a state of talking and laughing as they walked side by side. Lucas, that seems to be Draco Malfoy. Cho, who was shopping, suddenly pointed to the distance. It wasn't just Draco Malfoy, but beside him were several heads of years from Slytherin House. Looking at the way they sit around, they seem to be discussing something. This is strange. The heads of the grades were discussing, but instead of looking for himself, they looked for Draco Malfoy. Lucas seemed to smell a hint of conspiracy. I say, what are you guys doing here? Draco, Payne, and others were startled by the sudden voice. When he saw Lucas walking towards their side step by step, Draco got up first and said, It's so late, I have to go back quickly, otherwise father will punish me again. As he said that, he also pretended to look at the sky. Then without saying goodbye, turned around and ran away to the distance. Seeing this, several other people also made various excuses. Before Lucas could react, the people in front of him disappeared without a trace. Sure enough, there is a conspiracy, but it doesn't look like Draco is the mastermind. Lucas, what happened to them? Looking at Cho who had a curious look on her face, Lucas smiled and shook his head. The two hung out in Diagon Alley until lunchtime. After enjoying a sumptuous lunch together, they bid farewell to each other. Returning to Grindelwald Manor, Lucas locked the door to his room and took out Riddle's diary. Looking at the blank diary, he picked up a quill and wrote hello on it. A week passed quickly. King's Cross Station welcomes a new batch of young wizards. Karen looked at the little girl in front of her and said. Little girl, I have answered this many times, there is no platform nine and three quarters here. Hermione, who was passing by, suddenly laughed. Lucas looked at her puzzled. It's nothing, I just think of myself last year, when I was so stubborn standing in front of that auntie asking where the platform was. If I hadn't met you later, I'm afraid I would have become the first firstie to miss the Hogwarts Express train. Remembering the encounter between the two last year Lucas chuckled a little too. Help me hold the suitcase, I will help that little witch, just like you helped me back then. Hermione handed the suitcase to Lucas, turned and walked towards the little witch behind them. Once they boarded the Hogwarts Express. They still sat in the same old compartment. It's just that there is one more person with them this time. Seeing Hermione and Cho murmuring, he didn't know what they were discussing. Lucas looked out the window. This school year will not be easy for him either. First of all, the exploration of the Forbidden Forest has not been completed yet. If possible, he also wants to recruit the werewolves in the Forbidden Forest. That's why he asked Professor Snape to provide a dose of wolf spain every month. Then there are the secret rooms of the other founders. The Slytherin Chamber of Secrets can only be entered by following Harry. This is nothing to worry about. For Ravenclaw's secret room, Lucas guessed that the diadem should be needed to open it. As it happens, whether it is collecting relics or destroying horcruxes, Ravenclaw's diadem cannot be bypassed. So he also needs to recover it from the room of requirement during the school year. Fortunately, he has figured out a way to deal with all the garbage. Just waiting to go in and test it later. Finally, there is Greyfinder's secret room. This should be the one he's the most clueless about. But he had thought of a possible solution, he just needs to verify if his guess is true. Then he should be able to complete the series of achievements for exploring Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry this school year. By the way, Lucas is also very interested in the basilisk that has lived for a thousand years. Let's add subduing the basilisk to the list. So it looks like he has a lot going on this school year. Lucas looked away and thought of the diary inside his robe. He hasn't destroyed Riddle's diary yet. He still needs the young megalomaniac to wake up the basilisk, so that he can enter Slytherin's secret chamber. And whether or not he can enter Greyfinder's secret room, he also needs the help of this diary. Therefore, keeping the diary is of great use. Lucas, have you seen Harry? Draco's voice came from the compartment's door. Lucas shook his head and asked curiously, isn't Harry normally with Ron Weasley? No, I have searched all the carriages, but there is no sign of the two of them. Dobby. The house elf came to Lucas' mind. Looking at the frowning Draco, Lucas comforted him, don't worry, Harry will be fine. If they really missed the train, they should ask the school or the ministry for help. Even though he said so, Lucas was also a little worried. During the half-month at Malfoy Manor, Harry seemed to have grown a lot. He started to think carefully before making a decision. But since he had an extra Ron Weasley by his side, Lucas wasn't so sure. Just then, 
the whistle of the Hogwarts Express train sounded. Watching the scenery outside the window move slowly, Lucas and others knew that Harry really missed the train this time. At the same time outside King's Cross Station. Ron pulled Harry towards his father's blue car. The car was modified by his father so that it can fly in the sky, and it also has a stealth function. Ron, I don't think we should do that, Mr. Weasley might be in trouble if the Muggles saw a flying car. If we don't catch the train, we will be in more trouble. Ron threw their luggage into the trunk and pushed Harry into the passenger seat. Mr. Passenger, fasten your seat belt. As soon as the words fell, Ron stepped on the accelerator and the car soared into the sky. But he forgot that this was right outside the busiest station. And he didn't turn on the stealth function of the car in advance. Chapter 95, The Conspiracy is Emerging The Power Stones this week were just enough for three extra chapters so this is the last chapter for today. I'm also translating a One Piece fanfic, in One Piece with the Barrier Fruit. It's another villain MC, unfortunately he isn't as classy as Lucas, but well, he didn't have Gellert Grindelwald for a father after all. He doesn't have cheats either, other than knowing the plot. As soon as the train started Draco disappeared immediately. Hermione cast a curious glance at the empty doorway. Why do I think Malfoy is acting a bit strange? Leave him alone. I don't know what he's planning for the past week. Whenever he sees me, he will run away instantly. If Harry hadn't disappeared today, he probably wouldn't have come to my compartment. Although Lucas didn't know what Draco was planning, he is pretty sure that it should be harmless to him. That being the case, Lucas didn't bother to ask. He will know when he should know. The train rattles on the tracks and the scenery along the way attracts the eyes of first-year freshmen. As old students, Lucas and the others only hope to get to Hogwarts soon. Finally after dark, the train stopped at the terminal. Watching first-year students being taken away by Hagrid, Lucas and others followed the station staff to a carriage. Why is there no horse in front of this carriage? Someone in the crowd immediately asked a question. Because the cart is pulled by Thestrals, and Thestrals are magical creatures that can only be seen by those who have witnessed death. The students who answered the questions were from Ravenclaw. For those knowledge-hungry students, these questions have been researched long before school begins. Stop chatting, a group of four, hurry up and get in the carriage. Accompanied by the urging of the staff, everyone got into the Thestral carriages. Just at this time Draco walked unsteadily from behind. Judging from his appearance, he seemed to be still looking for Harry. Draco, still haven't found Harry. No, I will search for him in the school later, I should go to Professor Snape or McGonagall. After that, he boarded the carriage of Lucas and others. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, second year student, reward, 20 achievement points. The dining room at Hogwarts is still the same. Countless candles float in midair while the resident ghosts are hiding between the Great Hall and the gate, preparing a fixed program of welcoming the first ties like every year. Lucas looked over at the Greyfinder table and didn't see Harry or Ron. It seems like they made the same choice as the original. Boom. The closed door was pushed open as Professor McGonagall walked in with a group of frightened freshmen. It turned out that the seniors looked at us like this last year. Did we also look that frightened? Pansy Parkinson had a helpless expression. The same goes for everyone else. But soon the Slytherin's attention was attracted by the sorting ceremony. Blaze Zob and I chatted with Theodore Knott, discussing whether there are any potential attractive girls among the first ties. Pansy and Daphne began to chat about some skincare potions. Luna Lovegood. Hearing Professor McGonagall call out this name, Lucas couldn't help looking at the stool in the middle of the room. Dirty blonde long hair, silvery eyes, light eyebrows, and pale skin, along with a unique ethereal temperament. Luna is so unique among the group of freshmen. Ravenclaw. With the sorting hat announcing the results there was a round of applause from the long table of Ravenclaw. Professor McGonagall looked at the parchment in her hand and said loudly, Ginevra Weasley. Ginny walked nervously to the stool. Before taking her seat, she glanced at the long Slytherin table. Oh Merlin, this beauty is not bad, I can see a lot of future potential. As soon as Blaze Zabani finished speaking, he felt his tongue stick to the roof of his mouth. At the same time Lucas' casual voice rang in his ears. Mr. Zabani, if you look around like a baboon in heat again, I promise, the next spell will turn you straight into a slug. PFT. There was suppressed laughter all around. Zabani shook his head in a panic, expressing that he would not do it again. But his spell was not broken until a sumptuous dinner appeared on the table. Greyfinder. 
Ginny stepped off the high stool with a disappointed expression on her face. With one last glance in the direction of Slytherin, she silently walked towards the Greyfinder table. Lucas didn't notice the girl's emotions, because he noticed that Professor Snape left the table suddenly. Probably because Harry and Ron Weasley arrived. Harry looked at Filch beside him who seemed happy to have caught him and Ron. You're so dead, I'm going to bring you before Professor Snape, he'll be so very happy to have the chance to expel you from school. Oh no. Ron howled in pain. This made Filch even happier. Several people came to Professor Snape's office. The Master of Potions is always in that black robe all year round, with his greasy hair draped over his shoulders. He stared darkly at Harry Potter. The famous Harry Potter seems to dislike the trouble of taking the train, so he did something more exciting with his little friend, am I right? Professor, it's actually... Shut up! Professor Snape didn't want to listen to the Savior's explanation at all. He pulled out the Evening Prophet, which was urgently published tonight. A total of seven muggles saw a car flying in the sky, and the people from the Ministry of Magic could not settle the impact of this incident until evening. Now tell me, what the hell were you doing with that car? Professor Snape was very angry, not just because some muggles saw the flying car. He was even more mad at Harry for playing with his own life. Two underage wizards drove across most of England in a flying car with no safety guarantee. Not even trolls would do such stupid things. Professor Snape took a deep breath, trying to calm himself down. It's a pity, if you were students of my house, I would expel you immediately, it's unfortunate that I don't have that power. However, don't be too happy. I'm going to find someone with this power now. Professor Snape didn't give the two the chance to continue their arguments, he got up and walked out of the office quickly. The loud sound of the door closing startled them both. Oh shit, we're going to be expelled, Snape will never let go of such a good opportunity. Hearing Ron's words, Harry frowned, and this happened to be seen by Ron. Harry, you aren't thinking that because Snape protected you last school year he won't expel you, are you? Didn't you tell me that he hated you and your father? Maybe he only protected you last year because of Dumbledore's orders. Harry frowned even tighter, just as he was about to say something the office door opened again. Watching Headmaster Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall walking into the office the two immediately stood up straight, with their heads down, looking at their toes. What a disappointment, Mr. Potter, Mr. Weasley. Harry stole a glance at Professor McGonagall's expression, and seeing her pursed lips, he suddenly felt a bad premonition. This was the first sign of Professor McGonagall's verbal lashing. Now, explain. The wall access at King's Cross Station was blocked. Before Harry finished speaking, Professor McGonagall asked, Then why didn't you write to us or Weasley's parents, I remember you have an L, right? This. Seeing that Harry couldn't answer, disappointment flickered in Professor McGonagall's eyes. She was about to say something else but was stopped by Dumbledore. Harry, what you and Mr. Weasley have done today has caused the Ministry of Magic a lot of trouble. Mr. Weasley, your father, as director of the Misuse of Muggle Artifacts Division, has an enchanted muggle car at home, which doesn't do him any favors. According to the regulations, I should have expelled you, but I do not intend to do so today. Your punishment will be determined by Professor McGonagall. The look on Professor Snape's face was one of incredulity. He came to Dumbledore and said, Headmaster, the two of them ignored all rules and put the statute of secrecy in danger with their stupidity, they also caused damage to a precious ancient tree property of the school. Enough Severus, leave this to Professor McGonagall, we'll go to the banquet first. When the two of them left, Harry and Ron breathed a sigh of relief. Professor McGonagall also walked out of the potions office after a while. But the two were left behind in the office. Ron ate the bread on the table, looked at Harry, look at how bad Snape wants to kick us out of school. Harry, what happened last year was just an accident. It turns out that Snape seems to hate you even more. Harry nodded, actually agreeing with Ron's nonsense. That's what I thought too. If he was really protecting me, he wouldn't want to kick me out of school. Seeing that his friend finally communicated, Ron held up the pumpkin juice and continued. Congratulations buddy, you finally understand, but you have to believe that after this time, Snape may dislike you even more. Harry shrugged his shoulders indifferently, and said with a look of disgust, Sorry, I don't like him either. Time passed by every minute and every second. The opening dinner is also drawing to a close. After everyone listened to a school song with hundreds of different tunes, 
the students from the four houses began to walk towards their dormitories. As usual, on the first night of the Slytherin term the heads of each year are elected. As it was the case last year, it was still Prefect Gemma who presided over the ceremony. Except for freshmen, the chiefs of other years still haven't changed, there wasn't even a single challenger. When it was the first year's turn, several chiefs gathered together to comment. The level of spells for freshmen is much worse than last year. Not to mention Lucas, even Draco was much better than the current year first ties. However, the eyes of several chiefs still looked at a freshman. Noel Shafik. The Shafik family, one of the sacred 28 families. No one from this family has been enrolled in Hogwarts for a long time, so it aroused the strong interest of several chiefs. Not surprisingly, Noel Shafik won the top spot. Once the results were announced, Noel Shafik walked up to Lucas step by step. Mr. Grindelwald, my father asked me to convey his thanks to you, he also said that you will always be the most honored guest of the Shafik family. Noel's attitude attracted the attention of all the students. Lucas nodded calmly. After a few words of encouragement, he planned to leave. After the ceremony was over, he planned to go back and continue teasing little Tom in the diary. But at this moment, the third-year chief, Eli Macmillan, stepped up. Lucas Grindelwald, I challenge you to a duel. Lucas frowned and turned to look at him. Suddenly, it seemed that all the other chiefs were standing opposite him. He knew that the long-planned conspiracy of Draco and others was finally about to start. Chapter 96, Slytherin's Chief Tom, can you help me with my homework? Looking at the malicious smiles of Macmillan and others, Lucas frowned. Before he could figure out their plans, Prefect Gemma Farley said, Second-year head Lucas Grindelwald, do you accept Eli Macmillan's challenge to a duel? He did not expect that even the prefects were involved. Lucas looked around the common room and all the Slytherin students were watching him now. Okay, I accept. Lucas drew his wand. The two walked to the middle of the lounge and saluted each other as wizards. As children of wizard families, almost all of them have learned dueling etiquette. Waiting until the two were back to back and walking to the corresponding position according to the rules. Prefect Gemma yelled, 3, 2, 1, go. Levi Corpus. The sound of the beginning has just sounded. Lucas waved the wand in his hand and Eli Macmillan flew above into the transparent ceiling in the blink of an eye. The magical creatures in the Black Lake were very curious about this human who suddenly appeared in front of them. Lucas Grindelwald wins. When Prefect Gemma announced the result, everyone found that Lucas had no intention of releasing the spell. Instead, he looked at the other year chiefs. Since a duel was proposed, there will be a price to pay. It's better for Eli to stay there until everything ends. So who's next? The wand twirled rapidly in Lucas' hand. His casual look managed to irritate several grade heads. Lucas, don't get complacent too early. Fourth grade chief, Marcy Flint proposes a duel to you. The Flint family is also a pure blood family with a long history and it is also one of the Sacred 28. Most of the heads of years in Slytherin House are members of the Sacred 28 families. This is also a matter of course. The children of these pure blood families normally start learning magic long before entering school. Naturally, she is much stronger than her peers. Like Draco Malfoy, although he is a little naive, but whether it is his magic repertoire or his power. Among the second years, he was only worse than Lucas. When the Muggleborn or half blood wizards are still fantasizing about using magic, children of pure blood families may already be practicing the use of the fire making charm. After the complicated dual etiquette, Marcy Flint took the lead. Having learned from Eli's mistake, she wasn't going to give Lucas the first shot. Marcy merely waved her wand and a couple of strong ropes flew towards Lucas. If that wasn't enough, another flash of white light erupted from the tip of her wand. Judging from the wand movement, it should undoubtedly be the petrification spell. Exquisite silence spell. Lucas first praised his opponent, then he easily deflected both spells. Before Marcy could react, Lucas' stunning charm and Levi Corpus hit her. Seeing that even the fourth-year chief could not escape the fate of hanging upside down from the ceiling. Then seeing the smiling Lucas, the little snakes suddenly shivered. Next, it's your turn, the fifth-grade chief, Cecil Folly. Cecil walked to the middle of the field with a wry smile. Lucas, be merciful, can you not hang me up? Lucas raised his eyebrows and didn't agree with her. The result is of course needless to say. The fifth-year head has also become a decoration in the Slytherin common room and the sixth-year head Carl O'Neill followed right after. 
soon, only the last pain traverse remained as the head of the seventh year. Professor Snape appeared on the sidelines at some point. The Slytherin head of house had never paid attention to the chief challenge. Usually the prefect informed him of the results of the challenge the next day. Lucas, you are really excellent, and it is not in vain for us to make such a decision. Payne looked at Lucas with relief in his eyes. He will be graduating after this year. If he could meet such an excellent Slytherin like Lucas in his final year, he could leave with peace of mind. He firmly believed that under the leadership of Lucas, Slytherin House would become more and more excellent. Lucas probably guessed what these people were planning. He asked Payne, who was standing in front of him, who planned this, was it you or Draco? He he. Payne understood what Lucas was asking, it was me and him, and Eli, Marcy, Cecil, and Carl. It's a decision made by everyone, stop talking nonsense, I won't be defeated as easily as the previous challengers. Payne turned his back on Lucas when he finished speaking. Prefect Gemma came to the side and shouted, Duel ready, start. Afflicto. Payne started directly with a bone breaker curse. Lucas didn't hesitate, pointed his wand at the opponent and used the explosion curse. Two people fought back and forth, with every spell being deadly. If there is a little carelessness, it is easy to be seriously injured by a curse. The wonderful duel attracted everyone's attention, especially the freshmen who just entered school. It turned out that what they thought was a wonderful duel before could only be regarded as a warm-up. Serpent Sorsha A black light flew from the tip of Pain Traverse Wand and a big cobra several meters long appeared in the room. The little first ties exclaimed in fright. The cobra opened its mouth wide and lunged at Lucas. Just when it was about to reach Lucas and everyone thought Pain's victory was decided. They saw Lucas cast a transformation spell on a sofa next to him. There was a loud chirp and everyone saw a huge red-tailed hawk soaring into the sky carrying the snake in its talons. Payne and Lucas weren't idle either. Because he was worried about hurting Payne, Lucas hasn't been using much magic. And he didn't use some powerful spells such as the Shattering Curse, Sectum Sempra, or his best fire shield. Nonetheless, the duel is almost over now. Lucas swung his wand at the opponent, and used the combined skill of Petrification Charm with Cutting Charm. Payne, who dodged the Petrification Curse, was wounded in the arm by the Cutting Charm. His skin split instantly, and blood sprayed down his fingers and dripped onto the ground. Expelliarmus. Pain, who now had an injured arm, had no power to fight back. The wand was drawn by the spell and flew towards Lucas, who held it tightly in his hand. Senior Pain, I won. Lucas handed the opponent's wand back. Pain lifted the blood-stained arm and took it with a trembling hand. Well, you won. After he finished speaking, he looked at Professor Snape and Prefect Gemma. Snape drew his wand and pointed it at the ceiling. Libera Corpus. Several year chiefs were finally released and rubbed their heads that were drowsy due to blood congestion. They walked towards Payne and stood next to him. Lucas Grindelwald, brilliant, shrewd, confident, powerful and ambitious. This is exactly what a Slytherin should have. We firmly believe that Slytherin House will become stronger under the leadership of Lucas Grindelwald. Today, Lucas Grindelwald conquered all the year chiefs with his excellent and powerful use of magic, and I believe his performance has also been recognized by all Slytherins. I declare that with immediate effect Lucas Grindelwald has been elected as the overall chief Slytherin house. Following the words of the prefect Gemma Farley, all the year chiefs immediately drew out their wands and placed them in front of their chests. They bowed to Lucas with a sincere heart. The other Slytherins only reacted at this moment. They straightened up, straightened their clothes, and drew their wands, bowing to Lucas, the new chief of the house. Lucas looked around the common room. Everyone bowed their heads to himself, which meant they recognized him as their leader. And even Professor Snape, the head of Slytherin, also nodded to him slightly. This is the position of the chief of Slytherin House. At this moment Lucas became the most powerful person in Slytherin House besides Professor Snape and the headmaster. Even if it is the prefects elected by the school, even if it is the chief of each year. As long as they were still in Slytherin House, they would obey his orders unconditionally. Thank you everyone, please rest assured, as the chief of the house, I will not let you down. Everyone got up slowly and looked at Lucas with respect in their eyes. Congratulations to the host for completing a new achievement, the initial formation of forces, reward, 500 achievement points. Strictly speaking, the students of Slytherin were Lucas' first faction at this moment, since the alliance can only be counted as his inheritance from Gellert Grindelwald. Lucas turned and walked up to the steps. 
the little snakes spontaneously gathered in front of him. Everyone, as the head of the house, on the first day of school, I will make three requests to you. First, this semester it's forbidden for all students of the house to go out for night tours. Chiefs of each year, please strictly supervise. Second, in this school year, in addition to your own homework, I require everyone to learn the patroness charm. If you don't know how to do it, please ask your year chief or come to me directly. Third, last year our Slytherin house won the house cup for the seventh consecutive time. This is our glory, but I hope this glory will continue in the future. So, please continue to work hard this school year, and don't miss any chance to win house points. Yes, chief. The answer echoed throughout the Slytherin common room in unison. Lucas nodded in satisfaction, and then looked at Draco beside him. The second year chief vacancy is now held by Draco Malfoy. Draco looked overjoyed, and nodded respectfully to Lucas in response, Yes, chief, I will not let you down. Pansy, Blaze and others surrounded Draco with smiles on their faces as they congratulated him. When everything was over, Lucas finally returned to his own single dormitory. Although it was very late, he still didn't feel sleepy. Recalling the feeling from just now, Lucas remembered his father's previous teachings in his mind. Power can indeed fascinate people easily, but one has to be careful not to get lost in the feeling this power brings. Forcing himself to calm down. To divert his attention, Lucas took out Riddle's diary. Tom, I'm already at school, can you help me with my homework now? He wrote in the diary with beautiful cursive characters. Soon the ink stains disappeared. After waiting for a while, a paragraph appeared in the diary. Chapter 97, Tom Riddle's Helplessness Ron is Gilderoy's fan? According to me, there should be no homework at the beginning of the year at Hogwarts. By the way, how are you doing in Slytherin House? Reading the diary's reply, Lucas picked up the quill again and chatted with his good friend Tommy. Over the past week, he has established a deep friendship with Tom in the diary. Tom's willingness to help him with his homework is the best proof. When Lucas introduced himself, he said he was probably a half-blood wizard. Why did he say probably? Because Muggleborn are not sorted into Slytherin by the sorting hat. When introducing his life experience, Lucas described himself as an abandoned baby who was abandoned at the gate of the orphanage. The exact same life experience immediately got him Tom's sympathy. For a full week, Lucas was complaining to the diary about the bullying he had received in Slytherin. And Tom always said some comforting words, trying to portray himself as a kind of caring big brother. It would be better if there were no demagogic remarks in it. That's right its deception. For the Horcrux Tom Riddle's diary Lucas combined the original description with the research of the week. Drawing some conclusions. First, the diary serves as Voldemort's first Horcrux. The sole fragment in it is sentient and capable of thoughts. And with the long communication with the diary, the black magic on the diary will subtly absorb the vitality of the user. Secondly, the soul shard in the diary will use the Imperious Curse, compelling magic similar to the Imperious Curse, or some sort of partial possession. This conclusion can be seen from the fact that Ginny was controlled to open the secret room in the original book. However, this means of control is unstable, otherwise Ginny wouldn't have thrown the diary in the ladies' bathroom. The third point can't be confirmed yet. In the original book, after Ginny threw away the diary, she secretly stole it back from Harry's dormitory. After all, it was Ginny's own wish, because she was afraid that others would find out the secret of the diary. Or was she controlled by the diary again? If it's the former, everything is fine. But if it is the latter, it means that there is still some dark magic similar to a contract in the diary. If so, there could be some trouble because Lucas wasn't planning to be the heir to some Slytherin. Lucas, what's wrong with you? Words appeared in the diary again. Seeing that Tom couldn't wait, Lucas quickly picked up the quill and continued chatting with the young megalomaniac soul piece. It's been a week already and Lucas hasn't felt his vitality diminish at all. On the contrary, he eats well and sleeps well every day, full of energy. Lucas suspected that his soul strength should be relatively high. The strength of magic power is definitely not weaker than that of Voldemort when he was in school. That's why the soul fragment in the Horcrux didn't attack him for a long time. Actually, Lucas' guess was spot on, Tom Riddle in the diary was feeling helpless. The little wizard in front of him seemed to be surrounded by the shield charm. He couldn't suck his vitality at all, if he had a body he would be frowning heavily right now. He was already considering whether to try with another person, 
but he was a bit reluctant to give up on Lucas who he had been bewitching for a week. Lucas didn't know that he was messing with Riddle. Finishing their conversation for the day, he casually put the diary on the desk. One week, he gave the diary another week. If the diary does still not act after all that time, he could only return the diary to Ginny. As for why he would give it to Ginny. First of all, she is a member of the Weasley family, Ron's sister. Harry Potter was taken care of by the Weasleys during the summer vacation, and he would not let Ginny's accident go unnoticed. Secondly, girls are delicate in mind and have many little secrets that cannot be communicated with others. After discovering the magic of the diary, she won't be able to stop herself from writing in it. The next day the Slytherin second years ushered in the first class of the new school year, Herbology. The professor of Herbology is the head of Hufflepuff House, Pomona Sprout. Moreover, Herbology is still one of the few classes that the four houses have to take together. Hermione stood next to Lucas. Since the trip to France, the little witch seems to be much more confident than before. I don't know what's so good about Lockhart, most of my housemates are obsessed with him. Most girls, right? Well, most girls. Hermione was a little dissatisfied with him for correcting her mistakes. She went on to whine, what's even worse is that Lockhart will come to Hogwarts to teach defense against the dark arts. Merlin, now the Ravenclaw common room is full of people talking about him and squealing, which makes it impossible for me to study. Seeing Hermione's frown, Lucas reached out and smoothed it out. Don't worry, that guy won't be around for long, trust me. The words of comfort were just finished and Ron's loud voice came from behind the two of them. Merlin, I'm so happy that Gilderoy Lockhart is our teacher. Harry, you know what? I used to sit in front of the radio every day and wait for it to play the Lockhart Book Club. I'm sure Professor Lockhart is the greatest wizard in the world besides Dumbledore. Lucas deliberately glanced behind him. Unexpectedly, Ron Weasley turned out to be a fan of Lockhart. Thinking that there will be a defense against the dark arts class in the afternoon, he was looking forward to it. His favorite thing to watch is the reaction of fans after their idol's perceived image collapsed in front of them. Lucas recalled what Lockhart taught in his first class, the pawns seems to have prepared a bunch of pests like Cornish pixies. At the same time at the defense against the dark arts professor's office. Lockhart looked at the metal cage as tall as a person in front of him with an excited expression on his face, he spent a lot of money to buy the things inside from others. Just to be able to make a blockbuster in the first class of school. With the black cloth above lifted, a group of ugly, green-skinned goblin-like creatures came into view. Red caps are group creatures, easily irritated, have a strong physical attack but with proper knowledge they're easy to deal with for wizards. Single individual risk level, 3x. Group risk level, 4x. The Ministry of Magic expressly prohibits adult wizards from fighting them alone because they're always in groups, and states that facing red caps alone can be life-threatening. But now Lockhart had brought such dangerous creatures into Hogwarts, and he was also planning to let a group of underage wizards face them. Never would have Lucas thought that their upcoming defense against the dark arts class could be life-threatening. Hogwarts Third Greenhouse Today's herbology class will be conducted here. In first grade, the little wizards have only entered the first greenhouse where most plants are relatively harmless. Listening to the stories of senior students, the herbs in the third greenhouse are said to be more interesting, but also more dangerous. When Professor Sprout walked in from the outside, the students from all four houses were ready. Today's class is about mandrix, a magic plant that cries and screams when pulled out of the ground. Young wizards, today we are going to repot mandrix, so now who can tell me what their properties are? Two hands were raised almost simultaneously and Hermione gave a pointed look at Lucas beside her, who lowered his arm tactfully and gave a shrug, not really caring all that much. Okay, let's listen to Miss Granger. Mandrick, also known as Mandragora, is the main material for making powerful restoration potions. A powerful recovery potion, which can restore people who have been hit by a transfiguration spell or other spells back to their original state. Professor Sprout gave Hermione an appreciative look. That's great, 10 points for Ravenclaw. Getting the first points since the beginning of school Hermione felt somewhat smug. Although she knows that the opportunity to answer was given to her by Lucas. But Hermione wasn't unhappy about it, on the contrary she was a little sweet in her heart. And Lucas doesn't care at all, since he learned that the rewards of the house cup can only be claimed once, he didn't intend to continue working as hard as he did last year this school year. Besides, if he works too hard, others will live too comfortably 
he doesn't want to make things too easy for the other Slytherins. At this time, Professor Sprout asked a second question. Can anyone tell me what is the danger of Mandrix? Originally Lucas didn't intend to raise his hand, but Hermione took his hand and held it up. Okay, Mr. Grindelwald will answer. The cries of Mandrix can kill, Professor. Lucas's unheard answers always satisfied Sprout. She also noticed Hermione's small movements. Slytherin, also ten points. Hearing that Lucas also added ten points, Hermione showed a sweet smile. Sometimes girls are easily satisfied with certain small things. Professor Sprout held a pot of mandrake in front of her, the leaves of mandrakes are green with a little purple. Now, put on your earmuffs, look at my gestures, if I haven't made a gesture to take off the earmuffs, none of you are allowed to take them off without permission. These plants are young so their cries won't kill anyone, but they could still knock you out. While the professor was talking, Lucas had already put on the earmuffs. There was even time to help Hermione adjust the position of her earmuffs. Waiting until everyone was ready, Professor Sprout forcefully pulled the plant out of the soil. The roots of mandrakes are different from ordinary plants, they look a bit like an ugly baby, only green. The baby's mouth was wide open at the moment, and the sound of crying resounded throughout the greenhouse. Even wearing sound-isolating earmuffs, there will still be a little crying filtering into the ears. Professor Sprout was quick. She took out a larger pot put the ugly baby mandrake in it, and filled the soil in a few strokes. Just when she was about to signal everyone to take off the earmuffs, she saw Neville Longbottom suddenly fall backwards. Upon seeing this, Seamus said loudly, Professor, Neville has passed out. Oh Merlin, Mr. Longbottom seems to have forgotten to put his earmuffs on tightly. Go, get someone to help you and send him to the infirmary. Neville's fainting was just a blip in the class. Then everyone started to repot the mandrakes in groups. The relaxing and interesting herbology class came to an end soon. Saying farewell to Professor Sprout, Lucas and Hermione walked towards the Great Hall where they were going to have a hearty lunch. During the walk, the two also met Cho Chong who also just finished class. Lucas is in the center, followed by two women, one on the left and one on the right. This combination has attracted many people's attention. While Lucas is enjoying his lunch, a familiar owl wobbled in. Seeing the familiar red envelope in the mouth of the owl, the students in the Great Hall immediately looked at Ron Weasley who lowered his head and pretended to be dead. Before the letter was opened, someone was already laughing at his misfortune. Chapter 98, The Broken Wand Caused Trouble I wouldn't be surprised if they expelled you, Ronald Weasley. Mrs. Weasley's howler this time was much louder than the previous one, rattling the plates and spoons on the long table with its sound. Ron Weasley once again became the protagonist in the Great Hall just not how he would have liked. Just like the last time, the interval is actually less than a year between howlers. MRS Weasley's tone of voice in the howler showed that she was really beyond angry this time. You are such a disappointment, because of your thoughtlessness your father is still under scrutiny by the Ministry of Magic. I should really ask the headmaster to expel you. As the howler paused for a bit, the surrounding walls still echoed with Mrs Weasley's words. Ron and Harry beside him shook their heads, their ears buzzing. But that's fine too, although Ron could still see the ridicule on everyone's face, but at least he couldn't hear what they were saying. The howler finally turned in the direction of Ginny Weasley, and the tone suddenly softened. Oh baby, congratulations on making it to Greyfinder, me and your father are so proud of you. After saying the last sentence, the howler turned into a heap of ashes. Ginny Weasley looked around awkwardly, feeling embarrassed because of her mother. At the Slytherin long table Draco laughed out loud immediately after the howler ended. His relationship with Ron is like that of their parents, if there is a chance to laugh at the other, they will never let it go. I really didn't expect that within a year, someone could receive two howlers. Weasley, you really make your mom worry. His words drew laughter from those who heard it. Coincidentally, Ron's ears had recovered by this time, so when he heard Draco's ridicule. Annoyed, he drew out his wand and pointed it at him. Draco was taken aback for a moment, but the jeers grew louder when he saw Ron's duct-taped wand. Weasley, what's wrong with your wand? Is it hurt? Should we send it to the infirmary? Enough is enough, Malfoy. Ron waved his wand, and a light moved up from the base of the wand, but just when the spell reached the wand break it shot out in all directions along the cracked place, just like a broken water pipe. The lions who were watching the excitement felt a wave of panic as they saw the spell flying toward them. Fortunately, the power of the spell just hit the dining table. 
but those who escaped by chance soon found out that the food on the long table had turned into various insects and rodents. Delicious cake turned into a mouse, peas turned into cockroaches. There are also earthworms, caterpillars, and so on. Looking at the bugs on the long table, some people suddenly felt a little nauseous. Disasters are only beginning. When those rats started running around, cockroaches flew around and landed on the long tables of other houses, the entire great hall was in complete chaos. A good lunch, ruined by Ron Weasley's broken wand. Lucas used the plate to block the cockroaches flying towards him. The chiefs of all years come to me. Draco and others immediately approached him. After explaining to several people in a low voice, they immediately walked around the auditorium. At this time, the professors who just got the news rushed over. Seeing the bugs everywhere, Professor McGonagall drew out her wand and was about to cast a spell. But before she could say the spell, several Slytherin students lowered their wands to the ground led by Lucas. Finite. Accompanied by their united shout, the golden light gradually surrounded the entire room. A counter curse used as a group. The power of it is no small matter, since in the past a group of wizards including Newt's commander and Nicholas Flamel used it to stop Gellert Grindelwald's protego Diabolica spell. Not only did the bugs all over the ground return to their original appearance, even floating candles started falling from the ceiling. The great hall fell into silence. Lucas walked up to the professors and apologized. I'm sorry headmaster, Professor McGonagall, in order to control all that chaos, I had no choice but to do something. I just didn't expect that even the magic on the candles would be terminated. Oh don't worry about it, you did a great job, Lucas. Dumbledore said with a grin. Looking at the messy room, the old goat clapped his hands twice, and the great hall immediately became spotless. To thank Mr. Lucas Grindelwald for his help, I would like to give Slytherin ten points. Dumbledore finished and Professor McGonagall also happened to understand the whole process. She returned to the team of professors, looked at the students in the dining hall and said. Ronald Weasley, for your breach of school rules, causing major disruption, Greyfinder loses 20 points. If eyes could kill, Ron would probably be riddled with holes by now. The Gryffindors never expected that on the first day of school, Mr. Ron Weasley gave them a big gift. After their lunch was interrupted, the students returned to their dormitories one after another. There is still some time before the afternoon classes, so they can still take a nap or do something else meanwhile. Lucas. Draco trotted to catch up with Lucas who was walking ahead. Lucas, I need to borrow your broom later. Borrow my broomstick. Lucas frowned and looked at him, if you don't use the broomstick during practice time, you will be penalized with points. Of course I know, I have other uses. Okay, wait for a while and come get it yourself. Since Draco finished talking about using the broomstick, Lucas was waiting for him in the room. But a full hour passed, and he still did not come. Lucas was afraid that dumb child had forgotten again, he always forgets things at such a young age. It seems that he should advise Mr. Malfoy to take his son to St. Mungo's to check it out. Lucas glanced at the time, not willing to keep waiting he tore the space and went to the Forbidden Forest. Not long after he left, Draco pushed open the door and walked in. Where is Lucas? Seeing that there was no one in the room, he didn't think much about it. Seeing Lucas Nimbus 2000 standing on the head of the bed, he walked over immediately. After getting the broom, Draco, who was planning to leave, suddenly stopped. This diary looks familiar. I seem to remember that I have seen one just like it at home. Draco picked up Tom Riddle's diary and glanced at it, thinking it would be rude if he started flipping through someone else's diary, he hurriedly put it down again. Lucas, who came to the Forbidden Forest at this time, didn't know that Draco entered his dormitory just after he left. He stood in the Acromantula's lair and looked around. It's clearly deserted here, but looking at the spiders crawling in groups on the ground to the distance, he knew it wouldn't be long. There will be many more achievement points in the Forbidden Forest again. The Forbidden Forest at Hogwarts is huge. If you can't find the right path it's easy for common people to get lost in it. What's more, there are many dangerous magical creatures in the forest and the trees are really tall, high enough to block the sun. If you don't walk towards the open, the Forbidden Forest will always be dark. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Centaur Tribe, Reward, 100 Achievement Points. Along with the system BP heard the sound of horseshoes coming from a distance. Watching the centaurs with bows and arrows surround him, Lucas didn't panic. Are you the little wizard from that day? Hello, Ronan. He didn't expect such a coincidence, 
meeting Ronan the centaur whom he met once during his last trip to the Forbidden Forest. Ronan signalled his companions to put down their bows. He walked towards Lucas and frowned, Little wizard, the Forbidden Forest is not where you should come, it's very dangerous here. Sorry, but I have a reason to come, don't worry, I can protect myself. After Lucas finished speaking, he revealed the magic pressure of a normal adult wizard. Ronan frowned, but said nothing after all. The centaurs are an odd group, they believe in destiny very much. Whenever they make a divination they will often go with the flow and will not interfere forcibly. Actually Lucas wondered what would happen if they accounted for their own death. Would they face it calmly, or try to make changes? Your Excellency Ronan, do you happen to have a map of the neighborhood? I want to take a stroll around here. Seeing the centaur looking at him vigilantly, Lucas knew that his words might have been misunderstood by them. Sorry, I didn't explain clearly. While speaking, Lucas released part of his body transformation. His purple eyes and aura spread around. Elf, the darling of nature. For magical creatures, any elves are worthy of being respected by them. Forgive us for our recklessness, Your Excellency the Elf. Ronan and the surrounding centaurs changed their appearance from just now. They bowed their front hooves and apologized to Lucas. I didn't reveal my identity to everyone, please rest assured, I just want to walk around, and please help me keep it secret. Please rest assured, Your Excellency, the Centaur tribe will keep your secret forever. After that, Ronan took out a simple map from the pocket on his waist. According to the directions of the map, Lucas successively found the residences of the Unicorn group and he even found there were Nundus in the forest. Congratulations to the host for completing the new achievement, Unicorn Territory, Reward, 100 Achievement Points. Congratulations to the host for completing. Until before class in the afternoon, Lucas explored the settlements of ten different magical creatures around the Centaur tribe. It has to be said that the identity of an elf is really useful because most magical creatures welcome him. Watching the achievement points break through the 10,000 mark again Lucas wondered if he should find time for a 100 draw streak. It's also a good way to test his luck in the new school year. But the most important thing now is to hurry to the defense against the dark arts classroom. He knew there would be a good show later. Using the void rift to return to the dormitory, Lucas immediately noticed that his broom was missing. He opened the door, just in time to see Draco coming from a distance, still holding his own broom. Lucas? I was about to return your broom, by the way, when did you come back? I just came back. Lucas motioned for him to put the broom in the room. Draco saw a familiar diary on the table again. Out of curiosity, he asked casually, where did you buy this diary? I remember seeing the same diary at my home before. Oh, Master Malfoy is really domineering. He doesn't allow others to even have the same diary as his own. Draco looked at his best friend angrily, he clearly knew he didn't mean that. Lucas smiled and pushed him out of the room. Okay. If you don't go to the defense against the dark arts class now, we will be late. That idiot Lockhart, I really don't want to go. In fact, most boys in the school don't like the pompous flower peacock. Before the two left, Lucas also put the diary into the secret garden. It seems that it is better to carry Riddle's diary with him. Remember to vote with Power Stones for the weekly extra chapters, up to five chapters at 200 stones each. Chapter 99, Cornish Pixies No. It's me, D.I.O. Something worth talking about. On the way to the defense against the dark arts classroom a very interesting thing happened. Colin Creevy, the brave little lion, brave enough to take a picture of a basilisk's face, seems to have a lot of admiration for Lucas. In his own words, as a future journalist, celebrities like Lucas Grindelwald and Harry Potter are worthy of his admiration. So Lucas was stopped by this little guy holding a camera. Flash. Mr. Grindelwald. Would you please let me take a picture of you? Yep, Colin Creevy took the photo and only then asked for it. It seems that this can give him a sense of accomplishment. Lucas didn't really dislike the Gryffindor in front of him, so he nodded in agreement. The surrounding Slytherin students immediately stepped aside, leaving space for the two of them. Once the photo shoot was over, Lucas was a little dumbfounded looking at Colin who kept bowing to himself. At this time, Harry and his convenience friend came over. Colin's head seemed to be equipped with radar and quickly found Harry's position in the crowd. Harry Potter, please let me take a picture of you. The eyes of the people around were focused on Harry in an instant. Lucas got his pictures taken and everyone took it for granted, because he's the star of the school and deserves to be photographed. 
but Harry Potter. Through the past year, student Harry successfully proved it to the whole school. The savior is not omnipotent, he could also fail his exams, and he could also get his house points deducted. If he hadn't defeated the dark wizard Quirrell last school year, then he wouldn't even be as good as a common student. So, how can such a savior compare with Lucas, who is both good in character and learning? There was mockery in some people's eyes. It's not that Harry didn't see it, so he planned to reject his only little fan. But the words had not yet been spoken when Ron urged, Harry, look how pitiful Colin is, just agree to his request. Besides, that guy Lucas took pictures just now, he can do it, why can't you? You defeated you know who. His last words were whispered in Harry's ear. For so long, Harry could always hear people comparing himself to Lucas, and this distressed him a lot. He was also worried that Lucas would reveal what truly happened with Quirrell last year. At least for now, Harry still enjoys being flattered by others. Ron is right, why should I be afraid of being ridiculed by others, I defeated you know who, not them. The idea just came up when Harry felt someone grab his shoulders. Oh, little wizard, I know you want to take a double photo of me and Harry, right? This is such a rare opportunity, take a picture. Gilderoy Lockhart appeared next to Harry at some point. Seeing the flower peacock appear, Lucas shook his head and led the little snakes to the classroom. And the movement of his shaking his head happened to be seen by Harry who raised his head. Smile, Harry, you have to smile. Hearing what Lockhart said, Harry looked away and tried smiling confidently. Defense against the dark arts classroom. When the Gryffindor and Slytherin students were all seated, Gilderoy Lockhart walked out of the office with a confident smile. He stopped in front of the students making a dashing heroic pose and introduced himself to everyone. Allow me to introduce your new defense against the dark arts teacher, I am Gilderoy Lockhart, Order of Merlin, 3rd class, honorary member of the Dark Force Defense League. Five times which weekly award for the most charming smile, but remember, I don't talk about that, I didn't use my smile to get rid of the Bandon Banshee, after all. Lockhart finished and winked at the same time as the portraits of himself that were all over the place. He thought his speech was very humorous but there were only a few responses available. Certainly, his smiling face still got a few responses from some girls, but overall he did not receive the desired effect. Lockhart picked up another of his books and said. I see many of you have bought my full set of books. Speaking of which, he still seems very proud. Lucas looked at him strangely, if it weren't for the Hogwarts book list requiring purchase, who would buy so many useless novels? He had reason to be skeptical. Lockhart came to apply for the Professor of Defense Against the Dark Arts. First is to catch the popularity of Harry Potter, as for the second purpose, I'm afraid it is to sell his novels, right? Think about it, Hogwarts students from all seven years and they all bought a complete set of Lockhart's novels, what a huge sum of money. You know, the price of one of his books is not cheap. Watching Lockhart, still bragging, the more Lucas thought about it, the more it seemed possible. Okay, students, in order to know how well everyone is studying, let's do a small test. Lockhart picked up a stack of parchment and walked off the podium. Lucas, who sat in the first row, got the test paper first. Looking at the whole three pages, there are a total of 54 questions. Lucas sneered inwardly. 1. What is Gilderoy Lockhart's favorite color? 2. What is Gilderoy Lockhart's secret ambition? 3. What do you think is Gilderoy Lockhart's greatest achievement so far? Looking at the series of questions. Lucas picked up the quill and wrote on it, favorite color, the color of his own shit. The secret ambition is to keep Voldemort and Dumbledore at his feet. The greatest achievement is the successful application to become a professor of defense against the dark arts. Completing the first three questions Lucas dropped the quill, crossed his arms and began to stare ahead blankly. Such outrageous questions, many people are unwilling to answer. Except for some girls who wrote very seriously, most students thought the same. Seeing Lucas' appearance, Lockhart chose to ignore it. As a deceitful liar, Lockhart knew exactly who to mess with and who to never mess with. For example, Harry Potter is someone who can be used and provoked, but Lucas Grindelwald belongs to the kind of person who must not be provoked. Half an hour passed quickly and Lockhart took the papers back. He sat on a chair and looked through the answers carefully while also making comments from time to time. Oh, it's such a disappointment that no one knows what gift I like, I remember I mentioned it in the book. Just then, he saw Lucas' test paper. Looking at the only three answers above, Lockhart coughed dryly and said, 
I have to say, Mr. Grindelwald's answer is very beautiful, I think this test paper can get 100 points. How Lucas sneered and closed his eyes. Until another 10 minutes passed, Lockhart just stood up from his chair. Okay, now back to business I'm here on a mission to teach you how to defend yourself against the most dangerous things in the world. His mysterious appearance successfully frightened some timid wizards and he was pleased with the expressions on their faces. But don't worry, as long as I'm here, you will never be in any real danger. Lockhart had just finished speaking when Ron's voice came from behind, of course, we trust you Professor Lockhart, just like you subdue werewolves barehanded, teach us all those skills. Ron was like a super big fan and this stroked Lockhart's ego to no end. Don't worry, Mr. Weasley, Greyfinder take five points for being so studious. Hearing myself add five points to the house, Ron flushed with excitement. He usually deducted points from the house, and this was the first time he added points. Lockhart smiled at Ron's look, then he tore off the black gauze curtain behind him. A large cage covered with black cloth behind the curtain was revealed. Lucas looked puzzled, the size of the cage in front of them is too different from what was mentioned in the original book. Before he could figure it out Lockhart lifted the black cloth. Looking at the ugly things with red hats and green skin in the cage, Lucas' eyes widened immediately. The little snakes of Slytherin also had the same expression on their faces. Draco even went on to swear directly, Shit, this idiot, how could he bring a group of red caps to school? Harry glanced at the flustered Slytherins and curiously asked his friend, Ron, what happened to the Slytherins? What kind of creature are those? Are they dangerous? Ron looked at the green guys in the cage, and asked suspiciously, I don't know, they look like goblins. See Ron staring at the cage guessing what kind of creatures they were. Harry knew it was useless to ask him, but just when he was going to ask others for help, Lockhart gave the answer. Red Caps, these little guys are very dangerous, and it took me a lot of effort to catch them. But you can rest assured that I will not open the cage. He seemed to enjoy the way the little wizards were frightened. After finishing speaking, he took out his wand and knocked on the cage twice seemingly casually. It was these two strokes that awakened the monsters in the cage. Seeing unfamiliar surroundings and people, these wild monsters immediately waved their hands around and started shaking the cage. They looked at the little wizards in the classroom in a bloodthirsty way, one managed to stretch its arm out of the cage and tried grabbing Lockhart who was the closest. By the time Lockhart found out, it was too late and he lost his robe for it. Lockhart, who was attacked, suppressed the drama and smiled at everyone. Then he raised his wand and muttered a spell. When the spell hit the cage, the red caps inside the cage were not silenced but instead, Lockhart punched a hole in their cage. The red caps rushed out of the cage scrambling to be the first and went to attack everyone present. Idiot. Lucas drew his wand and stunned the first one. Then he looked at the Slytherins behind him. Draco, Pansy, Daphne, Blaze, Theodore, don't let these monsters escape the classroom. They nodded and waved their wands to control the windows to close. Then they formed a circle with Lucas, protecting the Slytherin students in the middle. With the protection of several people, the Slytherin students gradually calmed down. They drew their wands and began to fight back against the monsters. As for Greyfinder, only a few people still know how to fight back and most were already hiding under their desks. Lucas looked behind him again and said, Crab, Goyle, go find a real professor immediately. The two nodded, and escaped while the Red Caps were not paying attention. At this time Lucas saw that Lockhart was going to flee back to his office. Want to escape when you get everyone into trouble. It's not that easy. Lucas raised his wand and pointed it directly at the door Lockhart was about to close. Diffindo. Remember to vote with Power Stones for the weekly extra chapters. Chapter 100, Controlled Ginny Weasley. The spell instantly cut the door in front of Lockhart, causing him to freeze for a few seconds. Immediately after, he looked fiercely at the direction from which the spell came and just happened to meet Lucas' cold eyes. He quickly put away his fierce expression, but it was too late. At the same time, without the barrier of the door. The red caps threw the wooden pieces of furniture they tore at Lockhart one after another. Ah! A piece of wood pierced his leg making him cry out in pain as he bled heavily. Seeing their prey fall to the ground, the monsters surrounded him and started beating him with their makeshift weapons. Lockhart screamed and covered his handsome face with his hands. As a result, his hands were attacked by several wooden weapons, breaking a couple fingers. Ron who was hiding behind a desk, drew out his wand and planned to fight back, imagining the impact his heroic act would have in the Great Hall later, 
he gave up the target in front of him, but pointed his wand at the farthest red cap. And this red cap just happened to be closer to the Slytherin students in case he missed it might hit one of them. The corner of Ron's mouth twitched slightly, and then he said a spell quickly. Petrificus totalis. A ray of light flashed, and the magic spell reversed the output and knocked Ron into the air. Seeing the misery of his friend, Harry hurried over to help. It's been so long but the professors hadn't arrived yet. Lucas, who at first didn't intend to continue showing off, had to point his wand at the fish tank in the classroom. Watching the red caps beating Lockhart half to death and some cornered students who couldn't hold their attackers back anymore. Lucas controlled the water to float in midair. With the magic wand drawing circles in the air, every time he drew more circles, the water flow in the air would grow stronger and increase the amount at the same time. This is another usage of transfiguration and the effect is faster than Aguamenti. Almost in the blink of an eye, the water in the fish tank covered the ceiling of the classroom. Lucas flicked his wand again making the water flow violently and disperse into dozens of water streams. The water mass caught the red caps around the room at an extremely fast speed, even the ones pummeling Lockhart, even though he was tempted to let them kill the useless pawns. Lucas held up his free left hand. Both hands released the magic power at the same time and the water streams regrouped into a big water ball with all the creatures trapped in it. Waiting until he's done with everything, the professors were long overdue. Running at the forefront are Professor Snape and Professor McGonagall. God knows how anxious the two of them were when they learned that there were red caps running free in the school. But looking at the huge water ball in midair. After a brief moment of surprise, the two looked at Lucas standing under the water ball. Oh what superb elemental transfiguration, thank you Lucas. You protected the students from the danger, I think I should add twenty points to Slytherin. Dumbledore's words sounded, successfully breaking the silence in the classroom. Merlin, why did the stupid Lockhart bring those things into the school? I must write a letter to tell my father. Mr. Grindelwald, thank you for saving us again, Merlin's beard, it was a terrible day. Didn't Professor Lockhart say that you can rest assured with him present? Mentioning Lockhart, everyone immediately turned to the office. Professor Snape walked in with a sullen face. After a while, he came out again with a strange expression. It wasn't until Lockhart was brought out floating behind him that everyone discovered that he was all black and blue, full of wounds and bleeding all over, with a piece of wood stuck in his leg. It's terrible, send him to the infirmary. Professor Flitwick took over and left with the floating Lockhart. Dumbledore only checked on the students. He looked first at his golden boy and seeing that he was not injured, he was immediately relieved. Looking around for a bit, Dumbledore and the professors finally turned to Lucas who was standing by the window. Looking at the students in both houses, almost half of Gryffindor were injured. It's just that the injury is not serious. Although the remaining half was not hit directly, dodging around still caused some small cuts and bruises. But none of the Slytherin students were hurt except for their messy robes, which seemed unbelievable to the professors. They all thought that Lucas took action to protect everyone. But seeing their looks Lucas said, I just used the final spell, and if everyone from Slytherin is unhurt, it was just the result of helping and protecting each other. Dumbledore looked at the little snakes in surprise. Seeing the confidence and pride in everyone's eyes, Dumbledore said with a smile, I see a rare quality in you. It might get you through difficulties in the future, please keep it up, and I'll end this by saying Slytherin plus 10 points for your outstanding performance. They all clapped each other in the back excitedly. Even the corners of Professor Snape's mouth turned up slightly. Of course, if you don't observe carefully, it is not easy to find. The farce was over and the school infirmary was full of Gryffindor students. As for Lockhart, he was sent directly to St. Mungo's. When students from the other two houses heard about the incident, those obsessed with Lockhart finally woke up. After all, when they have to choose between worshipping idols and their own life, these people will definitely choose their own lives. Because of this incident, Hermione and Cho ran directly to the long table in Slytherin during dinner. Seeing the concerned eyes of the two women, several chiefs immediately took the lead in making teasing remarks. Time flies. In the blink of an eye the first week of school passed. What Lucas did most this week was to stroll around in the Forbidden Forest, which brought him generous achievement points. For a week, the Forbidden Forest alone provided him with 4,000 achievement points. Today. The afternoon's history of magic class ended. Lucas didn't look for Hermione or Cho Chong, nor did he go back to the dormitory with the Slytherin snakes. Instead, he went outside of the castle and stood on the path leading to the Black Lake. Lucas was waiting for someone, 
after observing for a few days, he found that Ginny Weasley would go to the Black Lake to walk around every afternoon. Checking the time, she must probably be coming by now. The next moment, the sound of light footsteps came from a distance. Ouch! With her head down, Ginny felt as if she had hit a soft wall and fell to the ground. When she raised her head, she actually saw Lucas Grindelwald standing in front of her. Ginny shook her head, thinking that in her days she was imagining things. You, you, why are you here? Lucas didn't answer the question. Instead, he squatted down and picked up the book that fell on the ground. Why do you drop your things every time we meet? Ginny quickly stood up from the ground and when she took the book from Lucas, she didn't find that there was an extra black diary inside. Thanks. After Ginny thanked him, she planned to leave. Wait. Lucas stopped her and reached out to remove the leaves from Ginny's hair. When he looked at Ginny again, her eyes had become dull, and she was staring straight ahead. Ginny, if you have any troubles when you go back, remember to use that diary. Ginny, who was controlled by the imperious curse, nodded slowly. Lucas smiled, and pointed his fingers between her eyebrows. If an outsider sees it, they will only think that the two are acting intimately. Obliviate. With a smile on his face, Lucas erased the memory of Ginny's meeting with him just now. That way, Ginny wouldn't remember seeing him in the corridor. With everything done Lucas walked towards the castle without looking back, and it wasn't until his figure completely disappeared that Ginny came back to her senses. Why am I here? Looking at the book in her hand, Ginny shrugged her shoulders and continued walking towards the Black Lake. Lucas was on his way back to Slytherin, checking his mind for any mistakes. The imperious curse he cast will stop tomorrow morning. Under the influence and control of the imperious curse, Ginny will definitely use the diary tonight. As long as she uses it, she cannot escape the fate of being controlled by the diary. As for whether it was cruel to Ginny, Lucas can answer with certainty that it was indeed cruel. He actually liked that little girl quite a bit, but he wouldn't let something like this affect his plan. For the greater good. Walking to the door of the Slytherin dormitory, Lucas restrained the coldness in his eyes. When the door opened, he turned back to the good student who was very nice in the eyes of everyone. In the dead of night, Hogwarts Castle seemed to be turned off and even the portraits that can be seen everywhere have fallen asleep. At the Slytherin dormitory Lucas sat cross-legged on the bed, looked at the achievement points in the system and said, System, I will try my luck with a hundred consecutive draws. He just couldn't resist the allure of gotcha. When his voice sounded, the prize pool immediately appeared in front of his eyes. In just the blink of an eye, various rewards flew out of the prize pool. At the end of this lottery draw, a total of 42 bronze rewards, 40 silver rewards, 16 gold rewards, and 2 platinum rewards were obtained. There are 2 platinum rewards, is my luck so good? Lucas immediately opened the detailed introduction of this lottery. The bronze rewards for this lottery are as follows, 11 prizes of golden galleons, total amount, 815, book magic your cheese, 3 sets of signed team uniforms of the holy head harpies, 18 kinds of honey dukes candies, 2 blood jars, two bags of high-quality owl rations, three bottles of owl feather care cream, two pairs of wool socks. Remember to vote with Power Stones for the weekly extra chapters, up to five chapters at 200 stones each. Creator's Thoughts Thanks for listening. <laughs>